13 losers. We'll roll for third and fourth place. Ali Appleton Perry will get two balls in that next round on each twenty leg curve. Right now we're in turn on for 10 minutes of practice. Good luck, gentlemen. All right, folks, here it is. The 2023 Badger Elite Open Finals. Guys are getting warmed up, seeing what this thing is all about. We've got our final four remaining from a bracket of a lot. I actually didn't look at that number. started with 30 this morning we had 90 entries into the tournament overall and the four that we've got left on 55 and 6 we are going to have Darren Bloomquist facing Trenton Holtz 57 and 58 we've got Brady Stearns and Trey Hendricksmeyer It has been a hell of a long weekend for everybody here at Weston Lanes. This was, this was an undertaking. Let's just put it at that. We, it's been going since Thursday in some way, shape, or form. A little low-key on Thursday for sure with uh, some lessons from Mike Shady. and We had some practice time out for some of the guys that were able to come out. and We did a coach's clinic and a demo day. Leads me off to the first thing. Huge shout-out to Storm Products. For sponsoring this event, Village of Weston, Bob's Business, and the Wassa area, USBC. This would not have had the attendance or, honestly, might not have happened without them. So we are extremely grateful for all of them. Be sure you check them out. 
But we are in for a treat with these four bowlers. A lot of you that are watching probably know a few of these faces. Uh, if you watch national television, you know Trey Hendricksmeyer, who recently made the show for the PBA League Bowler Championship. He actually won the qualifying event for the open side. Did so. He is, uh, he is 17 years old, senior in high school. Actually made the cut in the youth events, but also made the cut here in the open and decided to risk a bigger guaranteed number to bowl against the big dogs here. And so far, that bet has paid off as he is two wins away from a title. We are going to be bowling two game matches here in this total pinfall. So every, every pin matters. And interestingly enough, this is the first time that these guys have actually bowled on this pair as we actually bowled all of the open games were bowled on the 1 through 20 side here at Weston Lanes. So a little bit of a different look, but same pattern, obviously. And it's going to be a long day here on stream, too, as we are going to be doing all of our finals back to back to back here. We're starting with the open. We're going to have the women's event after this featuring some big names there and then obviously our youth event to wrap everything up we've got four four person step ladders with our u15 girls and boys and u18 girls and boys so we're going to be running two wide all day long we're going to be on 55 and 6 here and 57 and 58 but it's going to be a good day folks I mean, we're gonna see a, we're gonna see a whole heck of a lot of talent hitting the lanes here, probably some big scores, because as somebody that bowled on this pattern specifically yesterday, I can tell you what this thing was hard. It got very flat, very fast. You had to really control your shapes, and then ultimately, you know, get in and wheel on it, but still be accurate and. As far as I'm concerned, that's one of the hardest things to do in the game. And we got four guys here that are pretty amazing at it. Uh, Trenton, obviously, is on the left side of the lane. So who knows? Maybe that would be an advantage for him here today. He was one of two lefties to make our bracket final. Um, and obviously has one out to this point. I am going to also be entering in our scores on the top, as you can see. So if I get a little behind, I apologize in advance. I'll do my best to keep up on that as we trudge our way through these matches. But I want to make sure you guys know what's going on from a score perspective, as well as being able to see all these guys and how they're delivering the ball, because it's pretty darn impressive. Kind of running down the list here. If we uh, jump over to 55 and 6 and watch Darren throw a couple more practice balls, getting his spare game in line there. Darren is not a hometown kid here to Weston Lanes, but uh, he is actually, he currently lives in Iowa. But he went to Rhinelander High School, which is about an hour north of here. And in his senior year of high school, he did actually win a state title in this building. Darren then went on to go uh, compete collegiately at Mount Mercy University. Graduated in 2022 and has stuck out since then uh, in that Iowa area. Last year, Darren won the Illinois Masters. And actually, probably the most notable uh, credential that he has today is Darren Blumquist is our reigning champion for this event. Got about a minute left in practice here. Going back to Darren as he warms up one more time. Uh, I was catching up with him before we started, and uh, he's on a bit of a heater right now. Obviously, he's bowling extremely well to make the final four here, but 
uh, already in the 2023 league season. He has four 800 series uh, and also multiple that are uh, multiple series in the 790s. So he's really got it tuned in on how to get an all 10 to fall over all at once. And I think you're going to have to do a lot of that today. We are shaking some hands. We are getting ready to fire up here again. We got some two-game total pinfall matches. What we're going to be doing is the individual that, or the two individuals that win, of the two that of the two that win, excuse me, the higher seed is going to be able to pick the finals pair. So we're still going to do everything on 55 through 58. Uh, so there is a pretty significant advantage to bowling well during qualifying. Uh, I have our seeds up as well. So our highest seed is Brady Stearns, and he was our number three coming into this bracket. And Trey was our lowest as he fires up on 57 and 8 here. Opening shot over fourth arrow, throwing a 900 global exponent and gets the 4, 7, 10 out late. That's a good start. See if Darren can match that. And Darren gets his purple hammer out there. Breezes past it. That's uh, one thing that we did see this week quite a bit is urethane wasn't a great play for most people. Um, it really did turn into a, you know, get inside and wheel on it sort of tournament, which you'll have that. There's Brady. It's doing that thing that I just kind of said. And you can see if you, if you miss it a little left, it wants to go that way as he almost uh, trips out the... Six minute with a Brooklyn hit. Aaron really got on that one. Don't want to miss the rail. Brady makes a spare. For those that don't know him, as Brady steps on the approach on lane 57 here, he is one of the few Mr. 900s. Brady threw a 900 series back in March of 2017. And, ooh, that was a tough break there. That didn't look like too bad of a shot. There's a red up on him and right through the face. Trenton goes for the 139 and fills it easily. That's a great spare. Let's see if Brady can't make something interesting happen here with this Greek church. Gets the count. Coach will be proud. the Brooklyn over. But hey, 10 is 10. That's what they say. Sometimes it ain't about how, but it's about how many, and that's one of those hits. This trade comes up high, leaving a 3-6-10. Back to Darren on 56. feeding that thing out there. That's kind of interesting because as we move sides here, obviously you're going to see some different things happen. But that was a uh, that was a look that didn't really feel like it was, was in play all that much, being able to throw the urethane up out there. But 
Looks like he's got a pretty good look with it as long as he gets it as Trey chops the 3-6 off the 10 to match Brady's open. Really got up on that. Yeah, that one read a little bit early on him. All right. Early challenges already. These guys did have 10 minutes of practice on their starting pairs. Got that one. Wow. That's friction's blending in already. That was that was a whole lot of whole lot of hook. I don't think he really saw that one coming. It up. Great spare. Gives it a run. Catches the three. All right. Kind of a challenging start there for Trey, but a lot of game left. Like I said, we got these two game matches, so. Let's see what Trent can do from a little low angle here. That ah, looks great. Good work out of him. It's a big double. Stern's off of his Greek church. Let's see if he can bounce back. That also looks a little left. Well, might be one of those days, folks. Might be one of those days. Is two great shots out of Trenton. Trenton Holtz is from originally from the Appleton area. Did go to Kimberly High School. He graduated in 2019. Went to UW Milwaukee. Graduated in 23. Did bowl collegiately for that program. Was collegiate and club player of the year in his senior year. They were also the Greater Great Lakes Bowling Conference champions that uh, in his senior year as well. Another one, just having a hard time getting it down the lane on 57 and 8 there. Staring shakes the rack. frame nicely there. A little low angle for Darren and that urethane look. See if we can see something a little different on 55 here. I mean, that's about as good as you can throw a shot right there, folks. That was great. Trey runs the nine out. He's back on the horse after a couple opens there. Trenton is really being aggressive with that ball. That is a 900 global reality for those that are curious. He is just, that's, he's throwing it quick. That's, uh, that's a hell of a shot, a big four bagger to start. Wouldn't call it a commanding lead quite yet, but he's Definitely in a place that he wants to be. Like a ball change on a tray there. Looks like a phase four. Getting out of the exponent. for five in a row. Flags the head pin. Looks like he kind of lost that one at the bottom a little bit. Hey, 
That's much more like Brady. If you all know Brady, you know he's one of the best bowlers in the Midwest. He's earned that. He's a practice junkie. As Trenton takes the front two to have his first open of the match. Among his uh, 900 series, Brady's also got a whole lot of other accolades. He was actually the Ebonite Fall Classic Champion this year down in Iowa. He actually beat Trenton in the final, so obviously he finished second. As Brady tries to double up here, he really... That was a great shot, and the fact that he just slung that way. I, he didn't need that messenger. That one should have gone anyways. That was a phenomenal shot. Let's take a look at... Darren's here. He's looking for three in a row. Tough break there. Looks like Trey went to the phase four on this right lane as well, so let's see if it works out for him. That's way right. losing that count on a double. But sometimes you gotta go for it. Darren looks to bounce back off of his split. That red that 20 feet. So definitely quite a bit of transition already. tight, folks. Don't miss left. Don't miss right. Alright. You know, with all of our matches today, too, and, and even qualifying, you know, it's it was one of those things that even though you might start out in a rough way, it almost felt like no matter what, you were never really out of it. For an example, and this is probably the best example I can give because it's about me. Not that y'all are here to hear about how I bowled poorly. Wow. Just misses it a little bit and leaves a bucket. Started my qualifying six games with a 144, and, well, I finished... 37th, so just had to had to wait and let that look find me and these guys never really had that problem until, well, right now. It's been tough. Pairs are tough. As he runs. Uh, Trenton going straight at the bucket. Catches two off the left. So that puts Darren in the lead by 16 with three frames left in the first game. Here again, we are two game total pinfall. If you can't tell, there is a nine pin here too, so this is some big one for Brady if he can fill this up. Great spare, great spare. Trenton off back to back opens, puts them all in the pit, 10 straight back. That was a great shot. Big bounce back. As 
that we're taking a look at Brady here. He was also the 2018-2019 Midwest Region PBA uh, Rookie of the Year. Out on that regional tour, he does have one regional title. And he won, I believe, against Nick Pate. One of the most interesting 10th frames you'll have ever heard. A few gutter balls involved on a short cheetah pattern. Darren looked like he moved quite a bit in there. Got around it. Splits again. It's tough. That is three red dots in a row for Darren there. Brady flags the nine pin. Not something you see very often there. That's for sure. Looking for a, a fresh look, uh, giving the pins away. That's one of those things that uh, in a two-game total pinfall match, you can actually, I mean, if you're open, 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 it is it is possible that that is an okay strategy to try to get yourself lined back up and, and get, actually give a couple pins away as he's, he's really needing something to change his momentum here as Trey leaves the baby split. Looks like Darren moved about five left and just shakes the rack. A little bounce back. Trey runs at his baby split. Backs it up at it. Tough, tough break there for Trenton leaving a stone eight pin. You know when you when you put it in the put it in the pocket this week, it, it really did frustrate you when not all ten fell over. As it's hard enough to get into the one two for Trenton or the one three for the rest of the righties here as trade he moves even further left as he's into fifth arrow and just doesn't quite finish for him. Leaves a two eight. Spare nice and easily. Walking into the 10th frame here. Trenton's got a max score of 210. If he puts it off the sheet, he's pacing 2-0. Darren can only max out at 191. So not uh, definitely not an insurmountable ba uh, gap between the two players. This tray fills his frame nicely. Many of you that are subscribers saw that I did a mic'd up with Trey Hendricksmeyer and Landon Jordan, and, well, I hate to take the credit, but ever since then, the kid's been striking out of his mind. Big, big first one there in the 10th for Trenton. Brady, after flagging his 9-pin, looking to bounce back. Looks right. And just the brutal, brutal leave there. My goodness. That was not a shot that Trenton's going to want to remember. That one he didn't like as soon as it left his hand. Folks, we are in a dead heat on our match between Trey and Brady as we enter the 10th frame for them. And Trenton goes for the sleeper here, catches them both. Nice, easy 200 game. Great work out of him. Big 
checks for Brady there, shaking his head a little bit. You can tell he's fair to be disappointed there. Darren sacrificed his fill shot or his spare shot on that lane last time around. At least gets it in the pocket, but not quite enough to get them all to go. Even a even a four pin. Tough stuff there, folks. I actually don't think that that was that bad of a shot. It just leaked a little bit right, and then it just sayonara, sucker. It is out of here. Pretty catches the two for a 165 starter. Definitely not where he wanted to be. But that's been, honestly, that's been this whole event, folks. Scores were tough to come by. You know, 230 felt like 280. As Darren f strikes in his fill there to shoot 171. Stepping up to start game two here. 29 pin lead going into game number two. And wow, keep him going. My goodness. Trey with a big double in the tenth there to actually take the lead match not by much but it's only his second double of the game trying to make some spare there what do you guys think Based on one game of results here, who's your pick? Give me a, give me a, give me some predictions here, folks. Who do you think is going to bring home this title? I believe that that was an experimental ball change. Trey looks like he went to the UFO alert to get his eight in the fill there to shoot 174, nine pin lead for him. As Darren kicks off his second game with ten straight back. That lane certainly gave him a lot of troubles last game, so I'm sure he's really grateful for that. I don't know why I sure would be. I was grateful to hit the head pin, though, to be quite honest, because that was almost just as hard as striking. an exotic gem after throwing the Helios all last game and another 710 that is that's a tough cookie on that that lane 57 which is quite interesting too because if you've if you've ever bowled in this building uh, I think it's pretty pretty well known that uh, these are some of the highest scoring pairs in the house um so to not get them all to go like that, it really is a testament to how hard this pattern plays. The Open, the women, and the youth all did bowl on different patterns, so we'll probably see some different shapes as we progress throughout our day here.
was it's one of the worst nine pins I've seen in a while. Looks a little right. Oh, nice. Slaps the seven out late. Yeah, and Trenton Trenton walked into this game with a twenty nine pin lead, so he's just gotta keep himself clean and it's gonna be that's a tough gap to, to close here with eight frames left, but you know, never say never either. Oh my goodness. You know, that's one of those shots where you say to yourself, hey, don't throw it that well. Because I'm pretty sure that if you if, if we asked Trenton right now, he'd tell you that he aced that shot, and I'd believe him, because that was that was a great effort and just didn't get them all to go. Trey with the, I mean it wasn't a double. It kind of felt like a double because that messenger on the uh, nine pin I thought was going to land, but. Big ball change again goes the UFO alert. It's one of his favorite balls. If you ever ask him, he'll tell you it's the best ball ever made. I don't necessarily believe him, but hey, that's the way opinions work. So. Brady is officially into experiment territory as he ball changes again and leaves the 6-10. Now that Darren can finally control the pocket a little bit better. Now the now the corner game comes into play. He's just a dead wrap 10. Spare there. I see out there, Missy, giving a shout out to your boy Trenton. He did want to say, uh, give me, wanted me to give a shout out to all the friends and family back home. So I'm glad you're tuning in. Throwing a great shot. He's throwing the ball really well. That's for darn sure. Great shot for Brady there. That ball squared up a little bit earlier and went a little bit more forward through the pins. And I don't know if that's a look that he's going to like, but it certainly struck pretty well. So I think that's uh, looks like a pretty good go-to for him the rest of the game, the, the rest of the way here in this game. Darren gets them all to hit each other. The, the great Chad Nelson once told me that if the pins are hitting each other, that means they're falling down. And I think that Darren just took that advice to heart. Trey with a big double there. Great shot out of Trenton. Gets that seven to slap out late. So far, a pretty reserved uh, approach for all four of these players, too. No, uh, no real high highs or low lows yet. Once we get into the finals, I would expect maybe something a little bit different, but that remains to be seen. But probably a testament to why they're here is just being able to keep their cool when you're grinding out 160s. Uh, it is something that if you don't have patience, you don't have scores. These guys, did, these, all, these guys all did it real well this week. Got that one real right. Just a brutal ring in 10. Brutal. This Trenton looks to double up. Wow. Huge break. Got to take the good with the bad. 
huge break for Trenton there. That's a that's a big double. That puts him in a commanding position, already having a 29-pin lead going into this game. Darren's got a strike. He's pretty much to the point that he needs to have these next two to give himself a chance. Come on. Great shot. Great shot. I wouldn't say he has to put it off the sheet quite yet. It's not that far down in the hole, but he's got to keep up. He's got to have a break go his way. As Brady goes through the face again. That right lane looks tough. Ooh, shimmies the five. Does what he needed to do to keep himself in the race. Puts up his, puts up a three-bagger there. I believe it's first three-bagger of the game, uh, match for him. Big spare for Brady. He wasn't 100% confident in that one, but got enough push to let the one that goes straight do its job. As Trenton looks to put a three-bagger up of his own here. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna let the pins do the talking on that one. <laughs> and for. As good of a hit Trenton gets, Brady gets just about the exact opposite there, leaving almost a 5-7 on a shot that was pretty close to his last one on that lane that struck. As Trenton throws a much, that's probably, you know, the funny part about that shot is he's probably thinking to himself, well, I, I threw that one better than the last one, and well, there's that one in the middle, hands up. Never a doubt. All right. Trey uh, can trade, can double here. That's a that's going to be a commanding lead. That's a huge hit. Throws a little dead wood in front of the front of the rake. Slight delay here after Darren's shot on this right lane. Just squares up on him that little extra bit. And that's the difference between 8 and 10 right there. Just a little bit of extra hook just before the spot. Mr. Gilbertson catches that dead wood for us. Thank you, Luke. Thank you to everybody here at Weston Lanes, honestly. This has been a phenomenal week. Whole lot of work went into this thing, folks, and for an inaugural event, I don't think it could have gone much better. Oh, tough break there. Pretty much dead on. Trey has had a hell of a year, winning the LBCs. He won the Midwest Youth Championships over in Alexandria. He's got three JBST titles. One, 
the one most recent one that is home center at Wagner's there in Eau Claire. Back to the Helios for Brady and puts them all down. That's one of those ball changes where it's like you're glad you made the right move, but also, man. When you start with it, go away from it, and then it does that. That's tough as Trenton just splashes the rack. Gets them all to go. Now we're getting to the point that that match is not concluded, but the fat lady's warming it up. Great double there out of Brady. He ain't going down without a fight, folks. It's Trenton. That's probably the best shot of the day right there for him. And uh, to really put this match away, doubles in the eighth and ninth. No options now for Darren besides getting the next three and hoping the next four, but he's got to. That's the only way. He needs a big break if, uh, if he's going to have any shot of winning this match. Shot out of Trey there. He's he's trusting it. He's letting that ball get behind the head pin and that's doing the right thing. Great shot out of Darren. Push. Oh, huge break. Huge break. It's the 4 6 out late. Puts up a four bagger. That puts him in a great spot to take down Mr. 900 Brady Stearns. As Darren just slings some wood around the deck, gets them all to go. Still trying to give himself a chance. it up for Darren but what we were going to be doing is our winners are going to be born again our losers are going to be born again as well they're going to be born for the three and four position but we are going to put a pretty heavy emphasis in our coverage here on that title match as Darren takes the one and shoots a, a solid 222 my, and to, to go, minus seven here for the two. 393. It's Brady almost misses the head pin there. Just doesn't quite have the look. And this is just a formality for Trenton. Trying to line up a little bit. So it looks like we're going to have Trey Henriksmeyer and Trenton Holtz in the final here at the 2023 Badger Lead at Midwest Bowl Fest here at Weston Lanes. We're live. We're throwing a big shout out to Storm Bowling Products, the Village of Weston, Bob's Business, and the Wassa Area USBC for helping us make this possible. And to all of the folks here at Weston Lanes. Uh, they they put in an in insane amount of work to make this thing happen, and I'm so proud to call this my home center. Thank you guys for tuning in. Great shot out of Trey there. He's just, he's going to be bummed when he can't bowl on that lane. I think that's what's about to happen. Because I'd be surprised if Trenton decided to take off that, uh, get off that pair. And he is the higher seed. He's the 12 seed over the 14 for Trey. So he gets his choice of which pair.
pair our finals will be contested on. As Trey steps up for his 10th frame. Runs it a bit left for a big nine there. A little ball change, a little curiosity. Trenton shoots 225 to Darren's 222 but with his 29 pin lead there after the first game. Brings home the win in the semifinal match. Trey Hennemixmeyer is also going to be bringing home a win in his match. So we are down to two. Yes. Brady almost gets the best hit of his day right there, just at the wrong time, but looks like Trey's going to make a quick little ball change to see what it's got. That is another UFO alert that didn't do nearly the same thing. Big spare for Brady there. And there you have it, folks. That is the semifinal matches here. And Trey Hendricksmeyer, Trenton Holtz are going to be bowling for the final. Brady Stearns and Darren Bloomquist are going to be bowling for positions three and four. And, and those all, that's all pretty relevant because, well, first place. That's a three thousand dollar check. Second, two thousand. Third place is fifteen hundred, and fourth is one thousand dollars. All right, advancing to the finals, Trent Holtz winning his match four twenty five to three ninety three over Ben Lundquist. Trent is a twelve seed, and he'll be facing Trey Hendricksmeyer, a fifteen seed in the finals. Trey won his four twenty to three fifty nine over Brady Stearns. Trent, you will get to choose which pair you want to bowl on. We're going to get you moved, and Darren and Brady will be going for third and fourth on the opposite pair. We'll get two balls on each lane once we get the scores moved over, and we'll get you started. Looks like we're going to get a little bit of practice here. <clears throat> Before we start up our final game, our final matches here, finals on 55 and 6, and our consolation match between our 3 and 4 position on 57 and 8. Got a little bit of a crowd here. I'm guessing that once our uh, youth event, once our youth finals fire up, we're going to have a full house here. It's going to be a good old time. They're actually bowling a doubles event All down right, on the 20 side right now. I did have a little bird in my ear tell me that uh, Trenton is now officially the Hodag Slayer. If that means anything to you, let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you. 
got 84 of you guys watching. That's pretty awesome. Heck yeah, this is a great time to shout out our sponsors one more time since you're all here. Storm Products, Village of Weston, Bob's Business, and the Wassa Area USBC are our presenting and our 24K sponsors. Thank you very much to them. There's a whole lot of other sponsors that made this thing go. One of the, I mean, we had we had less than 100 bowlers in the open uh, tournament here, and we're still giving away out of these four bowlers. $8,500 in prize money. $3,000 in first place. I mean, that's... How can't you be proud of that? I'm just so honored to be a part of this. What an amazing weekend. We had a bunch of pros here on Friday night. Did a, did a Baker Pro-Am, and the pros threw the 5th and the 10th for the teams, and we did a... Flighted finals, which is not something that you really see in bowling all that much, and just went off without a hitch. So these guys are just finishing up a couple more warm up shots. Figured I'd uh, say hi. Thank you all for being here, honestly. And thank you all for, honestly, to, to all the Midwest Bullfest folks. Midwest Bullfest folks. That's a mouthful. Thanks for letting me do this. I'm so honored to be able to stream these finals. These guys are freaking talented, y'all. And just to be able to show you kind of what that entails is, is an honor. And I am very curious to see how this shakes out. You know, I've, I don't want to say that I have a favorite. Uh, because I think all of these guys are really talented, and this could go one way or the other uh, for both of these matches. Um, I've known Trey for a long time. I actually met Trenton today. I met him just an hour ago, and he's a great guy. I've known Brady for a long time. I've bowled with him a lot. I've known Darren for a long time since he was a kid. Um, obviously, with him uh, bringing home some, some hardware from my home center, you'd have that, but it's going to be crazy. It's gonna be there's gonna be some big hits here. I think that our our, our energy level is gonna juice up a little bit, so I'm excited to see this. Hope y'all too. If any of our pros that were able to attend this week, Eugene and Kevin McCune were here, Diana Zavialova was here, Brianna Cote, Carlene Byer, who you're actually going to see later today in the women's final as she made the final four there, Steve Jaros, Mike Shady. Thank you all so much for being here. It is one thing to, to have some, some big names in the industry as Trenton throws his first shot. Here she switched balls. Looks like that was a verge solid. Interesting, interesting strategy as he picks the same pair. But changes balls. And uh, Darren started off the match over here with a strike. With Brady flat tens. Oh, we got a little rack issue on 55, so we're going to have to reset some pins. Just have a little delay in the action here. I would guess that Brady's probably going to hold off and wait. Oh, no, he is going to go and make his spare, and I'm sure that'll be that. Fun story about Brady actually throwing that uh, ice spare ball many, many years ago. Probably 2017, bowled a Central Bowlers Alliance event at Apple Valley over in the Twin Cities area. 
hooked so much from the get-go. He was throwing that ball. I'm pretty sure he threw that ball for six of eight games. In the first six, it was hooking that much, and he led the field by a ton. Um, and I obviously rode the struggle. I actually made the cut that day, but I certainly didn't have anywhere near as good of a look as he did. And, uh, yeah, that was pretty crazy, being able to throw something like that, that just a little pancake core in there. It doesn't really flare at all. Trenton's wise and gets the two. Brady steps up on the left wing. Hoping to find something. He's uh, This left lane has been a struggle bus for him. Looks like he's probably throwing a, it's a dark coat. It's either a dark coat or a Zen gold label. I'm not 100% sure. Black bowling balls will be black bowling balls as he plaques another 10 pin. He's Oof. Trey really fired that one. Don't know if he quite got around that one the way that he normally does or wanted to. Still throwing that purple hammer, and that looks great. That's a huge double to start for him. It's about a $500 match over there uh, between the three and four seeds, so every every pin still does count. And we got a $1,000 match here on 55 and 6. With the, uh, first place going to 3,000, second place going for 2,000. What a prize fund. That is something that is kind of hard to come by in the sport these days to really have big numbers like that at the top. And if you made the cut this week, you tripled your money. $150 entry fee. You make the bracket, it was $450. So not a bad week if you're in the number. Not a bad week for your wallet, that's for sure. Bear there. Great shot out of Brady there. He's finally, maybe he's finally found something. Looks like he really got around that one. Trent goes back to the reality. Gets a little bit of push and a whole lot of pin action as they all go straight back. Ooh, for the first time in an exceptionally long time, I see somebody kick a pin out of the pit that would have made the 710 at Weston Lanes. That is a rare occurrence, folks. It's only a, I hate to wish a 710 on a guy, but it's been pretty cool to see him make it. It's a huge break for Darren there. 
Trey looking for his first strike of the match. That was nasty. Oh my goodness. I think that pin hit the sidewall and hit Mach 1. My goodness. Saw a uh, comment there asking about the oil pattern. Uh, it was a 41 foot pattern, 2.25 to 1, 25.3 mils. A little bit of shape in there, quite a bit of forward oil actually in the front. So the push was, was real to start. Uh, and then as everything sort of blended out, it got real hot. Started to hook quite a bit early on and just never really stopped. Just kept on hooking. This tree makes his spare. But yeah, not uh, definitely a pattern that I can't say I'd want to. And begged a bowl on every week. But the as the goal with I think every oil pattern ever designed, I think the I think the cream of the crop uh, ended up in the final here. These guys bowled better than everybody else, and that's why they're here. Um, and it wasn't something where you could overpower it. You couldn't really you know, it didn't really niche down into one style, as you can see, you know, Darren throwing urethane and Trenton being left-handed and Brady kind of circling the whole lane and Trey being two-handed. I mean, that's about as dynamic of a final four as you can get. As he makes his spare, great effort there. is 10. That's what I say. That's one of the makeup hits for those plaque 10s that on great shots that Brady left earlier today. For some context, I believe we had roughly 90 bowlers in the open event here. 13 of those blocks were plus. The rest were all in the minus. And that is, if that doesn't tell you how hard this oil pattern is, I don't know what will. Great spare for Trenton there. Clean in his last four frames with that tough split to start the match. a little bucket crumbler there. He'll take it. Every strike saves an open. That was a phenomenal shot out of Trey there. He's That's one of those momentum builders. He threw that really, really well. I've had the honor of watching that kid bowl quite a bit and that was that was a very good shot. He knew what he wanted to do and he did it. Throwing his phase 4. Gets the 4 9 to go out late. He'll take it. <laughs> yeah, and 
that one as, as quickly as you have it. There it goes. You missed that one a little bit left. He's definitely trying to get a little bit more forward with the ball. Trying to control his down lane reaction a little bit. Still get him all to go. And just gets right up a little early on him. Brady with a great shot there. Just one of those guys you can never count out. Darren Wentz. Darren's got a three-bagger in open and a three-bagger. So, is he going to break the pattern here? Fell out of it a little bit. Leaves the four-pin. Going back to the verge solid. Oh, brutal. Looks like he threw that one pretty well. It just, the head pin flew right up and around the 10 pin. The Those upper decker corners are kind of commonplace around here. Um, got some pretty live sidewalls or kick plates. So it's, if you hit it just right, the thing can fly right up and all the way around that pin you want it to hit. Trenton is a UW Milwaukee Panthers alumni and got to bowl in college. He's got 15 300s and as high set as 828 as Darren leaves the 2810 there. Other, other big thing for Trenton here as he steps up for his seventh frame is he was uh, s second or, yeah, second place in all events during the Wisconsin State Tournament this year. This last year, excuse me. As he packs 10. He's been pretty deliberate about that, and well, the results speak for themselves. He's had a great weekend. He's got a push. Or go. Wow. Well, that was a hit. Let's see if this works. Can we, uh, can we pull a little replay action here? Maybe? No, nope, not quite. That's why they say just make it. You make it to a, to a match like this. Weird stuff happens. Sometimes breaks happen for you, and that's those are two shots. That's a big break for Trey there. It puts him in a pretty good spot. Uh, looking to finish up game one here as Brady cleans up his 3-6-10 nice and easy. And Trenton for the eighth frame. Way behind the head, but I don't know if he quite caught that one at the bottom of the way that he wanted to. Tough break, leaving the six, seven, nine. Not a, not a uh, traditional leave, for sure. Here comes Brady up for his tenth frame. He's up five whole pins currently, going into the tenth. He couldn't throw the ball any better than that. That was aced, and it just just didn't quite do the right thing. That is a tough break. That pair, or that lane specifically, really does not like him right now.
Good fill there. Brady can get 10 more for 213. As Trenton steps up for his ninth frame, trying to set himself up. Uh, he can only sheet for 191, but he, that is not going to help. That is the 2, 4, 7, 8. The hardest non-split in the game right there. Great finish there for Brady. You know, that's... He can hit it. It's just a matter of if they all want to go over. And Trenton did make his spare there, so... Trying to keep it clean as best as he can. That was actually a ball change again out of Trey going back to that. Here we go. Lost my place. Back to that UFO alert. Great spare there. All right. Trey, with a strike here, takes a commanding lead over Trenton. Not quite enough that time. So, keeps it a little bit closer. Definitely maintains it as being more interesting of a match as Darren goes 209. That is a four pin difference there. Good effort out of Trey there. Good work. Brady's got a four-pin lead as he leads off game number two of our two-game match here. Four-pin lead, excuse me, in game two. Gets the 10 to go out that time. As Trey gets eight in his fill for 216. Not a bad effort out of the young kid. Again, he's 17 years old, folks. He's got a whole pile of money in that smart account. He's adding to it today. Wow. That's about as bad of a ring 10 as you can hit right there, folks. Trent leaves the 3-6. for him to climb to take the kid out. But that's why we fill the frames. You never know. Great spare there. side about Darren is uh, when he won his high school uh, state championship here at Weston Lanes 
he actually wasn't throwing his own bowling ball. His coach and one of my good buddies, Mike Borsier, borrowed him his purple hammer, and he threw that thing the entire time as Trenton finished up with a 169. But yeah, Darren threw somebody else's bowling ball that happened to fit his hand and took him all the way to a state title. And here he is throwing a purple hammer again, chopping a 2-8, so not quite the same result as he had a few years ago. As Trey steps up here, he is a 47-pin lead going into game two. And puts 10 straight back. All he's got to do is keep his head in it now. One shot at a time. I think Brady's going to be happy to get off this pattern after this weekend. He just hasn't quite had it this match. He's, uh, he's one of the best grinders out there, though, and that's why he's here. He's a guy that's exceptionally patient and takes what the Blaines give him and maximizes his opportunities for the most part and doesn't really make a whole lot of mistakes. Obviously, taking the, the four off the seven there is tough. As Trenton splits in the first frame... Feel a whole lot of thinking going on out of the lefty here. A little frustration, to be fair. He's busted his butt to get to this point. Just doesn't quite have a look for this final match. As Brady leaves the Eight out. I think it's finally wearing on him, folks. It has been a very long few days here. That is for sure. Trenton runs one Brooklyn. Little makeup hit there. is walled, they'd say. Coming up for our women's final as we watch Trey Big Four. Our four ladies are going to be competing on our stream pairs here are Carlene Beyer, Brooke Salzman from Mount Mercy, Nicole Kaluchin, as well as Crystal Resop, the old Lindenwood grad. Yes, I agree, Darren. I agree.
big X there on a tray. You know, he keeps this up. He's going to make me follow him in the stream every tournament that he bowls because if you all remember, a long time ago, JBST first live stream ever on 10 Pin Life. Was that Ashwabanon Lanes? That was the first time that Trey Henriksmeyer ever won a tournament. Here we are a year and a half later, and the kid can't stop striking, and he can't stop winning as Trenton doubles. It ain't over yet. He's got a, he's got a lot of work to do. He's got to make up 49, so it's going to be tough. 47, excuse me. Looking for a three bagger. Just mm, makes it a little harder on himself. a break. Not quite enough to hop that one out. Leaves the open. And I think Trenton's to the point now where he knows the only way to a win now is striking out. Good effort out of Darren there. Almost taking the 4-9 out, but Ultimately leaves that one on the deck. Trey for his fourth frame gets that way, way right. That was huge. A ton of angle through the front. So I'm not sure if he saw that. That was very, very different from his last few shots. Very different. Not sure if he... Well, I guess he did split last time on that lane. So could have made the move and watched it. When you go big four and then you two eight ten off of a move, that's that's a tough spot. As Darren steps up for his sixth frame. That he's lost that lane, folks. Trey takes one. It is a grind out here. An absolute grind. Not enough. Again, Brady had a four-pin lead going into this second game, and well, that lead has grown substantially. And doesn't have the legs to run out that messenger ten pin. I think there might be a little bit of nerves for Mr. Henriksmeyer as it looks like he's actually throwing it a little bit faster. Not sure if he's seeing that or if he's doing it on purpose, but either way, it's happening. As Brady goes through the face for a 3 6 10. But you know what? The kid can still shoot a 10 pin, and that's. Pretty darn important. Trenton's just 
having a rough go of it. He's, it doesn't look like he's throwing it quite as fast as he was. So Henriksmeyer on one end seems to be throwing it faster, and Holtz is throwing it slower, and, well, they're, both of their results have decayed. Way. Not that is tough. That is tough. He had a little bit of a look at it there after throwing the double in the second and the third frames, and then he goes open open on two baby splits, and it's just it's gotta be frustrating to bowl that well to get to this point and sort of have a look run away from you. Tell he's getting a little frustrated. I don't. I can't say I blame him. And that's that's kind of been a name of this weekend. Honestly, those that that kept their heads on straight ended up in this in this finale. But even the best can sometimes catch breaks that are so rough. Hey, there it is. One out of three ain't bad. Henrik Meyer goes over and gives him a high five. What do we think, folks? What are the odds that Mr. Bloomquist here hops one out of the back? Is it zero or is it a near zero, as a good friend has told me very recently? Near zero chance. Ooh, thought about it. So that is four opens in a row for Bloomquist, five and seven frames. This might actually be his worst week, uh, worst game of the weekend, which is um, to say poorly timed. I think is an understatement. Let's see. Darren went two twenty two, one eighty, two fourteen, one ninety four, one seventy five, and two thirty eight in his qualifying games, so he's at 81 in the seventh. This is definitely not how he wanted to finish his event, but I think either way he's going to walk out of here at least $1,000 richer, so as Henrik Meyer leaves a five pin, makes a five pin. Fills the frame. Gets, gets the monkey off his back. Trey in the seventh. That, see, see, he kept it in front of him that time. Instead of instead of trying to wheel it around, it's the, the, the big wheel is just not there. It's just not there, and his experiments showed him, and he adjusted, and, well, then he puts 10 back. it out of there. What a hit. That's got to feel good. A little redemption. Brady for the ninth frame. Gets them all to go. Big double. Doubles. He's he's gonna need a lot and a lot and a lot of help though. As Trey has a pretty commanding lead here, if he if 
you can just keep the ball on the lane, stay behind the line, and keep it clean. That's all he's got to do. As Darren has goes through the face. And he ball changes and absolutely aces the shot. Unbelievable. The kid's self-taught, folks. He's he figured this out all on his own, and he's 17 years old. And I'm saying to the world right now, y'all better look out. It ain't going to happen tomorrow, but there's a title in that kid's future. Well, that actually didn't happen today. It's just not a PBA title. <laughs> Unbelievable talent. Shout out to Travis. I know he's not here. Wow. Wish he could have been here. But uh, Trey was able to spend some time with his ma as she uh, came up with him. As Darren looks to run this one out. Just makes it harder on himself. As the, the peanut gallery has a, a bit of a laugh just because of how ridiculous this game can be. But Hendrix Meyer Max is out at 176 here. Um, 52. It's not over. Oh, it is. 42. Yeah. That match has, assuming that my math is right between the first two games. I believe that Trent, yeah, Trent only maxes out at 214 here, so not going to have enough. Henrik Meyer is going to bring home the dub. The kid literally had a discussion with his mom last night about whether or not he should have bowled the youth event or the adult event. Wanted to take on the adults. Wanted to see where he is. And he's going to come out on top, folks, and that is... That's pretty darn impressive, if you ask me. Trenton must finish strong, though. And I want him to finish strong, too. He's in his 10th frame. He's on a three-bagger. Pretty good shot there. Jess almost gets a massive break. Packs him home. He's going to take home third place in this year's Badger Elite at the Midwest Bowl Fest here at Weston Lanes. We are not done either, so just keep us up in your browser. We're going to be having our winner come talk to us here, and we got a whole other slew of games left as the women in the Badger Elite Ladies event are going to compete in the same fashion that we have with the men here, we're going to have some two-game total pinfall matches as Tra Trenton pipes the spare ball at the head pin, strikes with his last shot of the weekend. It's not the way he wanted to end it, folks, but tell you what, the fact that he got here at all is pretty darn impressive. He should be proud of himself as Trey looks to fill his 10th, leaves the 3 6 9, 10, but we're just down to details at this point. Trey Henricksmeyer knocks off three of the best bowlers in the Midwest. 17 years old, PBA LBC champion, adds another title to his resume in the 2023 Badger Elite here at Midwest Bowl Fest at Weston Lanes. Congratulations to Trey. Amazing bowling. Couldn't be happier for the kid. Just packs 10 straight back to finish up. Good work by him. Amazing effort. They're going to take some pictures here. We are not going to go away. I'm going to I'm gonna quiet down a little bit, uh, but we're going to just keep the stream rolling. So like I said, keep us in your browser. we got the ladies coming up next. I'm going to have Trey hop in the uh, booth here with me before he gets out of here. Um because I want to hear from him. I want to know what worked, what didn't, and I hope you all can stick around. 
Got a lot of great bowling left and nuts. Not even diving into our, our youth step ladders here. That are going to be coming up after the women. We've got four step ladders to run through. We're going to be doing them side by sides, but we got our U15 division and our U18 division, both for boys and girls. Going to be some great bowling from some amazing youth bowlers as well. The ladies in between then and now. Don't tune away. We're going to be back with more from the 2023 Midwest Bowl Fest.
Thank you. 
55 and 56, we've got our one seed, Carleen Byer, going against Nicole Fooch in our five seed. On 57 and 58, Brooke Salzman, the two seed, will be facing Crystal Risa, the three seed. And the ladies come out, we're going to give you 10 minutes of practice. Uh, you can, you'll be able to start your matches. The winner of each match will face each other for the title. And the higher seed in the finals gets to decide what pair of lanes they go on. I think you hit your reset button and you hit some pins there. All right, good luck, ladies. Women's play room around by lane 60 in the 
All right, folks. We are back. The ladies are warming up. But before we get to that, here he is. Champion again. I was saying that when you were bowling, Trey, that you're going to have to start paying me to just live stream all the tournaments that you bowl because we're two for two. We are. Yeah, we are. Yeah, congrats, sir. Thank you very nice. You taking off? Yeah. All right, man. Get home safe. Uh, what worked, man? I mean, you, you threw like seven different balls on two different pairs. What's the deal? I did that the whole time, actually. Um, it was a grind. Every pair was a little different. Um, mm -hmm. They're all super flat in the middle, not really much shim anywhere. And I pretty much just tried to give um, and pick the cleanest ball that would still come off the spot. Yeah. At all times, I was trying to have the cleanest ball that would get furthest down the lane at any moment. And the moment the lane blew up, I wasn't scared to move, just tried trust in the ball and didn't want to be scared and regret it later. So, you know, as I was on top of it. as I was watching too, it kind of looked like um, there were a few where you really tried to be like, direct with it and kind of cut some axis rotation out. Then there was a few where it's like, oh, then you got to, you know, move three or four left, but you didn't really, you got it, you, you swooped around it a little bit and sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't. What kind of a, how do you, how do you kind of comprehend that, that type of uh, really patience uh, and what it, what it took to, to bring home a win this week? Yeah, I don't know. They were super clipped in the middle and pretty much just trying to take it one shot at a time, try to leave make rules, don't split, I guess. And uh, if I did, try to make a move off of it, know if it was a bad shot or not. And yeah. Trust my ball reaction and my moves. Yeah. You thought about bowling the youth fun, the youth event, yep. and you did bowl the youth event yesterday morning, uh, but had to make a choice. Yeah. Uh, looking back on it now, I think you made the right choice. I agree. Ended up leading the youth by like 40 or 50 so oh did you really yeah i missed that after, part after the qualifying yeah and then four more this morning which i didn't bowl because yep. i ended up going to the adult side mm -hmm. and came away with the win so definitely can't complain with my choice can't complain definitely can't looking uh looking on the lanes now who you got who do you think is going to bring home the win for for the ladies I got Brooke on the right and then carlene on the left all right and then so if it's brooke and carlene in the final who's uh Who's coming out on top? I don't know. I saw Brooke have a little bit of struggles when she had to get left yesterday and a little bit of getting it right, maybe a little wishy ball reaction. But um, yeah. Carlene, I don't know. I didn't really watch her ball reaction too much yesterday, so I'll just take Brooke because well. I know her a little better. So. And it's, you know, it's one of those things, too, where it's uh, looking at some of these qualifying scores. It's essentially a dead heat. You know, yeah. we got the one, two, three, and five seed. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Uh, and, and Carlene did lead. She led by almost 150 over second place. Oh so she, to say she had good ball reaction, I think might be an understatement. And yeah. uh, this is all, you know, for um, yourself. You've had uh, a bit of success in this building. Uh, Darren uh, has a high school state title in this building. Well, Carlene's got one too. Uh, yeah. And she, you know, she's two-time state champ. Uh, one of those titles happened in this building. So. Um, definitely, some of that plays into her favor. We're on a different side too, different bay. So it looks lot. it looks like uh, down lane is a little bit more open too. Yeah, so if it's they, a little more open today than down what I saw down there. When they when they bowl on the the 16 side here at Weston, typically it's it's tough to really get a pronounced down lane reaction. It's it's yeah. not an easy thing. So I I would I mean they're just packing the pocket right now so i would expect I to see quite a bit scoring either way so yeah two absolutely get the corners out the most is my guess mm -hmm. so nobody's gonna have trouble to hit the pocket so nope no nope. it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time i'm kind of excited about it uh anybody you want to shout out i already said hi to dad you said hi to i dad. said hi to dad i wish you i wish you could have been here but i know i wish he wasn't i never <laughs> win when he's here i have i don't know if i won a tournament when he's here. oh well he even texted me earlier he said um, you're gonna do great, especially because I'm not there. So. Hey, you nailed it. Yeah. Way to go, I, Dad. Way to way to sit this one out. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> right. I'm not even sure how to phrase that Literally. one. That's um, funny. Thank Kr for the shoes and whatever. I had a few slide issues this week, so a couple of slide options yeah. were good and yeah, man. stuff like that. The bags and chamois and surface, which yeah. I didn't use much of this week because they hooked so much. But <laughs> right, yeah. you had to keep as much push as you could on the ball. Yep, H5G for the cool jerseys. 
appreciate it. it. Allowed me to like bring my ideas to life. So that's cool. Yeah, man. I ended up wearing all four of them this weekend. Feels feels good to bowl good and look good doing it. Yes, that's for sure. Good work, bud. You want to stick around, or what's your? Um, I was actually gonna eat, but if you want, you should to go come eat. Back, you I need to go eat. You're I'll gonna go back. eat. I'll come back. If you come back, the mic's here for you. Uh, congratulations again, though, Trey. Thank you. I'm proud of you. You did great. Appreciate it. Just keep throwing the rock the way you're throwing it, man. It's working for you. I will. So, Thank all you. right. Thanks, buddy. All right. The one, the two, the three. And the number five seeds for the Badger Elite women's event are on the lanes. They won two matches apiece to get to this point. Got, and somebody's going to win two more matches and bring home some hardware. Going right to left here. Brooke Salzman is our number two seed. Brooke is a freshman at Mount Mercy University in Iowa. She made Junior Team USA this year at Team Trials. She is a 10-time Minnesota Junior Bowlers Tour Championship. Uh, ch title winner, excuse me. She has cashed in a PWBA regional. She won the 2022 Midwest Youth Championships. Originally from Inver Grove, Minnesota. Draculas, 32 balls. She wanted to throw a big shout out to the folks at home. If you are tuning in and watching Brooke, she wants to be, say a big old thank you to you guys for hanging out. Cheering her on. If you are on Brooks' team, let us know in the comments section. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. We'll be doing some more stuff like this. Got some stuff on the schedule. Uh, I'm going to jump over to 55 and 6 here as Carly's just walking off the lanes there. Something to look forward to on 10 Pin Life is actually a feature right about her and her sister we shot uh, not too long ago. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with that story, those two ladies, uh, says Carlene has since graduated from Stephen F. Austin, but her sister, uh, Bristol, is still down there. I believe she is a junior. Um, national titleists, NCAA and the ITC. Uh, they have won both. In her freshman year, Carlene actually led off uh, the TV show for the NCAA Finals. So that's pretty crazy. Like I kind of said, uh, Carlene is a two-time Wisconsin State High School uh, winner. Carlene is from Manawa, Wisconsin, or Ogdenburg. Uh, it's really the middle of nowhere, and that was kind of the point of shooting the video that we did with them because that is a town of about 3,000 people. Uh, it's... It is essentially dairy land here in Wisconsin and grew up in a bowling center that her mom and dad owned, Kegler's Bowling Center. Stayed in the family, but Matt and Jenny, her parents, actually were able to move the responsibilities of operations to her uncle. And it's one of my favorite places in the whole state to bowl. It's six lanes, and it's just very, it's very quaint, and it's a little bit quirky, but you know what? I absolutely love the place. The first scratch tournament I ever bowled was there, and Carlene's a great representative of her hometown, and honestly, the amount of work that she's put in on her game is unbelievable. Uh, she obviously, uh, If you aren't familiar, uh, she did make the Queens TV show this year in her first uh, real PWBA tour event. She finished third. I mean, no, she finished fourth. She won her first match. Uh, great bowler. Great bowler. And her sister's right there with her. So look out. I'm telling you, sister duo here coming on the women's tour. It's going to be a sight to behold. Oh, 
two games, two clear match, and goal for $1,200. The boost to a bowl on the end is a pair in their consolation match. Good luck, ladies. All right. We are ready. Carlene's going to lead us off. She is bowling against Nicole Kaluchin. Nicole is from Plainfield, Wisconsin here. Uh, I've had the uh, pleasure of bowling with Nicole a couple times. Actually won a mixed doubles event here at Weston Lands with her just a couple years ago. Nicole is actually, uh, she has a two-month-old. and She's out here competing with some of the best in the Midwest and, and holding her own, too, doing a great job. It's uh Brooke lines up for her first frame. Oh, yeah. I for, for all of the folks that watched the men's final and watched them grind, you're about to watch a whole lot of strikes, folks. It's going to be a fun bit of a shootout. <clears throat> I will give, uh, I'll give Nicole uh, extra points for style points as that jersey is making me hungry. And uh, well designed there. I love the, love the pizza jersey. Uh, our fourth competitor that uh, has not been mentioned yet, and actually my uh, another lady that I've had the honor of bowling doubles with up in the uh, Merrill area, Crystal Resop, formerly Crystal Brooks, went to Lindenwood University, graduated in 2012, seven weeks ago, had their had her second child. Husband is standing right behind me, cheering her on as Nicole doubles. Crystal leaves a four pin here. Fills it nice and easily. If, uh, if Mike is out there, Crystal's old man, I got two things to say to you, bud. Number one, hope you're doing well. Number two, go Cardinals. Looks like a little bit left for Carlene through the face. Baby split. Looks like she's going to have to trust it to get it get it out to the right. And there are a few of her practice shots. It did look like she had a little bit of misroom to the right, but not quite to the left. So, so Crystal kind of missed that one at the bottom. Just catches one out of that baby split for her first open. Two-game total pinfall matches again, folks. Same format as the open finals. Uh, high score wins. Great spare there for Crystal, taking out the 2-4-5, two, 2-4-8, two, excuse me. Looks like she was throwing a Roto-Grip Idol Helios. I've known Crystal for a long time, and I know that one of her favorite balls that she's ever had was the old Columbia 300 Eruption Pro. Same color scheme. Probably similar shape, too. So maybe that's a... Not sure if it's the color or the way it goes through pins, but either way, it's working for her. Brooks slings some wood across the deck, takes the 10 out late for a opening double. Carlene does her part to fill her frame, taking the 10 out. For any of the, if there are any young ladies that are tuned in and you want to talk about 
uh, bowler who uses their legs to generate power. Brooke uh, might be near the top of that list. Uh, if you watch the way that she really gets down into the shot, it is impressive. And one of those things that, you know, she might be young, but she knows what, he's, what she's doing, and she's pretty darn good at doing it. And if you want to get better in your game, it would be a great thing to try to emulate for yourself. That's Crystal. Resop steps up on the right lane, looking for her first strike of the match. Looks like that was a pretty good shot. And just wobbles the 10 pin. Wobbles it. That was like Dikembe Matumbo saying, no, no, no. Nicole. Collusion went to Alabama A&M University, bowled down there. She was actually the high average winner uh, for our competitor for women uh, across the entire state of Wisconsin in 2021, averaging just short of 240. Nicole's got four 800s to her credit. And she leaves a rough six pin there. Circles are around it, but not quite enough. She's got three 300s. In 2021, she made the cut at the USBC Queens. She did, unfortunately, go 0-2 in her matches. But I tell you what, anytime you make that big bracket, something to be proud of. And everybody around here was proud of her, too. Crystal finally gets all 10 to go. A little high flush with the Helios. Nicole hits that pin so light I thought she missed it but hey that is a spare on the line sore so that's all that really matters what's that <laughs> somebody's gonna go we're at a bit of a standstill here okay looks like Brooke's gonna go No way. Unbelievable. What a hit. Hey, sometimes, sometimes it's just your lane. Carlene with a phenomenal shot there on lane 56. Pushes 10 straight back. She, You can tell she fed that one out a little bit more, trusted it. And the results speak for themselves. It's going to be a shootout, folks. This is going to get fun. Got a little pinball action going on behind us here as Brooke just runs out the 4 7 10 too. Yeah, that's front five. Not, yeah, she, yeah. On the last shot, she fed it out to the right, and it shaped great. That one, she just kind of kept a little bit too far in, and luckily for her, leaves a makeable. But these lanes look pretty wide open. We were, uh, for those uh, bowling nerds out there that uh, are curious, and if you were watching as we were in between breaks or in between uh, games here. We did strip the lanes and then reapplied this women's oil, this uh, ladies' Badger Elite oil pattern. A little bit of details on this pattern. It is a 42-foot pattern. It's 26.85 mils, and it is a 5 to 1, so it is a little bit softer, a little bit more scorable, but... The reason that that was the case was because the 16 side here at Weston Lanes is pretty notoriously difficult to score. So it evened it out, and scores were pretty fair. 
across the board. And now that they're over here on the 24 side, the high side of the 24 side, where a, I believe it was on, I believe it was on 55 and 56, uh, last time that the men's state tournament was here, a man, uh, gentleman won all events on, on uh, I know his minor set was on that pair. It's just some, some great scoring pairs when it's open, and so far, that's what it looks like is happening. Cole just takes the seven off of the two seven there, so she leaves an open. Brooke just keeps on striking. That one was with some authority, too. And that one looked like that one hooked a little bit early on Nicole. Probably, uh, probably getting into needing to make a move with her feet. Trying to keep that ball a little bit further to the left all the way down the lane. She's got a good shape. She's got to be able to use it. Brooke Salzman, six in a row. Looking for number seven here. She's taking her time. Nicole's going to go shoot her spare while she has a little bit of a break. One of you, probably one of those uh, Team USA quirks. Going nice and slow, nice and deliberate. There ain't nothing wrong with that if you ask me. That's what you got to do to score. That's what you're going to do. Looks like you're on around the side of that one a little bit. Doesn't matter. Just absolutely punishes 10. She is ahead of the transition. There's no, re there's no reason that she's our number two seed here, but our number one seed standing up on lane 56, Carlene Beyer. Going to be bowling the women's tour this upcoming season. That is left. That's got to get a lot of help. Oh, gets them all to go. 4-10 out late. Line drive and a box score. All right. Not to be outdone. Crystal Resop here looking for a four-bagger of her own. Oh, terrible break. Just six-pin just... Wouldn't help her out there. There's Carlene. He, and for all of those that believe in bowling karma, there it is. She gets a huge break on the right lane, tripping out the 410, all to just stone a nine pin. As Crystal leaves them all on the deck. She needs to reset. Just worry about the next one. Scoreboard watching ain't gonna help anybody today. If you are curious as well and want to learn more about what the oil patterns were being bowled on, all of that information is available at MidwestBowlFest.com. We are, this is an inaugural event too, folks, and what that means is it's happening again next year. Let's go through some numbers here. There's $8,000 in added prize money for the men's event. There was... I believe four thousand dollars in added money, or more than that, for the women's event. Twelve thousand dollars in added money for the youth events. We went hard, and we're we're giving out some big checks today because of it. Great spare there for Crystal. First place in the women's event is going to be twelve hundred dollars. Second is a thousand. Third is eight fifty, and fourth is six fifty. 
It was a $100 event, so if you made the bracket, you doubled your money. And if you won a match, you quadrupled your money. Those are all numbers. And as my way of saying, come out here next year. You won't regret it. It's going to be the same weekend. We're going to be doing a lot of the same stuff. I'm sure we'll make some adjustments, as we all should. Can't ever assume you have the right answer the first time around. Unless you're Brooke Salzman and you're on the front seven, and now you're on the front eight. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Nicole is a little bit on the struggle bus now. She started out with an opening double and kind of just been in the face the whole time since then. Doesn't look like she changed balls. So here we go. Brooke Salzman, front eight, looking for nine in a row. Right over third arrow. Just wax him. Unreal. What a talent. Cleans up her spare nicely. Well, if you're Crystal Resop right now, what do you do? You put your head down, you throw your best shot. That's all you can do. Tip your cap to your opponent, but we ain't done yet, folks. There it is. Gets one to go. Slap the 10 out late. Let's that one breathe to the right. And ooh, six pin off the wall. Catches the 10 just enough. That's one of those where I think it's it inspires some confidence in being able to let that ball get out into the friction. This crystal lines up for the first shot in her 10th frame. He's a 2-4-5. It's got a wheel. It's got a wheel. Not quite. It looks to me like she's she's really close, just a little quick. And sometimes that's all the difference in the world. Yeah, as Crystal cleans up her spare, great effort there. <laughs> you know, all day. Yesterday during qualifying and during all these matches, if you were in the one 190s at the end of your game with one open, you had a really good chance of winning. But I don't know if there were too many nine baggers put up there either, and Brooke has gotten herself out into a commanding lead. As Crystal just kind of misses left and Takes her nine and is got ready to move on to game two. Here's Nicole. Nicole's nowhere near out of this. She's actually got a three pin lead. And just wraps a seven pin. <laughs> Ouch. All right. But the story of the moment right now is Brooks Hall's been front nine. Inaugural Badger Elite Ladies event here at Midwest Bowl Fest. Looking to put up a 12 bagger. But you got to have number 10 before you can have number 12. Let's see if she can do it. Almost catches the biggest break of her life. But what a run. What a great run. Goes front nine.
Still looking at 270 as Nicole squares up, smashes the 10 pin. Certainly don't make Junior Team USA without cause, and she is illustrating why she has achieved such an honor. Those were some very convincing strikes. As Nicole just keeps grinding. She just keeps grinding. Not sure if making spares is going to be enough to take down Carlene as they're pretty much tied up now. But time will tell. Brooke Ball changes in her fill just to see what it does. Finishes off the 279. She has got a 83 pin lead. That is a lot. It's going to be tough. But hey, it's bowling. Crazier things have happened. Crystal was a uh, Lindenwood graduate, uh, like I said, back in 2021. Uh, took second place at ITC's uh, twice, actually. Bowls out of Ledgeview Lanes in Fond du Lac. She's got four 300s. And like I said earlier, she is coming off of having their second baby just a mere seven weeks ago. Uh, first set, I believe her first set back was in the 790s for league. So even though she had a little bit of time off to take care of the little one and heal up, as she frustrates herself there a little bit for sure, she's, she's going to have to recollect. But she's a great bowler, great friend too. As Carlene goes with the face. She she trusted it, and, and it didn't trust her. That's a tough one there. So, even though Nicole is not struck since the second frame, uh, she will very likely finish this first game with a lead. Good little break there for Crystal to catch a catch a early early spare. like Carlene is actually going to do what Darren did. Nicole Kaluchin is going to walk into game two with a 12-pin lead. Here we go. Game number two of our two game matches here in the semifinals of the women's event here at the Midwest Bowl Fest. Weston Lanes, Wisconsin. Or Weston, Wisconsin. Weston Lanes. Big thank you and shout out to our proprietor here, Dale Elliott and Sarah Elliott and the entire team here at Weston Lanes. It's my home center. I absolutely love these guys. And I couldn't be more excited about the fact that we got to do this, and we're going to do it again next year. And it's it's only going to get bigger, folks. We're we're handing out some big checks today, and when our when the entries double next year, those checks are going to be pretty darn substantial. So y'all got to come out next year. It's going to be this same weekend in October. Also, uh, uh, bro. Takes out the 2 8 of the 2 8 10 there, her first open of the match. Uh, shout out to my lovely wife, Brittany, as well. It is our seventh anniversary, and she's letting me do this, and she's actually sitting just to my left, and uh, huge support. 
So thank you to her as well. As Nicole makes her spare. So here's Brooke trying to bounce back off of her first open. And splashes the rag. Looks like she made another little move there. Just to peep, try and stay ahead of the transition. So we move over to Carleen. Ball change, nuclear forge. Just cracks 10 straight back. What a great shot. Crystal got around that one quite a bit more and just smashes the rack. Great shot for her. Going to need a few more of those for sure. And a little bit of help. But you know what? Nine more frames, to, eight more frames to fill. Never know. Carlene looks to uh, double and close that 12-pin gap left from game one. left. I think she's getting a little qu quick with her feet. I'm sure Matt and Jenny, mom and dad are around here somewhere. Probably hoping to tell her the same thing to get her back in the pocket on that left lane. That's got a wheel and it does. Bang! There it is. Flashes the rack, keeps the train rolling. Brooke Salzman. There it is. And 10 frames later, Nicole gets another strike. It's been a grinder for her, but she's staying as clean as she can. Her only open was on a split. And, well... As they say, split happens. But she's doing really well for herself, considering the fact that her carry really hasn't been there. She hasn't had a great route to the pocket. She's still right in it. That's, yeah, that is just dead roped. She is just tuned in with that 900 Global Eternity. What a shot. Karma. As soon as you feel like you got to look at it, it, just runs away from you and you split. Got around that one again. Pushes them all straight back. Great shot. Crystal did uh, gesture up towards me in between her shots here, and she actually has a touch of a uh, cut on her middle, uh, the pad of her middle finger, so I'm sure getting around the ball is... Not a comfortable experience, but you know what? She's a she's a true pro. Just out there toughing it out, putting up her best effort. And puts up a four bagger. Finally found the feel a little bit. Breathing it out to the right. That was absolutely whacked. Yep. Well, little, little self-talk going on over there. If 
yeah, know anything about the uh, Stephen F. Austin folks, I believe that that's something that they really do preach is to uh, talk yourself through it. Work with your team, work with your friends. Just get them thoughts out because the better you can focus on your next shot, the better shot it's going to be. As Brooke just comes in a little bit light. Looks like she might have lost that one off her thumb a little. Soft 10 pin. that one go and finally gets them all to go on the left lane and it looks like that one was well a little bit slower easier pace with the feet let the ball catch up to her in her swing no doubt about that one wow There's something to be said about somebody that just squares up two round objects like that when shooting a 10 pin. And you just know she's put in the work. It's an awful, awful break for Nicole. Terrible break. Just that might have been the worst stone nine of the entire weekend right there. Wow. Does her, does her part to fill the frame, but that's a heartbreaker right there. Ooh, got around that one a little bit. A little bit more continuous through the pins, almost leaves a nine. But gets them all to go. Brooks Halsman, 279 game one. Hasn't really slowed down much since. Oh, get out of there, six pin. For five in a row. Bang, get out of there, ten. Great shot by Crystal. So Carlene Ball changed to start this game. Has three out of the first four. Looking for a big hit here to take the lead in the match. And the 10 goes out. Great shot. Does give Carlene, I believe, a 20 pin lead on the match as Crystal looks for six in a row. Gets them all to go. It ain't done yet, folks. You never know. She's got to make up 83 pins, but shooting 290 sure would help that if she can somehow find a way to get a few more here. As Carlene looks for a four bagger of her own. Ooh, that one was interesting. Yeah, I think she got a little bit out in front of herself on that one. And probably happy to have left just a soft 10 pin. Brooke just pushing him back again. Impressive. As Carlene goes for a 10 pin. Fills it up. Does her part to stay clean this game. Take the lead here on 55 and 6. Look 
pretty good off the hand. Get up the hill. Shake him out. See you later. That's a double. Well, I'd say that if Brooks strikes on this shot, matches basically reached its end, unfortunately, for Crystal, even though she's on her six-bagger of her own. I think Brooke would pretty much have to go open-open here in the ninth and tenth, and I still don't even know if that would be enough. But I can guarantee you, knowing Crystal the way that I do, she's still going to put together the best shots that she can here. There's Nicole. Yeah, I think that ball just read a little bit early on her. I don't really feel like she's actually missing to the right. I think it's just hooking early on her. And I'm not 100% sure if she's seen it. This Crystal just no doubts her seventh one in a row. Probably thinking to herself, man, where was this game one? Just barely clips the two pin. Keeps her in the match. But she's going to need some help. Here's Crystal looking for eight in a row. Sparing the first frame. And there's eight more. X is to go with it. It for... She just throws her hands up as she walks back to her seat, and she's like, well, shit. <laughs> Where was the... Oh, I just probably shouldn't swear. <laughs> There's Carlene. Shims that one in there, and I bet she's really glad for that to be just nine. Cause that four pin was standing there for quite a long time. Big break for her. Now well, here it is, folks. If Brooks got to make it to 208 total to win her match. If she hits 208 this game, that is an automatic win based off of the lead that she amassed in game one. She splashes the rack, and that pretty much puts her there. And that is some great bowling out of the. Young junior team USA member. Good for her. And honestly, though, you tell anybody that they're going to walk into a, a single game and have an 83-pin deficit, it's pretty easy to give up. And, and, well, Crystal didn't do that. She found a look, and she's executed. Still has 290 up on the board, and she's not going out with a frown on her face. And she's got another match left, too, these... These frames count, and even though she'll end up in the consolation match for the three and four spot, she's still wanting to find something that looks good as Brooks splashes the rack one more time. She is over 500 for her two games already, and she's got two more shots left, so that's huge. As Carlene looks in her eighth frame to get back on the strike train and does, bang, there it is. Now, Carlene had to make up 12 pins. She has done that and then some and needs a little bit of help. Well, Nicole needs a little bit of help on some of these strikes here as Brooke puts all 10 back again. Great effort out of her. She still can, she's still got 250 on the board. Well, she's in the 250s, excuse me. As Nicole goes up the five board and puts them all down. That one isn't over, folks. It's not over. And Brooke finishes strong. 258 to go with her 279. When I said score fest, I didn't think it would be 537 for two. And holy cow. What an effort by Brooke Salzman, Junior Team USA member, Mount Mercy uh, Mustang, I believe, is their mascot there. Great effort.
Crystal Resop, though, still looking to put up a huge number. And that's, yeah, eight in a row. Still can shoot 260s. Great bowling by Crystal here. Yeah, it's to not give up after giving up an 83 pin lead is just flat impressive. But Carlene is looking to put a double on the ninth, walk into the tenth with a really good chance to win her match as she gets it a little bit left and it hangs and just pushes the five pin out of the way. That's a big one. This crystal goes for her ten pin, squares it up. Doing a little hand analysis there, making sure all the skin's still attached. It's been a long few days, lots of games. Some hard-fought matches in our match play bracket round. But here it is. Carlene, she strikes here. It's going to make it real difficult for Nicole to come back. Bang, there it is. What a shot. Way to execute when you need to. As Crystal looks at Brooklyn 9 hit there. Crystal shoots 464 for her two, but that's no match for Brooke Salzman's 537. Unbelievable. Some amazing bowling out of Brooke. She is our number two seed, but... Carlene can bring home the win in her match against Nicole. She was the number one seed, so she's actually going to be able to pick the competition pair for our finals here at the Badger Women's Il Women's Badger Elite at Midwest Bowl Fest 2023. And that's the value of good qualifying. And here's Carlene. Gets a little bit out in front of herself. Gets eight. So she maxes out at 238. Nicole can shoot 65, 25, 225. She's at 238. That is just enough to win. She had, a, she had to overcome 12 pins, and I believe that that is enough if she gets them both. Oh, wait. No, it's not. Nicole can strike out and win. I won. Now she can strike out and win by two. Interesting. So, late inning development here. Carlene goes 8 1 in the fill to shoot 235. 409 total. Nicole up five, needs it to have a chance and just 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 gets past the head pin just a little bit. I think she rusted a little bit and it's just unfortunately not a whole lot of room for that on this. Split sleeves the 3 7. Catches the one. Kind of a rough way to go out, but you know what? What a match. What a match. Good work. Good work, ladies. 409 to 377. Carlene Bayer brings home the win. So it's going to be Carlene and Brooke Salzman, our one seed and our two seed. Bowling for a title. $1,200 on the line for first place. I 
did hear that. I don't know what it was. All right, folks. I'm going to have a little bit of a break here, but getting ready for game number or match number two on the women's side here it is our finals and our consolation matches joined in the booth by the man we heard from well I can, can I even say man I don't know you're still 17 up to you the guy that just won on this pair Trey Hendricks Meyer is gonna join us here to help out with some commentary with the finals you guys can have a relief from my incessant droning yeah struggling over here no I'm doing great I just hope everyone else is. I hope we're all having a good time. It's mid the inaugural Midwest Bowl Fest here at Weston Lanes. Uh, huge shout out to Storm Products, Weston, the Village of Weston, Bob's Business, and the Wasa area USBC. They did a huge, huge help for us to uh, get this thing rolling. It looks like uh, Looks like I lost my train of thought. That's where that <laughs> sentence ended. All right. So, uh, Trey, I asked you before the ladies started who your picks were. You did go two for two there, I so did. that's pretty impressive. Uh, but we ain't done yet. Our, t our finals match is going to be Carlene and Brooke Salzman. I mean, in turn, if you really think about the amount of talent that is currently in gonna bowl on 55 and 56 uh, in, 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 in female bowling like that's a hell of a combination like Brooks what 18 19 years old and she already throws it that good she's J team Carlene's made third you know she finished fourth in the Queens after having a couple national titles down at Stephen F Austin that's that's a lot that's yeah. quite a bit. I mean, I don't want to disrespect anybody, but whenever you come in here and look who's bowling, you're kind of expecting this. At least a good run from both of them. So. Yeah, and here it is. One and two seats through qualifying, so yep. ended up making it through the bracket and everything. So. Kind of fitting, I guess. Well deserved at the very least. Yes, 100%. Brooks throwing an eternity, I believe, still. Yep. Yeah, it looked like uh, in her first practice shot there, got a little bit away from her, but... I think they might be seeing the same thing I saw. So, like, 57 and 8 hooked a bunch in the back. Yeah. A bunch. It always like, does. Yeah, they were super, super quick off the back, and we were able to swing it to the right and watch it come off a bit. 55 and 6 was super tight. Super, yeah. super tight. You can't really create big angles either. Got to try to keep it in front of you, but they're so flat for us, at least they were. But for them, they should be able to keep it in front of them and shim it a little bit more with the pattern we got. Yeah, it'll be interesting, uh, you know, because not to say that. I guess the easiest way to put it is Carlene kind of struggled on that pair. Yeah. I, I don't think that she bowled up to the level that she knows that she can bowl up to. I, it's, that's about the only way that I can really put that. And it's it's not to say that um, I think she bowled poorly. I just think that she knows that she can do better. Yeah. Um, but it's also, you know, the lane conditions are kind of conducive to, you know, when they get tight, cramping in those lines a little bit. Her misses were pretty much all left. Yeah. Um, Brooke kept on a little more in front of her, shaped up. Yeah, a little bit too much. See, I'm, I'm, I know I'm sitting back here, and I ain't up there, so my uh, opinion is probably not worth its weight. Um, but I think that that's too much ball for this pair. Eternity. Mm hmm. Yep. Because on the first shot that she missed right, it labored, and on that shot, it was too much through the pins. So awesome. unless she makes a yeah, it's just wailing like down lane. I got you. Yeah. It's 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 close. It's close. But it's she has I, a fate I, down there. I think that if she throws that fate, she's gonna have a better chance of probably not repeating the 537 effort that yeah. she put put together because that's huge. But getting closer for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But we're gonna we're gonna see. I guess I'm yeah. kind of excited about uh, it. 
I didn't see her really bury any in the with the eternity. So yeah. We will see what she decides. Yes, we will. She was telling me how much she liked her fate at the college tournament last weekend. So, well, and then her her uh, couple fill balls on fifty seven and eight had flushed it both times too. I don't think she missed flush very many times on that pair. That's very true. I think she so flushed pretty much every shot. Yeah. <laughs> so there is that. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. So, but for our consolation match, Nicole's gonna lead off here. It looks like she made a pretty big move there to the Inside, right. Yeah. yeah. Holy cow. Keeping in front of her, I guess. You know, that's. I, I've, Obviously, Nicole doesn't quite have the rev rate that a lot of other people do. and um, you know, Some people would look at that and say it's a weakness, but, man, when she, you gotta play straighter angles. When she lines up, it's she's hard to beat yeah. on either side. I mean, you don't – she averaged almost 240 a couple of years ago, and sure, it's in league, but over Beatable. 30 weeks? Yeah. That's impressive as Crystal just keeps the strike train rolling on the uh, right lane there. I don't think she's missed since frame eight of game one on that lane. All right, so here we go. We had our theories about Brooke Salzman's ball reaction and sticking with the eternity. Now they count. That so she inside. bumped it in. Shim. Yeah. And that shim. All right. So maybe that's I don't I don't know if she put it there on purpose, but she probably should next time if she didn't. Yeah. The uh, about halfway down the lane it started reading a little bit and wiggled and then hooked again, so I'm scared if she gets it to the hook spot right, it's going to overhook almost. Yeah, it, either that or it just could just lay up and or just, just nerf, nerf yeah. through the pins too. Yeah, it's, it's all possible, I suppose, as Crystal starts with a pretty darn commanding double there. Just wrap 10 or just crush 10 straight back. I don't, I, th I don't know if she's throwing the one remix or the one encore. I think that's a remix. I think it's the solid. I believe it's the remix. And she's making that thing pop off the spot. So, yeah, it's Apparently it again. Yeah, and yeah. it just it's it's a li it's I think it's just a little bit too much core. She needs probably is no or or it's not enough. It's like it's just in between. I think if she had a little bit more core, got it a little bit more forward, it could be there as Nicole matches Crystal's opening double with an opening double of her own. Um, because the other thing too was um, as on the last match on 55 and 6 when when Carlene would trust it and let it float and actually, you know, it would come off of it. It came off of it. Yeah. But it, but that's, you know, that nuclear forge is symmetrical. It's a it's a pretty pretty low RG core. It spins up pretty quick. Okay. Eternity is not a slow okay. or it's not a fast core. Yeah. So No, that ball is super forward and tumbly. Mhm. Mm so Which is why I love it. <laughs> That's I my that's my jam right there. I have there. three new in box at my house, and uh, I've yet to drill one. I don't know if I'm going to, but you thinking gotta, about it. You gotta. You want me to? I mean, you gotta. I'll drill one. What good is a ball doing in a box? Trade value. Whatever. If you guys are in the comment section right now, would you actually care about the trade in va trade value of a ball that might have it in five years, or would you just put holes in it? I'm curious. Let me know. Well, no, 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 not like over long periods of time. Or even like in the but like, like if in I want to trade for something that comes out. Well, yeah. yeah. So within okay, within a year. Yeah. Either way. Right. I don't know. Chris the reset. There. That is, yeah. She so she's oh There's there it is. This there it is. I had five of my own in six games. It was pretty <laughs> impressive. They weren't easy down there, though. They, they were, were definitely hard. Did you feel like this? it was easier over here or no. just different? They were harder. They were harder. You would blend down there if you were in the right ball. Down here, they just super weird. That is left. Catches two. Very left, yeah. Well, nope. We got nothing but strikes on 57 and 8, eight right here, so that'll be a good match. Excited to see how this one turns out. Bit of a better effort there out of Crystal. Just just missed it left, though. I think the motto of the weekend has been missing by more. Yes. That every time all weekend you miss by a little bit. There are hard enough patterns where you split, wash out, all that stuff. You mm -hmm. miss by enough, you're going Brooklyn, leaving the 1-2. So mm -hmm. can't really complain about those makeables. 
So Carlene looking to bounce. I'm surprised that she went to the primal shock. Now I'm not because that was wrapped. But I think she just missed it at the bottom of the right I, lane. Yeah, or maybe. Because like both on the left lane have looked really good. So. Crystal going at the uh, six, seven, ten. Catches the two, making sure her middle finger is still attached. She's got a big old blood blister on the really? thing that oh. uh, she's been. That is uh, not what you want to see. No, it was. It, but but also, as soon as it developed, she put up an eight bagger. Maybe you do because she see has it, I guess. to. Now she can only really catch it with her ring finger, so it's gonna get her on the side more, and it's been working really well for her. That'll create a little more shim for you too. Here's Brooke Back striking a spare. That's last that's, one. that's yeah. left her. A little bit, yeah. I think there might be some trust issues with that piece. Yeah. That doesn't look like she wants to throw it to the right. There's Nicole looking at. Uh, Oh my. Wow. Just. Just keep it close, I guess. Just wow. Nice. Good rack. <laughs> <laughs> is that one of your. In your. In the, in the youth bowling circuit, is that uh, one of those memes? Um, I say bad rack a lot. You do. I, I hear you say it a lot, and I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I just say it a lot because. It's never your fault, right? Well, I, I, I did get to have a conversation uh, Bounce out. with a professional bowler in the last week or so that told me that he's never thrown a bad shot in his life. They just didn't all strike. Now, obviously, he's being facetious, but... Yeah, but here, it sounds like you're right on that same wavelength is what nah, I'm getting at. Nah. <laughs> nah. If, you, if you 7 ten, it's the rack, for sure. <laughs> And now if you do it twice, then it's you. You need a ball change. Mm. Or move. Or both. Or or both. All right. Well, let's see if she can not have to do any of those things and just get back on the strike train here. That looks like a little it's bit of a better shot. Down. It's going to shake there and bake. Go. Yep. If the pins are hitting each other, that means they're falling over. This is true. She ball changed here. Yep. Look at that. See what it does. Ooh, it's got, got it to the right. Got it further to the Come right. Off of it. Yeah. Uh, it came off of it pretty good, though. It did. Uh, it a little quick, maybe? I would just bump a couple right and keep it in front of me. Close off the angles a little bit. Yeah. I don't know how flat they are in the middle, though. So maybe you don't want to do that. Just slow down a little bit, shape it a little more. It, it is relatively flat in the middle. I mean, you get inside of 10, it's... Yeah, inside of 12 is flat. Yeah. Which That's Crystal leaves the 4-7 there. It's kind of flat in the middle. Yes. Well, she's got to make this spare to keep it going. And honestly, too, like, for as much fun as watching her uh, 500 effort there the last two games was... It, this is the kind of stuff that you expect out of a title match is those nerves go up a little bit. You know, you're not going to throw your best shots in the world. Especially moving pairs, you don't really know what to expect. Right. You only get a couple shots on each lane, and what was working so well it's a pair away anymore. is just not there. And, yeah. and Carlene does have an advantage, and that's, you know, make qualifying matter. That's what hap that's what yeah. happening right now. She got the advantage. Mm-hmm. She doubles here. She's got a 30-pin lead. That's just one of the advantages of being the higher seed, which you get a – I don't know if they got a buy or not, but – They did uh, not. They there did. was no buy in the women's bracket, but they only oh. had to win two matches. Okay. As Carlene runs the nine out, great so, shot. I guess with that, that is one advantage of being a higher seed. So I'm glad that – I always love to see whenever they give higher seeds in qualifying um, advantages because if you lead by 300 – and somebody goes 100 under, and they also make the number. Mm -hmm. Why should you guys be in the same spot? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't agree with that. But. Crystal, Crystal jumps right back on the strike train there. I think they did a good job with everything this weekend and formats and making it fair for everybody. So it's it was definitely unique. Yeah. Um. But but you know when I when I made the video kind of talking about this thing and it was just like, as I let Carlene put her, get her three bagger up here. Ooh, that's got to hook a lot. Oh, almost runs Didn't the two quite down. Catch the bottom again. In that uh, in between cliff spot. On her, like I think her miss a lot of times is if her feet get fast. Yeah. 
she she pulls it and she's and she's so up and down uh, getting to the line which is kind of her like trademark and it works so well for her but it can kind of throw it off and if you miss it at the bottom when you're playing steep you know playing playing bigger angles, angles like that yeah uh, that's tough as Nicole just smacks 10 uh, but yeah the the whole weekend, man. Like, obviously, it's, it was a it was a massive undertaking, uh, a bold undertaking, no less, to yeah. to put on three events and really five events. Yeah, really. Um, three main ones over, and two side ones over three days, and all in the same building and simultaneously. It's impressive. And we went smoothly. Yeah, we. I, I mean, there was. I know that there was. Uh, I heard that there was maybe like one breakdown that maybe lasted ten minutes. Yeah. Um, but if, but that was if it, you think I mean, about the number of lines that we filled, and we had one breakdown for ten minutes. It's not so bad. It's impressive. We got got some some good help around here. Had a lot of guys hanging out in the pits, all we are in the in the back all weekend. Yeah, it's Brooke looks to a little more so, in front of her. So yeah, she's, looks, now she's trying to trap it and didn't trust it. Not at all. She's in a tough spot. One thing that I find interesting that uh, came into play for me, and uh, the ball returns on this side are farther up than they any are. other place in the building. Mm -hmm. So the middle is really far back. Um, yep. And then over here, they're pretty far up relatively. And then on the low end, they're uh, in, between. in between. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was able to walk around the ball return down there. If I wanted to get in front of it over here, I would have had to three step. So mm -hmm. that's kind of something interesting, too. Yeah, it just it it modifies the the whole perspective of, yeah. of like how you get to the line. Even though it's a stationary object, and even if you're not walking around it, it can mess with you. Oh yeah. Like if you kick it or clip it or something like that, it could chuck it straight out the window and mm -hmm. almost fall on your face, I guess. But Ooh. oh, yeah, her look was so good on that lane. It was bound to happen at some point. I think they're pushing down a little bit too, yeah. right about now. So, yep, time to make some moves and get the corners up. All right, let's check some of these comments here. Oh, nothing yet. Got a few, but all right, Brooke Salzman looking to. Uh, Change your luck here. That's six frame. That looked like a better, more committed uh -oh. shot. It was that in between? So, oh. That's a oh. humongous break. That was gigantic. Yeah. If that, Especially on a spare, too. Saves pins. If that big fours, ouch. It was 24, 25 sticks. Like that. She's probably a little upset that she flagged the 10 pin on that lane last time, but that's bowling, right? If you, you're gonna keep leaving them until you make it. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know why that holds so true. I, yeah. But I missed a four pin yesterday, and I was like, I don't know the last time I missed a four pin, and then I left like three more in a row, and I was like, Are you serious? <laughs> it just, they just keep coming back at you. Yeah, she has three 10 pins in a row too. That one's better. <laughs> Lucas down there giving her a like Got, a big uh, clap for that. Brady Stearns, uh, yep. given uh, he's uh, Brooke is from the Inver Invergrove area over in the Twin Cities zone. So Brady is. Oh. I don't know if he's from there, but I know that he's from near there. Yeah, he's around there. It's about. I think he's up in. Uh, Mendota Heights? Monticello, I think. Mon oh, yeah. Yep. That's it. I could be completely wrong. But I'm pretty sure that there. that's it. I don't know. That's just my guess. She caught that one. Trusted it right. And ooh. Ain't going to roll that one. She caught that one, though. Just yeah, she did. Fired it there. Yeah, it's on the ones that she's gotten slow, she's missed. What happened? And the ones that she's hit. She's been quick. Stuffed eight there by Crystal, too. Stuffed eight. Yeah. That is a... Uh, well, I was... During the first uh, first round, Nicole had the worst stuff nine I've seen in a long time. 
It was not even heavy, just it, buried. Nine. It was just an absolute smash nine. Yeah, love to see it. <laughs> or as you would say, bad rack. I that is a very bad rack. <laughs> Great spare. Gotta love sticking to the process, even when there's free hook to the right. Running straight at the spare. Hooking at spare scares me. For Ooh, that's sure. inside. Oh. oh, pile drive the six pin. What's that lead at now? She is leading by 11. Technically, yeah. If we're doing that math. Mm -hmm. Max score is a lot more than that. Yeah. Yeah, Nicole can sheet for 45 and Crystal can for 224. Yeah. Looking to get back on the strike train. Yep. Shakes out the seven pin. Not the most decisive strike I've seen today, but a strike no less. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like she might be too far left after going light so many times. And with how much hook there is right, I almost feel like I would try to use it a little bit more. But yeah. There it is. That was a big double. It is. Do you know how much money they're competing for on the matches? Uh, so first place is twelve hundred, second is a thousand, third I believe. Uh, let me look so uh, rather than they're assuming. They're bowling for two hundred. Uh, third is eight fifty and fourth is six fifty. So they're both so two hundred dollar matches. 200. Yeah. But like, a, it's twelve hundred bucks for a women's event. Yeah. In the middle of Wisconsin, in October. Yeah. That's a, that was, that's some good. big dollars, dude. Pretty good. Brooke, she hasn't struck since the first frame. This is in the seventh. She Terrible missed it left that. again. Well, hey, I sometimes feel like the strike percentage on that side in this building is about ninety percent. It, well, my most, my most decisive strikes yesterday were definitely on the left side of that. <laughs> Consistent. When you go, f when you flush five Brooklyns in six games, I think that just means that you're good at it. That's Crystal. I think that's just the right splits. Bit. You're just doing yeah. the right miss. That's your shim. See if she trusts this one here since she's off a strike. Take advantage of the break. I think she might be tightening up a little bit too. Just, just free and easy. That one's good. That was good. It's just got a hook. Oh. Let's see. I think that's why Carlene's trying to shim it in. Yeah. I don't know if there's quite as much bump down lane as it as we think. As we is. think, yeah. This crystal goes to shoot the split. Big bounce. Oh. Two hundred max for her. Still two forty five off for uh, Nicole. I'm gonna be real honest. I would not want to have to shoot this sleeper right now. And she just buries it. Buries it. <laughs> like when you watch your ball wiggle like that. Ooh, yeah, no. And then and you, you know got, you have right? to go there. And you know there's hook right. Yeah. Oh, you get it there quick. You're worried about it over hooking. You don't want to shim it past. Lots it. of ways to miss that spare. As Crystal looks like she bumped in a little bit, tries to get it more forward in just seven tens. Man. So many ways to leave it's that, like crystal and I are bowling doubles and Merrill again. It's just how it works every time. Watch it hook. I was gonna say she threw that one so not to her liking that I'm like, well that's that's gonna strike. It was but slow enough though. So it, it came was, off of it. It was. It's a, uh, I, that's uh the, the coach in me would say good nine. Yeah. Crystal catches the one off that 710 to shoot 179 game one. If Nicole strikes here, that puts her in the 230s. Um, so that would be, it wouldn't be the 83 pin lead that uh, Brooke put on her in the first match, but it could be 60. Or it could be, yeah, up to 66. That's why it's two game. Leads mean nothing. That's true. Great spare shot there for Carlene. All right, Nicole to really.
really try to put herself out in a in a good spot here in the consolation match. Ooh, just can't quite get the ten to go. Twenty four off now. It's one thing about two games that I like is you get lined up towards the end and they got a lead on you that way. There's a possibility for you to get that much, well, that many pins that's back. A, that's just it. You know, you, Crystal has an 83 pin deficit and she almost makes the damn thing up. Yeah. Like, love that. Got a hook. That is. She's got to do something different. That's not she's it. Too far left. She's too far left. Or with the wrong ball. She, I think she's both. I think she needs to go back to that nuclear forge and I think she needs to just let it float and tr and throw it slow. Yeah, that nuclear would be good right now, actually. Well, it looked, I don't, so, it, so she struck with it a bunch. A little forward, a little tumbly. Mm -hmm. Could be pretty good. Kind of like the Eternity for Brooke, but I think they're a little cleaner. So. Nuclear is cleaner, for yeah. sure. And it's symmetrical, too. Is it? Yeah. Oh, well, it shows how much I know. Two. It's a Russian. 189 to 205 off. Goal to fill it up. Yeah, I think she just doinked that one. one. Uh, it, it, the other thing, too, uh, to kind of touch on with the match between Crystal and Nicole, they both just had babies like eight weeks ago. Really? Like literally, their, their two kiddos are within days of each other. That's and crazy. they're both out here, and they're still crushing it. That's awesome. Crystal's first setback at league was 790. <laughs> That's insane. Back to the eternity. Trusted it. She got that one to roll. She got that one to roll, and it just went forward, and that looked great. That's a good. That's that's trusting your trusting your head, trusting your game. Trusting the move too. What the hell was that? That was a cup of water. All right. Well, at least it's on the carpet. No real obstructions here. So Nicole finished with 221. 42 pins. F 32. 42. 42. 42. 42 pin deficit for Crystal. Wouldn't put it past her, though. As Nicole looks got that lead in the game. Be right back. Eternity here. And trust it again. 3610. Right. Yeah. Gives her 185 off, which would at best be at worst be four down for her. Tricky spare though. Especially with the hook right. You never know if it's a chop. And she already has one miss makeable on that lane. Yeah. This one's more in the middle of the lane though. Multiple ways to make it. It's got a hook. That's got a hook a lot. Ooh. And it does. Thank you, Mix. <laughs> That's why you throw the urethane spare ball right there. <laughs> no. I guess I'm two-handed, so that doesn't really count. Yeah, I was going to say, you can make anything hook. Yeah, that would uh, be my new strike ball. Same miss as in the yeah, fill. Yeah, I think she's, she's, getting her, she's getting fast with her feet again. Oh, to the summit. Didn't trust me. Well, 184. So even though Carlene has not really bowled uh, in the way that I think she knows that she can, um, she still has a chance to leave game one with a lead. If she doubles and gets six... She will leave with a lead. Well, this game with a lead as my black pen dies. Awesome. Ooh, got up the hill. Pride Dynasty. Seems a bit concerned about how it went through the pins, but uh, 10 is 10. Issue here with my scoring system as my 
things moved, but I'll get that fixed up here in just a minute as we wrap up the first match or first game on our title match here. Bumped a little right, I think. Kept it in front of her. And that was that a was great good. shot. Wow. Good move off the last one, too. She's got Mister with it too because she got that one further to the right. Yep, in enough oil in the fronts and strong enough down lane for for that ball being a solid asim. It does not play like a solid asim. I don't think. Crystal yep. through the face. She could have took a few pins back right there too. Mm -hmm. Instead, I think she'll be losing a couple. Shoot it. Oh. Hey! Crystal Resop takes out the 6 7 10. That's cool. Rook back to the attorney. Trusted it. It's laboring. Yeah. It's still laboring. I'm, I'm honestly surprised that she's sticking with it, but. She also kept it close. So, yeah. for as much as it doesn't seem right, she's got a four pin deficit so it, and on a, on, a, on a pair that has gotten pretty difficult yeah they're pretty clipped right now that's got a shape it's good oh yeah punished it oh yeah run over the eight pin I love it when they sound like that oh that's got a hook a lot two missed makeables both corners both corners but if you're gonna leave one <laughs> do it in the first frame yep yeah. Lose the least amount of pins. Mm -hmm. That's good. Just Nicole looking to yeah. get her first strike of the second game here. Puts it home. So she got the, the fill ball to the right, and she splashed the rack. The first one she aced. Yep. That one was left. So I guess the real question is. Well, she threw she it all three in the tenth. Did she? Yeah, she went like can well, this, opener. Well, that one was left. That, yeah, yeah, that yeah. one was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She like went can opener. I think she bumped a couple Oh, my right. God. Oh. Two in one day. Are you kidding me right now? Wow. Got a feel for her. You, you put the shot down, and it just just bites you right back. It's awful. Bowling's not fair. <laughs> no. Great spare there for Carlene. No doubter. up the nine pin that never should have been there in the first place. Okay. I think this is kind of a defining frame for Carleen. She hasn't thrown this ball on this lane yet. I don't think she, that she's really thrown too many good shots on this lane. I think this lane's a little tighter. But if she can get this to it's go, yeah, you know, it is definitely tighter. That's what it was for me, too. That's why I threw two balls towards the end. Mm -hmm. so I think that lane is just not as much down lane. So maybe she can bump a couple right, and that could be good, though. Keep it in front of her. Not give away the hip pin too much. 
Crystal just good. packs 10 there, man. Can't throw it much better than that. I know one thing. She don't want to finish uh, fourth. I know that. Yeah. That's one way to do it. Carlene cleans spare. up her spare. Nice and simple there. And just like that, it's back to four sticks, even with the misspare. Assuming she strikes. Yeah. But that has not been a guarantee, though, but. No. Yeah, I do my math based off of max score. Yeah. It's pretty bad. But I'm just always assuming the 10 bagger. I just assume my opponent's going to throw a 15 bagger. <laughs> so. I would be way too anxious if I assumed that. Good, That's she got around it. That yeah. was good. That looked real. so she opened up her axis rotation a little bit, got it to float, but then that core straightened it out. That's why you throw the forward stuff if you're gonna eat around it. Let it shape, come off the spot. Open up the lane. There's Nicole on. Okay. Um, so she bones a nine pin, and then splashes a seven ten. Couple of bad racks. You said it. And you're putting the ball where it needs to go, but it's not always going to happen. Our uh, stance around the... That looks pretty good. The Come off of it. Yeah. Hey, nice double. And that might be... Uh, is that her first double on this uh, pair? I believe so. As Nicole tries bounce. to get one to bounce, Ooh. and it just never does. We did see one. Um, Trayton, or Trenton threw, threw one that bounced out. That's the first time I've seen that happen here in a long a time. Out? <laughs> yeah. Really? It stays on the deck and like, oh yeah, they don't, they don't bounce. I bounced two out this week. On the twenty side. Well, oh, you mean on this side? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't do that. That looks it's really good. Shim. Yeah. That was. Ten straight back. Great shot. I think she moved a little bit further left. I think she just missed in. Maybe. That's my guess. You see, and that's a that's a fair four pin for Nicole. It's a six it's pin. Six pin. Yeah, wrong side of the lane. <laughs> Y'all knew what I mean. All right, Carlene. Maintain the lead. Yeah. Double double gets her a little bit further ahead. Just gotta get up. That lane's just so much tighter, I think. Man. Brutal. Just, I think that strikes on the right lane. It at least has a much better chance and it yeah. probably if anything, it's soft tens. Exactly. Cole runs the six down. I might. Ooh. It's a grinder. It is a grinder. Brooke with another double here could take it the lead. Pretty decent one too. Ooh. Man. I've seen so many of those this week. You, you know what though? Like that pair, because in the consolation match uh, from the open. It broke down hard and fast. Oh, yeah. It went open quick. It, it was pretty crazy, and I think that Crystal's seeing some of that. Yeah. Ours blew up pretty fast. That's good. Oh, man. That's a good shot. That was a very good shot. I think she's getting a little bit of confidence back, too, so that's always a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, the, the other thing, too, to go with, with Brooke and shoot it. Ooh. One of the one of the things that I think is pretty commendable about Brooke's game is even though her look has gone away, uh, her physical game has still been pretty much on point yeah. this whole match. She's still using her legs. She's still, you know, in the right spot most of the time. It's just not making the right shapes. 
It's a testament to patience, as soon as I say it, of course, right? It's three. Three in two games is uh, not what you want to see. Still only five pins, though. That's yeah. it's not over. Six. Six pins. It's I thought it was four after game one. 56 to 50. Math is hard, all right? <laughs> Math is hard. <laughs> as Crystal pushes 10 straight back there. She's got a great game going. I mean, she's still she's yeah. still in there. And she made the 6, 7, 10, and 4, 9, which she can't really do much about. Mm -hmm. but hook. Man, that lane is just tight. I think she's doing that a little harder, too. Straight up tight. Yeah. It's not going to get away with it on that lane. Back to what we were saying. You keep leaving it after you miss one. Yeah. They just come right back. That kicked the seven out of it is. Great shot for Nicole there. Been a minute since she struck. It's the first since the third frame, and that was the seventh. Brooke's really taking her time on this one. I don't blame her. Just got to visualize that for as simple as it seems to make a 10 pin. Sometimes you got to actually see the line. Yeah, got to go back to your process and. Sometimes you're not able to stay there. Yeah. That's bad. And it was worth it. I think, her, I think she's got some thumb issues, too. She might be opening up a little bit, which could be playing into the reaction issues, too. It's Nicole. Looks the trust the, issues, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's got a shim. That's got a shim. Yeah. That's a makeup hit right there, folks. Yeah. That makes up that, for the old. That makes up for the eight nine. pin or the nine pin, yep. Good, good lane. It's going to get there. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's the right gets ball. out. It's definitely the right ball, at least on that out. lane. Uh, yeah. It's kicking the 10 out pretty nice. I swear, I don't see that hit here very often. It's a lot of wraps that kick it out with mm -hmm. the six. It, like, rarely kicks out yeah. like that. Yeah, the, 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 the uh, kick plates are actually pretty live, um, but the gutters are the deep. The flat gutters are pretty deep. So... Like, messengers fly. Like, oh, you yeah. threw a wicked messenger that was, like, going 30 miles an hour across the deck. Yeah. It was nuts. Um, I didn't need it, but you didn't it went it. across. Right. It was cooking. Yeah. Like, mixers here are super good. But kicking out that 10 like that's pretty tough sometimes. It's gotta she moved up. right. Shape. Oh, oh it just fluttered That lane her. is just not it. You know... This is the this is the house bowler in me. That's when I go to the air. I think I think everything is just a little cooked up front. And I think that if she can and it's hard, right? It's hard to throw the ball in the air and still do the right thing as Crystal just pushes ten trade back for a three bagger. She's in a great spot. Looks like she's gonna take home third place here in the Badger Elite Women's Edition in twenty twenty three. Hey, Quite a reaction what for making the, uh, a 210. What was the difference on the, wasn't it 45? Well, actually, yeah, you're right. Nicole if Nicole strike strikes here. Yeah, she can still win. Buried. That was smashed. Yeah. That one was smashed. I think she needs the first one. First, first two. two. Yeah. First two, and Nicole can Take it actually shut Crystal out. If she uh, strikes out, that crystal will gain back. So, it's pretty good. And yeah, that flat 10. Yeah, it appears her thumb is just yep. opening up. It's got to be the worst feeling. You shoot 530 for two. You just get that little nick on there. Move right next door and can't beat it. Wow. Clutch. That is a big shot. Clutch. Nicole's grind. I think she's 
been grinding harder than anybody of these four. She's got her little fellow over there watching her bowl. Both of them. The other one's just really little. And Brittany's, my wife's holding the holding the eight-week-old one. So. Yeah. All right. Brooke has another 10-pin here. Did she miss it again? Nope. Just gets over there. Had a little bit of doubt on that one. You can almost see her trying to be nice to her at the bottom because of her thumb. So. Mm -hmm. In a moment where it's almost like you've got to get on top of it. And oh, yeah. Here's Nicole. Sharp. And just pushes him down. Puts up five in a row. Late five bagger to stay there. And my bowling math is terrible. What? But I'm pretty sure that that's, that makes a win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think she just needed the first one and could count. Like nine, I think. So. Yeah, 216 to 244 if Crystal strikes out. That's a, that's a big clutch up right there, man. That is uh, showing up in the 10th. That was a really good shot. That's got to be it, right? Yeah. Ooh. She threw that very, very well. Especially on the title lane. Yeah. Right. She, she stayed behind it. Like she she threw it a little bit faster. It looked like she bumped a little bit right. Got around it. Did all the stuff. For the road. Nine to go. 215 for Nicole. 436 total. Can't really complain about that. No. Not on this stuff, man. I think that the well, we we saw the anomaly in the last match with the with uh, Brooke shooting the five thirty seven. That was that was the highest That's two big. games I think of anybody put together all weekend. As Carlene splashes the rack. Yeah, front nine too. This is seven pin match with three frames left, man. Yeah. Crystal finishes up her 10th frame. Carlene finishes on the left lane, too. Sacks the four pin out. Can't forget about that. She does. Yeah. It's a telling shot, I think. That's yeah, we see two tens twice in a row. Threw it a little slower. Wow. wow. Just can't get it to hook on that lane. It's tough. Not a whole lot else you can say about it. It's just tough. That lane was not very friendly to me either. But, uh, ooh. I think that lane is uh, not very good down lane. Topography 55? Wise. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so they had um, they had the whole place leveled not too long ago. Um, and they're pretty regular about it. No, they did. Um, There's got to be a weird panel in the middle, like towards the end. It's just, wow. Gets a huge break. Huge break. That is uh, scary. Crystal finishes up shooting at her seven pin here. What a weekend for her. Seven weeks after having kiddo number two, fourth place in the Women's Badger Elite here at Midwest Bowl Fest 2023. Here we go. Carlene's going to make a ball change for the 10th, I think. Jackal Ghost. See if she's missed it. Rook can double here and force her to – force Carlene to double, I think, to get her to strike. Brick doubles here. It's in her hands. It's good, I it's think. It's got to push. Yeah. And it does. Great shot. There's five pins, right? Uh, I, think, I so. think so, yeah. It's a big shot. She misses here. Carlene can strike out and shut her out. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So she controls her own destiny. That's gonna be a tall order to fill, though. She I got the last one. I think if Brooke can strike on this lane, like that's that's a statement. Yeah. Because that lane's tough. It's 
to set up the tenth. It's in front of her. Dang. Gets them all to go. Wow. Big shot. Wow. That is uh, impressive. That's very impressive. She is blowing on that thumb like it's on fire, too. I bet it feels like it. <laughs> it's got to hurt. Well, it ain't over till it's over, right? No. Carlene can still put up a three-bagger here. I think and, that'll and force uh, Brooke to get the first one, I right? I think so. Get lucky. Oh. Gotta get oh mega my. lucky. 96. Brooke just needs a mark, I believe. That's good count. Yeah. Yeah, Brooke's up. 29 on max. 30. At the, with the spare, it's 30. 29. Well, it all kind of comes. I mean, Brooks look on the right lane hasn't been perfect. Carlene's look on the left lane has been bad, just flat out bad. But if she can find a way to put up a double here, at least force Brooke to mark. Trust in the ball change too. I think she's gotta. I mean, you can't really. I, I mean, especially if she made the move and gets six. I mean, you can't really trust it that much. Last frame of a long weekend too. You gotta. No reason to hold anything back yeah. now. No reason to play scared. Switch to a Gap Jackal Ghost. Shape it. Oh, skin. Yeah, just it's just, it's tough. Lane that lane's bad. Yeah. That lane is just, it's just, whatever, whatever happened with the cliff, it just pushed a lot. I think moving right, keeping your angles in front of you, not touching the hook would have been my move, but. I think that's just the only way to control the head pin, really. Hard to say. The graph says five to one, but it's not. It it's ain't not playing, playing like it right easy. now, that's for sure, yeah. It's not playing that easy. So she goes nine spare. 193. She could pin, I think. Oh, did I? Oh, I did nine spare. She did seven spare. There we go. Let's see if that one comes off of it. Yeah, I mean, there it is. fill ball always carries, folks, and that is that's the best proof you can have. As as soon as it, as soon as you feel like it doesn't matter, and your arm swing loosens up, and you just get up there and fire the dang thing, they all fall over. Every time. If I could do that every time, I'd do it, but I can't. <laughs> I don't think anybody can. Just loosey goosey. Just needs pins here, I believe. Yeah, we're in, amount, we are into victory lap territory. Pretty sure. I mean she's she on, she's on a double, so it's 20 yeah. plus. So she's already at 369. She needs four pins. Is that what it is? Yeah. Just barely. Oh. Got it right. Okay, let's test my bowling math. Never mind. I was wrong. She needs two to tie, I think. I, I could be wrong because it's got the ratcheting no, scoring going on. I think she has to make it. So, so she she gets two, it's 181. Which is not enough. Well, no. Well, I know that if she gets two, she at least ties. She needs not this hard. I didn't know that we would need a statistician for this. I didn't either. No one had told me. Gotta have two. <laughs> yep, that was enough. That was enough, just. That was enough to win by two. Just barely. Carlene, yeah. No, Brooke won. Oh, really? Look at the scoreboard. It says 374 to 372. Oh, I'm so stupid. Oh, man, Trey. What an effort, though. Brooke Salzman goes from shooting 537 in her first two in match number one to grinding out a 374 to win. With three missed spares. With three missed spares, but just kept, her, kept herself in it as best as she could. That was a challenge. 
Holy cats. What a what an effort though. What an effort out of Carlene. She had the longest weekend out of all of us because she actually was nice enough to come and do the pro am on Friday and she uh, she bowled the, the the open shift at 8 a.m. yesterday. Then bowled the lady shift. After that, lots of bowling. One seed struck her brains out. She oh so so her six games for the open and the six games for the women's. She was like 400 pins better for the women's. It was unbelievable because she she finally got her feel. That's a lot of sticks. That was a lot of sticks. But here we go. Brooke Salzman, Come inaugural on. Women's Badger Elite Champion. Yeah. What an effort out of Brooke. J-Team USA, Five. Mount Mercy Mustang. Coach has got to be proud. Wherever he or wherever they might be. I don't, know. I don't remember who coaches the Mount Mercy team. but Andy. Andy. That was yeah. it. Yeah. He's got to be proud. Shout out Andy. Shout out Andy. This guy. Oh, well, yeah. Just Look at us. Brooke say, I don't think that was the ball. Well, I think what we're going to do is we're going to take ourselves a little break. Sounds good to me. And uh, I'm going to go get some cameras adjusted and moved around. We are going to be back with the youth U15 step ladders. So a little different format. We got four kids in each one of these brackets, so it's going to be three games. But we're going to be running side by side. We're doing double wide again uh, just to keep things moving along here. Probably take about 15 minutes to get everything cleaned up, lanes redressed, get these kids set up and ready to roll. So if you're tuned in, stay tuned in. If your friend isn't tuned in and you know they're not, shoot them a text message, get them a link. Let's get everybody in here. Let's get this uh, these youth finals a little bit rowdy. Uh, but we will be back. 16 people. 16 of the best youth bowlers in the Midwest. Yes, sir. Coming up next here on 10 Pin Life. You're good. Thank you. 
47 and 48 will be open for practice for the kids that are not in the first match of the step level finals. But those will be coming on when we open up practice for the first matches. In the first match, we got Peyton Smith going against Molly Lesnar and Brady Jakes versus Braden Kirsten. You guys will get five minutes of practice and then we'll get you started. And all the subsequent games will get two balls on each lane. Those that are not willing can be practicing on 47 and 48 for their upcoming matches. Anybody in the U18 that would like to get loose can practice over there as well.
coming up here in a second. You're going to head to your lanes. We're going to get five minutes of practice between the Brady and the Molly. On 55 and 56, and then 57, 58, Brady and Drew. And you got five minutes of practice. It's just true. I just, uh, I like to give credit yeah. where it's due. All right. We are getting warmed up for practice for the youth finals here. I have our ladies, Badger Elite champion, Brooke Salzman, J Team USA, Mount Mercy Mustang, and now Weston Lane's champion. Uh oh. That, I'm really glad that they just saved that machine from going into a that that could have been that could have that would have crushed that machine. He ran very fast. Yeah, yeah. I uh, very very happy that that didn't just go horribly wrong. All right, but uh, being blessed with the fact that that didn't break. Holy cow! Your first two games were stunning, mm -hmm. and then it looks like the next two that was the grind of grinds. Yeah. Uh, walk us through it. What was it kind of like out there? Um, so I saw on lane 55, it was a lot tighter. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, just didn't have the same ball motion I did on 57 and 58, mm -hmm. um, which is what happens with moving pairs. Mm -hmm. um, so I just I went through a few different balls. Um, I had a couple of the boys telling me to try one ball, and I just didn't want to try it at all. <laughs> um, but I threw my eternity and my fate all weekend, and so I just okay. really was yeah, you comfortable you believed with them, in them, and so I was yep. trying to stick with them. I see that, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let's, let's go back to match number one. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had did you have the world, or were you just executing really well? It um, looked like you were just not missing. A little bit of both, I would say. Um, there was a few shots I got a couple lucky breaks um, mm -hmm. but then I felt like I was executing pretty well as well yeah yeah and the, and the ball motion too yeah. when it's just like you just know it's gonna do the right thing yeah and it's just about staying behind it and letting it happen and you did it very well like I'm sitting back here and I'm just it's pretty darn amazing um, how's your thumb you were blown on it quite a bit looked like it was a little on fire yeah, it's a little um, a little chewed up yeah uh, I've been going, like, I've been kind of changing some thumb fits a little bit recently, sure. so still trying to... Yeah, it's a process. It is. And then as soon as you hit it, you'll pr great. it'll be great yeah. for, like, three months, and then it'll be like, well, this sucks again. Yeah. 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 So, it, but it's it's fine. It made it through. Yeah. Uh, you're going back to school tonight? I am. So you got four and a half hours ahead of you? Yes. Uh, when's your next uh, collegiate meet? Uh, it is this next weekend. Uh, we're bowling the mid states in Wichita. Okay. I believe it's mid That'll be exciting. Yes. Uh, are you? Because you are you on varsity? Yep. So yeah. we have like a select team. Um, oh, okay. And so out of the select team, then there's a a roster selection as well. So gotcha. Gotcha. Yep. Well, I hope that the experience here carries over a little bit. Yes. Hopefully the lanes aren't nearly as tight as 55 was. Yeah, that'd be cool. That would be cool. Uh, do you know any of the uh, younger ones here? Um, that are I do not. No? Mm -mm. All right. It's going to be interesting. That's for sure. Because the, the, uh, the uh, 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 amount of talent that exists and the lower ages. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not that much older than some of these kids are, but even still, when you were 15 years old, I don't I don't think that they were this good across the board. Right. Maybe. I don't know. Am I crazy? I mean... No, yeah. I, I didn't get to watch the youth much, but yeah. when I would pop over, it was, it was good. If you could give Molly or Peyton here a piece of advice... Um, as they're about to tackle lanes 55 and 56, what would that be? Are they bowling on a different pattern? They are bowling on a different pattern, uh, and it is shorter as well. Gotcha. Um, it's still pretty much uh, equally as flat in the middle, mm -hmm. um, but it's it's definitely there's more free hook. If you know, there was a lot of urethane being used for okay. a lot of the boys, so. Yeah. Um, just stick with it and I guess grind it out and don't get frustrated. That was, yeah, that, that was probably the thing that I noticed the most about, about you guys in 
until the very end mm -hmm. when it's just like, you know, Carlene leaves that bucket. Yep. And, and I thought she actually threw pretty well. Yeah. And it just doesn't do the thing. And then, it, but, but having that patience through 18 grinding frames is, yes. it, that, that match could have been done for either of you mm -hmm. way earlier. Yeah. So good work on, on staying patient and trusting the process, the whiffing a couple 10 pins too. And it felt like the one, because the one that you made on the left lane, you took that little bit of extra time. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you did it on purpose or not. but Yeah, so like I could feel in my 10 pins, like my thumb was just tugging. Mm. And so it was just definitely a feel thing. Yeah. And like making sure it was coming off my hand right. Mm -hmm. I haven't missed a 10 pin for a while. And so I went after I missed that first one. I went over to them. I was like, "Wow, that hurt." Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yep. I was like, I was doing pretty good on those. Yep. Yep. But, uh, anybody you want to give a shout out to? A thank you. Uh, um, I'll see you soon. My parents, because they support me from anywhere. Oh yeah. Um, and then my boyfriend Zach, and then Brady Stearns and Lucas. They stayed to watch so. Yeah. I don't awesome. know where they are. Well, they're actually probably in the car. They're probably like, okay, we're ready to go. <laughs> Uh, well, honestly, Brooke, great bowling. Thank you. It was a pleasure to meet you. It was a pleasure to watch you execute. You. Just keep doing what you're doing. Good luck with uh, Team USA stuff this year. Have Thank a blast. Uh, and uh, I'm assuming that we'll see you here next year. you got a title to defend. Yes. So Thank it'll be you. great. Awesome. Thank you. All right. We are just about to. Yes, you're welcome. We'll get home safe. Thank you. And we're ready to go. Yes, as Jason says, we're ready to go. Our tournament director. I gotta get my score sheet updated here for you guys. So, a little bit of a different format. We are gonna have this is the U15 uh, boys and girls. We have four stepladder qualifiers for each of these divisions. So. But they're one game matches. So it'll go by a little bit quicker as Peyton Smith from Merrill, Wisconsin starts off with a big strike. Brady Jakes, who is a hometown kid here. He is. I've known Brady a very, very long time. He's a great kid. Loves the sport of bowling. It's um, just, just an all around good guy. We got Molly Lesnar here. Get some more information on her to you guys in a little bit as I'm punching some names in. Coming up on the uh, lane 57 here is Drayden Kirsten. He is from, he's originally from Bevent, but he goes to the Wittenberg Burnhamwood High School. Not too far away from here is home center is TNC Lanes in Burnhamwood, Wisconsin. Molly Lesnar with a big strike there. She goes spare strike to start her match off with Peyton. Good spare there for Drayden. Big double for Peyton Smith. So uh, Peyton is from the Merrill, Wisconsin area, just about 30 minutes north of Weston Lanes here. better about my camera switches here just once I get everything punched in sorry about that <coughs> Trayden's going for a bucket here wanted to throw a shout out to mom and dad Bethany and Kevin <coughs> got Mr. Hendricks Meyer joining me again here for the step ladder finals here for the youth division of the Badger Elite here at Midwest Bowl Fest 2023 Trey, you miss being 15 years old and competing against kids this age, or? I didn't really bowl tournaments when I was U15, so they're ahead of me. 
started bowling right out of my last year of U15. So, well, one year of U15 junior goal, and I was done. Molly over here. Oh, gets the yeah. seven pin out late. Great shot. Is she throwing a pitch black? I think so. That's what I was about to say, too. For the 6'10 here. Good spare. Great spare. Brady is a freshman at the DC Everest Junior High here in Western Shit. Wisconsin. Great nine there. That is a big nine. These guys are moving fast. I know. I was it's actually, hard to keep up. I was about to say that. That was going to be the first thing I said, too. Was They're cruising. Their pace of play is way different. Very fast. Well, so, and that's that's something that happens, too, during, like, high school state is they, they move quick. Um, yeah. And they're with being one-game matches, it's you're here and then you're not. Great shot by Brady. Very. Motive Blue Coral Venom just inside a second arrow and pushes 10 straight back. I've known Brady since he was five. I've known, I don't know a kid that's bowled more games than Brady Jakes. Like, yes, I know, probably you, Trey, but I've seen it as there. That's fair. Yeah, it's different. Great Got kid. Got issues going on. Drayden Kirsten. So, not cool. It doesn't quite have the look. Um, hopefully you can get it back here. I was uh, lucky enough to be able to bowl in this pattern, and there is a lot of hook right. A lot of hook right. There's also a lot of hook in the middle. They're very flat. Peyton's parents Ooh. are... Ooh. for Peyton's parents are Scott and Billy. Scott is here. Sounds like Maz had to stick it at home. She wanted to throw a big shout-out to her. Uh, Peyton did finish in second place in middle school state in 2021. That's pretty good. Uh, so definitely has had some success at a young age. Yes. Her dad uh, operates the pro shop out of Lesson Gyms, Lincoln Lanes, her home center. Not quite. So there's there's free hook, but not that much. Yeah. You have to be in the right. It's a challenge. Especially if you're using something that reads earlier, like urethane, I noticed there is a Like, it reads pretty quick. Mm -hmm. So Only seeing the one urethane, though. It's on the left, so. Yep. And no practice, um, really. From well, from the uh, other the other uh, step ladder finalists, they're all over there. So they, none of them got to touch these pairs yet. Oh, so, so this is the okay. only traffic that these pairs have yeah, seen yeah. thus far. I thought you were saying they didn't get any. Yes, practice they did get I practice. Like, Ooh. Ooh, what the? Hey, Almost as long as they all go the, down, yeah. that's all that matters. That would have been the rack's fault too. That's you can't really shoot that. Yeah, much when better. the 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 reed drop yeah. can sometimes get a little dicey. Right. There's Motley Lesnar here. That's close. Hooked early. That did hook early. Ooh. Oh, almost got a major major bonus there. And they are just moving right along. Motley's from Watertown, Wisconsin. Goes to Riverside Middle School. She's gonna graduate high school in 2028, and she is already out here. Competing, unfortunately, flags that's a four pin there, but she is. She was a Pepsi champ in 2023. She took second at middle school state in 2023. Ryan and Emily, her mom and dad, got to be proud of proud as hell of her. Honestly, she's just out here and pumping strikes. Let's get another one. Oh, oh. Better shot, though. Very much. Uh, Brady puts up a big double there over on 57 and 8. Looking for three in a row. That got a little got right. There. And a little soft. Right. Didn't split, though. That's always a good Didn't sign. split. Brady, uh, actually, um, so in the greater Wassa, or, you know, one of our lead sponsors, Wassa Area USBC, he has the record for the youngest 300 game really? in our local association. He shot his first 300 um, during an adult youth tournament here uh, not long ago. It was last uh, April, I believe. That's cool. Yeah. yeah it's not 
Peyton gets it a little too far right. Brady oh, catches his two, makes a spare. One, two, seven, not necessarily the easiest spare. No. So many ways to miss it. There's a lot of ways to miss that spare. So let's see if Peyton can run this one down. Peyton does have a 279 under her belt. Hasn't quite gotten to the uh, 12 bagger mark. That was a great shot to fill that frame. Drayden Kirsten, Wittenberg native, gets nine in his uh, fifth frame here. Even makeables, though. Good. He did finish uh, second in the storm doubles at the uh, high school event this last year with his uh, with his doubles partner Grant Hansen. Shout out to Grant. Not sure who did the heavy lifting that day, but second place is second place. It's doubles for a reason. Wanted to throw a shout out to the Kirsten and the Bushman family. So if you guys are tuned in, Drayden's thinking of you, and hopefully you can cheer him on from home. And he also wanted to throw a shout-out to his coach, Jordan Krieger, who is sitting just to my right, down on the bleachers, biting her fingernails off, hoping for the best for one of her kiddos. Let's see if we can get one here. There it is. Now the seal's broke. Molly's stepping up on the left-hand lane here. That looks That's really good. Lane, yeah. That's Great money. shot. Great shot. That was money. If she keeps her angles in front of her. That's going to be tough to beat. Molly Bowles out of Watertown Bowl 18. Can't see your bowl there? I am not either. Look. Get, oh, ho, ho, huge break. Getting the 8 and the 10 out late. That's a little hometown carry for you there, folks. That's Got left. Hooks. All right. Still not too bad. She's still in a pretty good spot, too. Yeah. And Peyton, Peyton's got a couple opens in there. Making it interesting, though. Very much. So, Brady's looking to uh, stay clean here. Both both of the boys here are, are clean through six. Tough tough break on the four pin there. Almost ran Shoot it down. It. Oh, what a spare by Molly Lesnar. Phenomenal effort to cover the washout. Some good spare shooting we're watching here. Smith. She's got to put all 10 back here. Come on. Oh, yeah. Runs the two down. She needs one more. One more puts it right back in the middle of this one. As Brady makes his four pin. Great spare. We're moving quick today now, folks. We're on, we're on the double. These kids aren't messing around. They want to get to a win. It's got to get a lot of love. A lot of love. A lot of love. Found it. All right, let's see if Drayden can uh, put up a double here. I'm on the wrong pair. Great Dude, shot. What scary. a shot. That is money. Big double, too. Big Giving double. Giving him a chance here. That puts him right back there. Give him one more. He takes the lead. I believe. Looks a little right. Oh. Not quite enough for Molly there. Leaves a seven pin in the ninth frame. So that match ain't over yet. She just gets up there, cooks it, and ah, darn it. Hate it when that happens. Those are tough on this pattern, too, with how much hook there is. Yes. I, yeah, you yeah. almost feel like you got to miss it left. And, yeah, then, ho and then hope. Just, that's Big three bagger. I tell wow. you what, man. For a kid that looked like he didn't have a look at all, the big first five bagger. frames puts that up a big three bagger to get right back in it. Brady, Brady needs to make a statement here. You know, a little bit of my house type mentality right now, and yeah. 
as Molly leaves the six pin. Spade here forces a double. Let's see what Brady can do. It's got around it. It's got a hook. Mm, good night. It's a good, good nine. nine. Good night. It's that match ain't over yet, but Spare. And yeah. Molly is looking at a seven pins forces a double. Seven. Perfect. And nine will do. That gives Molly Lesnar a 184 in the first match of our youth finals here at the Badger Elite Midwest Bowl Fest. Brady Jakes makes his four pin. So Peyton Smith, she needs, needs, she needs one here. Get up the hill. Oh my goodness. Now, sometimes they say when the gutter hooks play it, but I don't think they mean it quite like that. Yeah, that's as close as the gray boards are ever going to get to hooking. <laughs> that is uh, it's 10 back is all I can say. 10 is 10, right? 10 is 10. Can't take it back now. Look off of it. And, yeah, Brady, Brady puts an X up of his own. As Peyton, unfortunately, leaves the 1-2-4. We're going to jump over to 57 and 8. Watch the rest of this match with these fellas. As Molly Lesnar has defeated Peyton Smith in the first round of our youth final stepladder here in the U-15 <laughs> ladies version. Words are hard. I've said a lot of words today, folks. Oh, tough break there. I think he missed it. That's we're going back That's to the last really one. Don't middle. miss that little bit. Yeah. Miss more. Yeah. Miss more yeah. one way or the other. Miss more left, that goes Brooklyn. Miss more right, you leave the one two combo. Take your spare. It's gotta it's gotta be sure on two here. Gotta be sure on two. All right. So, Drayden Max is out at 2.02. Brady is pacing uh, 2.05. So, he's got a pretty significant advantage going into the 10th here. So, Drayden needs a double. He's got, he's got a double. Double and four. shot run get it there. oh get out of there 10 this that's one of those shots and if Drayden if you watch this back this is for you bud you throw wood like that take a breath let the ball sit on the rack for a minute oh yeah that's one that you want to get don't rush reset and I, I, let's see if he let's see if he can prove me wrong here. That's, a, that's another really good shot. What do you shakes know, it out? Ben? I don't know nothing. Ben, do I don't know, know nothing, man. Know, maybe I sh maybe I uh, maybe I should accept the fact that I missed the cut. <laughs> <laughs> Great did. double. I mean, honestly, I mean, he 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 missed a little left on the. If you're able to repeat shots, you do it as fast as you slow as you want. He's gonna graduate high school in 2027. He's already thrown the ball. That's good. He's got a lot of growing to do too. Yeah. That, uh, that's another great that's shot. Great, great shot. Good I don't. Shot. It's Didn't that's matter. that's details right there. Yeah. Way to finish, Dre. And that was amazing. That's a big double. Needs a mark. Needs needs a mark in seven. Seven Seven's not guaranteed. Strike to claim it though. Strike puts him away. Brady Jakes left. gets a little left. left. Oh, not a guarantee. This is my nemesis spare. It is uh, so many ways to miss it. 
shoot the 3 6 10 and hope. You good at the spare? I'm pretty good at the spare. Really? How do you shoot it? I typically run the track. Uh, I just so you're pretty direct? Pretty direct, and I just 14-pound um, oh, yeah, balls 14. bounce. Let's see if he need, it. needs it to win. He's oh, I hook. think he's got it. Oh, man. What? What a match. What a match. Yeah. What a match. Congratulations, Drew. Really what a match. I don't know what happened to myself. Oh. Excited to see our I don't think that's right. I think that... I don't know. Somebody's going to bowl. I know that. But either way, Drayden Kirsten takes home the win there in match number one. I somehow broke my sheet there. I got to fix it. These kids are cooking, though. Oh, yeah, they're zooming. I'm, yeah, it's hard to keep up with punching these scores in and talking about it. So if I miss a couple camera switches, I apologize to our audience. We're doing our best. We're going to get some practice shots in here. Looks like we got Addison Cole coming in uh, as the two seed. Her brother's the one seed on the guy's side. He is. We got Rush on this on this match. Yeah, what a name. Rush Steen. That's a baseball name if I ever heard one. Oh, yeah. But I know Rush in there pretty well. So Yeah? Excited to see how he plays them. He throws it sick. He uh, high backswing, hits it pretty hard at the bottom. Can do a lot to the bowling ball. Braden packed one. Well, now he's got that pair. He's got a game on him under yeah, his feet on that pair. That's another good point, too, is there's not that switch and pairs factor anymore. Yep. You bowl good on the pair, you get to stay there. Fish black, purple. Is he two-handed? Rush? Yeah. He's one-handed. One -handed. I know he started with a purple, went to the pitch black, and then went into reactive. So I'm interested to see how much of a move he's going to make, if he's going to play them like they're fresh or if he's going to play them like they're burned. I legit broke this sheet. I don't know if this is going to do scores right anymore. No, it's At good. Purple, just it's just not going to give me max scores for some reason. 10. Hmm. Weird. I don't even know what I did. Another thing to note, too, is we're getting a little more uh, rev rate in the show on this match, so the uh, way they're playing the lanes is going to be drastically different. That's very true. And, and any time that a purple hammer hits the lane, you know you know things are going to get a little weird. You're pushing a little down. Pushing it, yep. It's able to shape it up, so you're putting it in a weird spot. Uh, Addison Cole is from Oostburg, Wisconsin. That's the uh, high school that she goes to. She's going to graduate in 2027 as well. Heath and Jen are mom and dad. She's got a 289 under her belt and a 686. Calls Lakeshore Lanes home. And like Trey said, her brother is the one seed on the boys' side in the U15. And her brother, if I remember right, has a ridiculous resume. It's unreal. We'll get there, but stay tuned because it's pretty impressive. Did you get Brooke in here? I did. What was her thoughts about the ball reaction? Just curious. Uh, so, they did. Uh, she did say that a couple people were telling her to uh, to change balls, um, but that she threw the fate and the eternity the whole week, and that she just wanted to trust it. So that's what Fair she did, enough. and it worked out. So, is fifty three missing a headpin? Fifty no. 
Sure. Yes. 53. Oh, 53. I thought you meant 55. No. 53. Sorry. No, you're good. ADHD there. Kind yeah. Of it's, kicking it's all right. I won't, I won't judge. I might judge. That's yeah, all right. You judge me all the time. You, just, you ask for it. I do. <laughs> I judge you back, so it's all right. Yeah, it's mutual. I think I might have figured out why we're doing our math wrong. I think my sheet was wrong. That's what it was. We can go with that. Yeah. I totally... I love that excuse. Yeah, I definitely wasn't looking at the monitors. <laughs> you at least weren't looking at the monitors the right way. <laughs> no. Math yeah. is hard. Yeah, I somehow busted this thing up a little bit, so... We're just going to ignore our max score for Drayden and Rush because it's not going to be perfect here. But we're going to do our best with what we've been given and make some adjustments here between our U15 and our U18 situation, hopefully. But either way, we are set to roll with match number two for the boys and girls, our youth division finals here at the Midwest Bowl Fest. U15 girls on the left, U15 boys on the right. Molly Lesnar leading off from the left-hand side of the lane against Addison Cole. Starts with a seven. So fed right. that one right. Okay, so he doesn't have quite much in the way of bounce. I think he's throwing an, en uh, an envy, hammer envy. It looks like, and that's it's a lot. It's a lot of ball. It's gonna be tough to get that to bounce. It's gonna blend out the cliff, though. It will blend it. What you need? Assuming, assuming you hit it. Give the graph. Like we said before, if you're gonna have an open, first spot. Put it in the first frame. Addison Cole with her first shot on our feature pairs here to get a little bit of practice earlier. Little little bit of nerves there, I'm thinking. And you know what? I'd be nervous too. Rush just kind of misses. It just looked like a just a flat out miss left. That thing I that I got really wrong. good at yesterday. <laughs> Just missing left. Yeah, you were good at that. <laughs> Missed a few spares, too, but we won't talk about that. Me? Yeah. I absolutely did. <laughs> what are you talking about? You think I, you think I thought I was going to make a cut? Come on. That's much better out of Addison. Makes her spare. spare. Got her feet under her a little bit more. Uh, Rush is probably um, but he I think he's our furthest traveled youth bowler. Um, yeah, he's from Waterloo he's from Waterloo, area. Iowa. He goes to Waterloo West. He's gonna graduate in 2027. Uh, calls Cadillac Lanes home. Mom and Dad are Brandon and Jennifer. I believe they're both here with us today, which is awesome. He does have a youth eagle, so he is a national champion. That is something I did not know. Addison misses left again, back-to-back -back five pins. So that's going to be, hopefully it's not something that sits in her head for too long. Time to just reset. Throw your next shot really well. I think he bumped a bit left right there. It looks like it, and it, that shaped a ton. Yeah, if his pitch black actually hooks a bunch. And uh, I think he's in the wrong zone. I think he needs to bump like four more left and just keep his break point tighter. He's at two on top of the friction. Sure. So especially for the Euro thing. That, see, that's what she, that was perfect. Yeah. There now she knows she can do it. Anderson throws a great shot to fill her first two frames. Just call it two nine spares and just move on. It's the same on the scoreboard. Absolutely. Rush going for his four pin here. Straight at it. Good spare. Great effort. Molly Lesnar keeping the pitch black That's up good. the lane. Oh, 
three five pins in uh, is maybe tightening up a little bit too, or maybe they are. I don't know. Let's see. Here's Drayden, off of a six out. Got wants to bounce back. Tough one there. Great spare. Great spare there. See, that's the thing. I, I, I don't. I actually don't think that that uh, fifty-five and six are going to be too terribly different. Um, but it's, t it's nerves, right? Yeah. Nerves are nerves are almost a bigger factor than lane play in a setting like this. Oh, a lot of yeah, one hundred percent. A lot of these kids are, you know, there's there's some accolades for sure, but you're still bowling for a title. Yeah. Um, it's actually, that was actually a better effort by Molly. That was a pretty good shot. Just didn't quite catch it. Doesn't matter who you are, you come under these and you're gonna feel a little bit. That's just that's literally why I brought the lights. Yeah. It's just like I want him to I want to have to think about this a little bit. And, and here we are. It's it's a part of the game. That's definitely less right. Oh yeah. It ain't a break till you use it, kid, but I tell you what, it's nice to have one. Think about it. This will prepare them better for in the future. Absolutely. Anytime they're in this spot again. Absolutely. That's uh, you know a lot of the, a lot of guys that are out on tour today that are, have some experience. They're just dumbfounded by the amount of TV experience yeah. that these kids are getting at such a young age and how it's serving them so well. No, well, she's she's consistent. But it is not the consistency that Addison Cole wants right now. Oh, that's a that's a hit. That is a that is a hit. Rush's high career game as of today is two ninety. He doesn't have three hundred. He does not have a three hundred. Uh, his high set is, however, eight oh nine. Okay. So he's got he's got the hard one. So we're in the same boat. You don't have bills yet? I don't have a sanctioned three. Oh, you you well, don't bowl that many sanctioned games. <laughs> yeah, you got a point. <laughs> I have an 822, though. 821. Oh, he it's bumped left. A little bit. Oh, okay. Now, now he's change. doing the dance. Yeah. It might be a purple from in there. He Just does have the purple on the rack. Uh, Rush did want to throw out a... Shout out to the guys at Franz Pro Shop, Gabe and Rich, for helping them out. It's up the lane. It's good. Great shot there by Addison. Is. See, she uh, literally every one of her spare shots was ace, just like that. Yeah. And now she finally flushes Trusted them. One, yeah. There we go. Do you hook or throw straight at the bucket? Uh, depends on what I'm bowling on. So okay. if I'm bowling on something that's a little like above five to one. Uh, I'm hooking at it. If I am not, um, Go straight at it. then I'm going at it, yeah. Good, good shot there. Just another five pin. It's pretty good. Just trade in. There it is. The just like last match, he just needed to find his center a little bit. Get a break for him and finds the bar reaction and taking advantage of it. Took advantage of the break there too with the double. Mm-hmm. You could spare. Great spare by Molly. You know the other thing too, and this is um, I've talked about this with junior bowl or youth bowling and on a number of occasions, both um, on on the channel but also just in in public, and that is the the community is uh, especially like within the scratch bowling community is so exceptionally strong. Oh, 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 oh. not as strong as that hit, but yeah, yeah. that was nuts. Uh, that is uh, crazy. Get shot no. there. Oh. Yeah, soft seven. Now, now I think this is kind of a defining shot for Molly. It's her third seven pin. She's missed two in a row. She needs to make this spare. She really needs to. I think she will. I think she knows that she can't miss it right. Oh man, it's just—I think it's hooking. Like they as hook soon as it hits the lane. By the gutter. 
and a lot up front too. And I was taking a ton of handout to even get my ball over there. Oh, we went to the purple. Four, nine. four nines. Ouch. That is that hurts That's after. Less than uh, ideal, that's for sure. Especially after you watch your opponent get something like that. And those ones hurt. Two of them. Yeah. Two breaks. And they're all in a row too. So. Mm-hmm. Those ones hurt, but at least he's on a spare. Yeah, he ain't doubles, done so. yet. And he, I no, mean, we still got half the game left. A lot of time. Here's Addison. Last shot was real good. It's in between. It's a little. Yeah. Yeah. She. I. I think she's. She's. She feels hesitant she to throw it right. Yeah. Which. Is fair. It's, it's tough to get it to the pocket, though, on something like this if you're not going to throw it right. Oh, yeah. There is not hold on this bag no. anywhere. They are so flat in the middle. There is no shame. Great spare. Great spare. Let's see if Rush can make a good adjustment here. I... So does he go where he was with, with the pitch black and just throw the purple and trust it, or does he make a move based off that 4-9? I would have moved it two off the 4-9. I would rather uh, go on light. On the left lane? I would rather go light in this building. Yes, on the left lane. I would rather go light in this building than um, flush. Yeah. So see what he does here. Like a big he rolled that left. big time. That was beautiful. What a shot by Rush Steen. Getting himself right back in the match. That was really good, too, by Addison. Oh, it just hooked up a little early. About a foot or two. That's that short oil. Because how long? This pattern was what, 38? 39. 39? Here's Drayden, Hammer Envy, Ooh. Bowling Karma, labor. right? And, and and it's not that you want the kid to split, but also you catch a couple breaks Man. in a row. It always comes back. Oh, yeah. And and, and then, then it's a real test of patience. Like, what's his next frame going to look like right. is, is the question. Exactly. Does he make the split would be another thing because he Ooh. certainly took a run at it, and I respect it. Still takes the zero. Addison made her spare. So that's going to put... These guys are pretty much tied up. Uh, Molly's going to go here. She needs a, She needs some help. She needs She needs a couple X's. Let's go. Good shot. That's really she's got a hook. She's catching some push. Yeah. I think she's... Uh, that, and I think she's... She might be getting a little soft in the, in the rotation. Maybe... It's a lot of reps. I it's a lot think, of games in a I day. I still think that hits pocket game one, though, for sure. That push, too. That's that's purple push right there. I would agree. Two. Missed it by plenty. Missed it that it was good. Missed by more. It's my uh, statement for the weekend. Miss it by more. You don't want to miss by a little, especially when they're hard. Miss by a lot. Makes the spare. It's a good spare. Half a loaf off the deck. That's my favorite bowling phrase ever, by the way. Half a loaf? Yeah. Any reason? That's funny. That's all. You just like bread. <laughs> Who doesn't like bread? You got it. Ball oh, change. ball change. Teal Rhino Pro. Oh, Gets yeah. a huge break. Huge break. First strike of the game for Molly there, but you know what? It's not over. Got to start somewhere, and it ain't over. Still got two of one off. Rush Dean coming off a big strike on a great shot. He got that oh, one right. It's good. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Kicks out the nine. <laughs> See, I thought that. I thought that was going to 4-9. Again. There's so many of those this weekend. There was a lot of 4-9s this weekend. I, it's I, I, I think something that I'm going to do uh, is actually go back and look at some of the lane talk stats. Because we have we have it in here, and and I, I would be very curious to see. Please share that with me. Kind of what some of the frame, what some of the uh, stats looked like, because <coughs> there was a lot of seven tens. Oh yeah. There was a lot of seven tens. Um, there was a lot of four nines. There's a. I, I I didn't see surprisingly a lot of two eight tens. 
Um, There's a lot of two four tens and a lot of two tens, not a lot of two eight tens. Yeah. I think. Oh, he's tuned in triple. now. Yes, sir. That was that was smashed. That one even sounded good. Oh, back up. What a spare by Addison Cole. Backing up at the baby split. No doubts it. Maybe that's how you should run at it. I've started doing that. <laughs> I made two in a row this weekend. <laughs> oh, my. I was so proud of myself. Let's see what he can do here. Good that's shot. a pretty good shot by Drayden. Oh, Gets the 10 out. Beautiful. Good bounce back. He, I think he needed that one. He needed that yeah, for his bit, confidence. It's a, a good confidence shot right there. He's he's got he's got a hill to climb now, uh, but it's not insurmountable yet. So he puts himself in a good position here, getting a strike in the ninth. That's up the lane. That's good. Great Man. shot by Addison. Amazing. Trusted that one. Here it is. This one's this is kind of a defining shot for Drayden. Let's see what he's got. Uh, a little it's bit left. A little left, but it pushed. Oh, it Shake it. Ooh. Oh. There's that little bit of cliff coming into play, too. Mm -hmm. Molly Lesnar on the right lane. Doesn't quite get the same break she got on the left lane there. Just leaves a nine count. Can't complain about a makeable. Drayden, Drayden runs his strike ball all the way over to the left-hand side of the lane. Molly makes her four pin. Wonderful. All right. Uh, if uh, Rush strikes here, I think Just needs it's pretty much over, yeah. So he's on a three-bagger going into the ninth here. and I don't know why they keep doing this adding up thing. Mm -hmm. It's really weird. It's pretty good. Great shot by Rush. Yeah. Great shot. I think it's pretty good. That kid's pretty darn good. He throws he's 15 sick. years old. Yeah, he throws it sick. I wish I threw that good at 15. I wish I threw that good ever. You got a point. <laughs> yeah, I pulled a team event with him this weekend. So yeah? It was uh, fun. Pulled on the house shot. I got to meet a f quite a few pros, so it's cool. Molly whiffs her 10 pin, unfortunately, and that pretty much puts it away. Addison Cole is going to be moving on to the final in the girls' side of the U15 division here. She'll be bowling again. The other person on my list as Rush Dean goes to first shot in his 10th frame. Ah, that's right. Holly Orgerman, another uh, hometown kid. Two-handed. Two-hander. Oh. Um, Holly, um, Holly would appreciate it if I said follow her on Instagram. Holly Bowls two-handed. Um, I know she's been she's been putting a lot of work on there, and her and her dad Chris, I know, are they're junkies right now. They're practice junkies. They're here a lot. They're up at uh, TNC Lanes a lot in Wittenberg. She does go to Wittenberg Burnout High School, just like Drayden. She'll be a 27 graduate as well. <clears throat> she got some pretty pretty good accolades too. But I think this uh, this final match between Rush and Dawson is going to be that's going to be a fun. Match. That's going to be a good match. That's uh, that's one of those of where power. it's like you know you're gonna see it a bunch in the future, and you're just you're just happy to have seen it today. Oh yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a fun match to watch. Not, the, not the best effort there, but it's all details at this point. She should probably try a ball change. These are free shots. Somewhere where you can trust it a little more, maybe open up your angles. Yeah, that, I well. I just, I think that gold label might actually be a little too much uh, core. Yeah, that core is really strong. Yeah. I think she might have bumped up. Rush got that one further to the right, and it came barreling back. Oh, yeah. There's barreling. That's what I'm saying. If you throw a urethane ball that's going to hook in the front, there's plenty of hook out there. Addison gets nine, and the first shot in the tenth. <coughs> Well, Addison won. We're going to give Drayden and uh, Molly just a little bit more airtime here as they wrap up their matches. Great bowling by the both of them. That was good. Drayden just barely leaves a four pin there. Nothing to hang your head about 
finishing third place in an event like this, Drayden. There's a lot of talent out here. Oh yeah, cannot be disappointed. And in that. it's just it blows my mind every time I come to these events and I see how talented these kids are. Great shot to wrap up a 180 game for Addison Cole. Moving on to the final. What ball was that? I have no idea. <laughs> and just for saying he did, Drayden ball changes for his last shot just to see what it would do. Molly Lesnar, ball change as well. Just uh, for pro posterity's sake. But honestly, between these two, it's a... Uh, it's one of those things that it's a it's a it's a confidence builder you got here. Oh yeah, it's, I mean they're gonna look back on this and learn from it, exactly. especially in their next time here or anywhere else. It's just good experience to get under your belt. Be, be proud, right there. And Addison wins her game 190 to 138. Oh, 190 game, or 180 game. Molly and Drake, that was their first appearance in a... Uh, yeah. All right. I'm going to take a break real quick. Right. I'm going to shut yeah, up. Going if you want to talk to the world, you're welcome to. Addison will advance to take out the girls tournament leader, Holly You know what I like about this, uh, this finals tray? What's that? We are wrought with storyline, and we only have 10 frames to talk about it. That is unfortunate. We've got Everything Holly, who is essentially a hometown kid, leads qualifying. She's won in this building a couple times. She's mi uh, middle school state team champ. Yeah. She's a two-time youth master's champ. Uh, she, uh, Robert Vader does his, uh, sweet, uh, his college yep. sweeper here every year, and uh, her team won that last year. Uh, she's been working her butt off. Uh, her coach is uh, Jordan Krieger. She did want to throw a big shout-out to her mom and dad, Chris and Stacy, for everything that they do for her, and Coach Jordan, and also Brady Jakes, who we saw in the first match on the boys' side, for being a good practice partner and good friend. And that's just one part. The other, okay, that's one. Two, sibling rivalry going on a little bit oh, right yeah. now, right? Yeah. Addison's going for a title. Her brother's going for a title. And I tell you what. One of them wins and one of them doesn't. That's going to be a weird car ride it. home. One of them's going to hear it. Rush Steen drives 
five hours to get here. Yeah. Throws uh, it sick. Got throws a good it look. sick. Yeah, he's, yeah. But uh, let's get into here. Are you ready for this? Oh, boy. He had to stop. So Dawson Cole, who's going to be uh, pulling against Rush Dean for the final. He has a 300. He's going to graduate in 2028. That sounds wrong. He has got a 300 and 805. He's a two-time SYC champ. He is a 10-time EYT champ. Two-time Youth Eagle. And he's made Junior Gold Match play three times. That's unbelievable. That's stupid at 15. Grandma Murdoch. Uh, Dawson wanted to say hi. So, Grandma, if you're out there listening, everybody at Lakeshore Lanes. He did want to throw a shout out to his sister. I think that's just head games. Also to, to his buddy Ian Kloss. But here we go. The finals for the U15 division for the boys and the girls here at Midwest Bowl Fest. Thank you to Storm, Village of Weston, Bob's Business, and Wasa Area USBC for making this possible. Let's fire it up. I'm interested. Dawson Cole leads off. Yeah, he started on the left lane. So, and he was higher seed, so he got the pick. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if he sees something in the right lane that he really likes or something he really doesn't like on the left lane. I'm going to bet that it's the former. I bet he likes something on the right lane. Yeah, because uh, usually Holly you want to finish first if you're able to. Holly just hums a... I think that's a pitch black. Hums a pitch black right up there. That was a uh, pitch black that's... Um, I remember when she was practicing for junior gold. Um, oh, she couldn't miss with it. She couldn't miss. She loves that ball. So uh, it's to see it in her hands, to me, that tells me that she's got a good look with it. Confident with it? Confident with it, too. Yeah, that's as, probably the biggest thing. As uh, Dawson makes his spare there, as I... Oops. There we go. And spare. She's coming into the ball chain. What is she throwing? Is that IQ I believe it might be an IQ or a double cross. I don't know. Interesting. It was black with a red logo, so. Honestly, I don't remember the last time I even saw a double cross on the lane. Not very often. Purple. Rush Steam. Ooh, that purple. Checked up. Yep. But you know what? He, I he's got the he's got the hand and he's got the roll to just chase it. He oh, doesn't yeah. have he doesn't have to think about ball changing yet. No. I wouldn't think about ball changing until he pushes down and lost another game or two, but we don't gotta get there, so it's an IQ tour. IQ tour solid. No doubt about it. That's for sure. And Rush Hook. just shims it off the deck no there. there. <laughs> it's been a long day, Trey. You know what I'm excited about? What's that? Dinner. Yeah. Yeah. But what you know what? <laughs> we got to do this first. We this do. Is, this is almost more exciting Don't than eating. Yeah. Yeah. Don't forget, we got another step ladder too. I know. The, the big one. Like oh, the yeah. one that we were we're all most money. excited about, honestly. At least oh. I was. Oh, Addison slinging wood across the deck. We got a variety of people on the next show. So. That, that was perfect. aced. Absolutely aced by Rush Steam. One that thing strike. that I've noticed on this pattern is whenever you jump in like that with purple and urethane, you can create shim. That's the mm -hmm. only spot where it's minimal, but I've noticed it clears the fronts really well. So I think that's usually the move, like right where she is. She's got that further yep. to the right. Look at that. Just shakes the right. rack. Shakes the rack. Holly Orgerman. Big, big leadoff double. Yeah. Let's see if Dawson can keep up with his sister here. Oh, he rifled that. Wow. Yeah. That's – he's too young to be able to throw it like that. I would agree. Like – Especially with that slow of feet. Right, but, like, controlled. Yeah. 
Right. He's not just running at yeah, it. Yep. Yeah. I agree. Uh, I think that's bit left. the best shot of the day right there for her. And, of course, she gets right in between. It's just that, that in-between hit that's just They're so hard bit, to carry down here. A little here. bit cliffed in there. So. That's a tight lane. Yeah, that too. Can't forget about that. She's a little more inside than everybody else, too. So mm -hmm. might experience a little bit more of that. That one's pretty up the lane. Oh, oh, no. my goodness. That is less than ideal. That as Holly goes for her 10-pin. Gets spare. it all the way over there. Great spare for Holly. Those are not gimmies today. Not on this pattern. Not on this pattern at all. Uh, he's on a one-bagger, so it, it, it matters, but it doesn't. Do you go for it, or do you just catch oh, the one? one? With how much hook there is on the left, I'd throw back up at it. I would throw back up. Might have. Oh. Whenever I'm bowling matches like these and it's early mm -hmm. and it's only going to cost you two sticks, which mm -hmm. every stick matters, but if I'm early, I'm shooting it every time. The risk-reward is worth it's, it. If you do that, you can take an early lead or at least like even – You'll appreciate those 12 pins at the end of the match. Right. I mean, I would shoot it every time. but On a one-bagger. If it's a double? Oh, if you it's take a double, it. I take the count. Yeah, you take the count for sure. But if you're on a one-bagger, you take that chance every time. That, picked up. that right lane's going away pretty fast. That lane was a lot more earlier, too. So Interested to see if he'll move off that. You know, I, I watched an Addison's last shot. If I were if I were the guy that was telling her what to do, I'd say look at the exact same spot and move your feet two to the left. Yeah. Just just that little bit of angle it's to the that front. little bit of zone change right there. Mm -hmm. She's in between zones, I think. You gotta be on top of the friction or just left of it, so I think she's right in between there. Good Great spare. run at the spare there. Good work out of Addison. Rush goes for the two, catches one. That's a well, hard one to make. Yeah, it is a hard one to make. We're all tied up there after three. A couple of close matches so far. Mm-hmm. A couple of opens but on the But you know what? Side. Out of a out of a title match, I I would hope for nothing less than close. I want more. I want I want these kids to have to stand up in the tenth frame and earn one. Back that's here, be absolutely. Fun. Up there, not a chance. <laughs> nope. I want to be leading a, by 100 after four. What are we missing here? We got a ball stuck. Ball, ball call. It's like the fourth one all weekend. <laughs> Literally. I think they've all been ball calls, too. I haven't seen any, like, pin jams or anything like no. that. We had, we had a, we had a couple, couple uh, deck floaters that just kind of ran across and were out of ranges yeah. and stuff. But, but that's those, just bowling. You can't control that. All right. good shot there by Addison. It was. So, Holly wants to restart the strike string here. She let that one breathe through the right. Oh, man, just in between. It's so good that it's not good enough. That's... That's so frustrating Whenever sometimes. Whenever they open up like that and you got that look, then you want to miss by a little. Yes. Once they start opening up. Oh, he just runs the seven out. Good bounce back off of the split. Uh, he's got that left lane tuned in. Oh, yeah. He's got, if, if, oh, yeah. So as long as he keeps it in the right spot. Oh, Holly just barely keeps it on the deck. Big spare there. Scoreboard keeps drifting. <laughs> Just getting the life of the zone here, or what? It's 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 probably like I'm tired of this, Grandpa. <laughs> Here's Dawson for his fourth frame. Keep it coming, even. Coming off Hook. the open. Oh, oh, runs the two out. Let's see what Holly's got on the left lane. Kicks yeah, it out. Yeah, there it is. Got that one a little more left and kicked out the ten. Two seventy to two sixty eight max. So 
we're even on the right side. It's pretty cool right here, folks. I just want to take you take a moment. We got Dawson standing right next to his sister, both bowling for titles. Don't let that be taken for granted because that is really cool. And good on these kids for putting in the work to get good at this game. Or running out of four pin on a Brooklyn hit, too. Missed by enough. <laughs> You're right. Bit. Miss big. Missed by enough. Here's Addison trying to show up. Her brother just push a little bit. She it's she's throwing it the same shot every time. Yeah, it's, it's just, just not trusting it, it to the yeah. Early. I think there's a little bit of early friction, so if her little bit misses left, are just exaggerated. Yeah, for sure. Rush moving on the right lane, big shot. There you Huge. Go. What Keeps a great even. adjustment. Yeah, when they start hooking like that and go through the nose, it's you got a couple options. Either completely ball change and trust it, it's gonna mm -hmm. hook there, or you have to move in and hope it hooks. Yeah. And doesn't fly right past the spot. So it's a good move there. And the in the the weird part with urethane on something like this when you gotta move like that is you can't circle it. You can't get around it. You just have to tr stay behind well, yeah, it. Like you, you still have need to read that. the fronts, but it's just it it. It's a very different way of thinking about it than there's reactive a, balls. Yeah, there's a point where it's not going to try. Got to roll. Got to roll. Oh, yeah. Man, that hits like a bust, though. Holy cow. I it's got to feel good for Rush, like though, after having a couple kind of off hits go Dawson's way. Yeah. And, and then he just packs 10 twice in a row. Not that's, that's, the a, lead. that's a big builder right there. Still fighting. Oh, she's got to miss a little. Just enough. I think that's like... Uh, my new thing right there. Missed by enough. I like that they put out hard patterns this weekend. Yeah. It's nice to not see four to one, five to one for uh, especially for the higher rev rates, um, especially in the youth scene. Ooh. It's it's just nice to see that we have to repeat shots and it's anybody's game. Whoever figures it out makes their spares. I don't know. Did Dawson rush that shot? Was he fast with his feet? Because he definitely lost he was, his balance. He was very forward. He was very forward with his upper body, which could have mm. been a causation of his feet. It's Addison getting all 10 to go. That was a great shot. Oh, yeah. That one was aced. She needs to She needs to get one on the right. If she gets one on the right lane, she's in a it's, really good spot. Oh, yeah. As Dawson took the zero on, uh, on his split there. So that does put Rush in a pretty good spot. I mean, he's up... 19. Yeah. Holly's the only two-hander on this show, right? Correct. Yeah. Out of, yeah, boys and girls. And she's the furthest left of it, everybody, as well. Oh, that's got to get way left. Shim. Ho! 10's 10. Looks the same up there. All right. Pride's for the Lions. Dawson Cole trying to bounce back. That's good. He caught whatever push exists on that Rushed lane on that there. shot. Yep. And and now, you know, I, I think he Dawson might be one where he's, he's really good at a couple things, and he, he might not be able to use his A game right now. It looks like he's got to just slow down and, and let it do the thing as Holly just shakes the rack again. She's got a great look. That is a great Able look. That is a – that right there, that's a homer look right there because w people that bowl here know that you get behind the head pin, you're going to strike a lot. Yeah, like I don't want to go flush here. Uh, I would rather go mixer. Great cover by Dawson. Here, you're going to leave a lot of weird stuff. Mm-hmm. Four nines, like we were saying. Like a, f yeah, a lot of four nines, yeah. Very few trip fours this weekend. Addison's looking for her first double in the match here. She's Big been shot. Dutch thus far. That's just Good. if it just gets there. Oh, oh. oh. Yeah, Ooh, the old snow plow. We're even on the brakes. We are even. Uh, Rush is on a three bagger. He's he if he there's an opportunity for some commanding lead right now. Oh, yeah. That's good. Bang. Wow. Good for him. That was an amazing shot out of Rushstein from Waterloo, Iowa. Makes the drive all the way up here. Made the right move down the right lane. Made the right move. Buried two of them. Fifth, what do they get? Uh, you, 15 boys, first is 1000 bucks. It's not bad. 
It's great at That's 15. pretty darn good. Oh, Addison three shakes the rack. Three-bagger. 250 to 268 off the sheet. These matches are not over yet, not folks. Rustine, eighth frame on a four-bagger. This is a big shot here to put her away. Got it right. Again, I think that light left lane is getting pretty tight. He rolled it really well. He just got it too far right. Right. I think if he, he gets around it and he gets it there, it's coming back. But also when he gets it left in the right in the right spot, as Holly gets the ten pin out finally. Great shot. Great shot by Holly Orgerman, hometown kid. Another thing I've noticed is the sportsmanship from everybody too. And mm -hmm. Nobody's taking it like personally or it's anybody else's fault. It's all on themselves, which is what I love to see. See Rush it's make it square good. here. It does it's run better. down the sleeper. Not a not a given on this today for sure. I guarantee you I gotta run at that. I'm hooking it right past it. <laughs> got she got that one way up the lane. That's a big eight. Big eight on a four bagger. It's that's it's you know what though it's tough because that's in the ninth frame. And now she, Addison can strike out and win. Can she shut her out? Yep. Because that brings her to two forty six. Yeah, she can. Yep. And so Addison has not missed on the left lane. She got a big break on the right lane. Yeah, uh, like Dawson on the right lane here. Carbide oh. tank. Ball change. Ball change. Soft ten. Right past the spot again. Hey. I think that's a big that's here. We know she trusts it on the left lane, but this right lane's been one strike, and it wasn't very flush. So we'll see if she makes the move and backs one. Dawson going for a spare here. Hook. Cleans it up very nicely. So yeah, this is kind of the. This is kind of the. It's not the match, but it's a huge part of the match here for Addison Cole, standing right next to her brother. One lane away, going for a title. She puts this one in the hole. It's going to be a big tenth. That's going to go Brooklyn. It did not run Brooklyn. It's the same, pretty that much the same spot. Two. Yep. So now Holly Orgerman cannot be shut out. She needs just a mark, I believe. Because she's on the spare, too. So. Dawson. Runs a whole bunch of pins into each other. And this is not, on this pattern, this spare is oh. going to be really hard. Yeah, I don't know how I shoot it. Like that. Come on. Oh, nice. Spare. Phenomenal spare shooting out of Addison Cole there to cover the 369. I would actually sub her in to shoot it for me. <laughs> and it, that would be probably the best strategy here, right? I'm definitely not shooting that. Rush Steen looking to put the match away. Rolls it heavy. Bang. Gets them all to go. See you later. That was that scary. was phenomenal. That kid's a really good bowler that has earned this oh, yeah. title. Because he's, he throws it sick. Yeah, he needs like five pins um, to win. It's not much. Yeah. Eh, seven, six. You don't need a mark. Just no, stay behind just, the line. Skip pins. Addison Cole. <laughs> On the left lane. It's been a good lane. She gets the 10 nice. out. There's a little more push on that left lane, mm -hmm. which we've seen throughout the entire day. So, But, yeah, but she's been the only one to use it. Right. And, like, actually be able to use it, I should say. Right. It's There's enough hook on this pattern where you can use it instead of having there it be a have problem. It. Nine pins for Rush Steen. Puts him <clears throat> above. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, because Dawson can only get up to, uh, or wait, I, oh, maybe, maybe not. He's got 196 off. Rush is already at 202. Spare here. Just put away. Big Addison. shot. Bang. Wow. Clutching up Addison Cole. Forces putting the pressure on Holly Orgerman. She can't shut her out. Does count matter? Holly needs to double. Uh, count does, I think it does matter. If she gets 10 or 9, it matters. Yeah. See one more out of rush here as he looks to fill his 10th frame. Makes his 10th in phenomenal effort out of rush Dean from Waterloo, Iowa. All right, here it is. Nine or 10. 
That's Close. 10 straight back. Wow. Nice. What a phenomenal game out of Addison Cole. 10 clean frames, 227. Strikes out. Doesn't want to watch, and I don't blame her. Yeah, I wouldn't watch either. What does she need to and mark? I, and I, I will tell you action. this, if because folks at home can can hear the crowd. If Holly doubles here, this place is going to blow up. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of people here that are cheering for her, hometown kid. Let's see what she's got. She's got a sham. Oh, my goodness. That was almost the most insane break I've ever seen in my it's life. Despair. Just needs to spare. Spare in three. Dawson Cole's finishing up over on lane 58. Great effort out of him. It's not the last time we're going to see him. Great, great spare by Holly. Phenomenal effort. Needs three pins. Three pins indeed. Bounce it out. All Holly's got to do is keep it on the lane and stay behind the line. And you know what? Sometimes when you feel that that pressure, you can Del Ballard it. And I hope we don't see that here. That's why would you say that? That was perfect. Really exactly where she needed it to be. Holly Orgerman, U15, Midwest Bullfest, ladies champ, Rush Steen from Waterloo, Iowa, brings home the boys title. What a phenomenal set of matches. Yeah. Wow. That was I just wish they would have been slower. I know. They just, I feel like they ran right past me, but way to go. We only have 10 frames. Not all these, these kids are just so good, man. And Holly just, Holly did what she had. Was they, that was two clean games out of the girls. Yeah. To shoot 234 and 227. As a title match. In a title match on it's a, a not easy. easy pattern. They are not easy. Wow. Wow. If you don't like that, you don't like bowling. Dang. Good work. And you know what? We got a whole other set of step ladders left. Oh, boy. And this one's interesting. And these are going to be power fests, I bet. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. I know. We got one two-hander. <laughs> we got three of my local people, actually, at least. We are. Everybody from my camp. We're going to take a little bit of a break. Uh, we'll be back with our U18 finals for the boys and the girls here at Midwest Bowl Fest 2023. The inaugural Midwest Bowl Fest, giving out big checks. Oh yeah, gotta love it. It's great payout. Phenomenal for the of entries, so. And it's only year one. Only year one. Just you wait, folks. It's gonna get way next year more packed in here. It's gonna get wild. But in the meantime, let's take a let's take a fiver. They're gonna redress these lanes, and we are gonna have our. Biggest step ladder of the weekend here coming up, U18 boys and girls. Stay tuned. Morning. Hi. How's it going? It's going great. Um, it's gotta go. What? I'll be right back. Do Sarah said that you can pack up tomorrow if you want. Tear down and set tomorrow. Okay. Um, I don't think I can. I think I got so much shit I got to okay. do tomorrow that I just okay. got to get it done. But. That's fine. I just wanted to make sure that I told you that that's what she said. And then, um,
started. So as we're getting warmed up, we're not real in the lanes, so definitely a little bit, a uh, little bit uh, shorter time frame here. But I am sitting down with the man himself, Dale Elliott, the guy who's got his name on the sign, and who dreamed this whole thing up. Isn't that Did, something? It, it's it's uh, crazy. After a long year of planning, and uh -huh. all of a sudden we're done. We're here. We're almost it's done. It's literally the end of it. Yeah. And and I, I honestly. I, I was telling everybody on the on the broadcast like I am just so I'm just, uh, proud of the like everything that just happened over the last few days, um, but I do want to uh, give the audience an opportunity to know a little bit more about kind of what your vision was and why you wanted to put this thing together. Well, uh, you know, it really came from the Sean Yonan family mm -hmm. down in Sheboygan, mm -hmm. and uh, you know they did this tournament, kind of a tournament just like this. For many years, and it got so big, they, you know, they ran out of lane space mm -hmm. um, in Sheboygan, and uh, um, finally, after so many years, they gave it up. And a lot of my bowlers came up and said, "Hey, you know, there's a void out there. There's something that people really want to see, mm -hmm. and uh, and have a tournament, and uh, it's not there anymore." And I said, "Well, you know, I found out that, you know." build it they will come type of thing mm -hmm. and that's really what we sat down and said hey we got 60 lanes man and it's october it's not the prime right prime bowling time it's kind of you know packer weekend is off and mm -hmm. we started looking a year ago and kind of put our date out and said you know we want to do a men's women uh an open basically tournament a, a women's tournament and then a, a kids tournament and uh um, of course the college kids are back and they just started bowling so that's why we did the u you know the U18 and the U15, mm -hmm. and uh, you know it, it just it, it was just a idea that we came up with, and we got so much support from our community, which was really neat. You know to be able to go out the village of Weston, I can't tell you, um, yeah. you know how much it means to be able to get the money that we needed to, um, you know, bring these people in and give them a, a really nice prize. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is something that people aren't used to mm -hmm. uh, around, you know, they're used to taking, you know, if it's a hundred dollars, they got to take 75 of it, 25 of it to pay for bowling and 75. I mean, we didn't have to do that. And that, yeah. that's, what's really cool about yeah. being able to put some real teeth into these things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, $3,000 for first place for the open term. And that, yeah. it's, it's, uh, that's it's hard to find. It's very hard to find. Um, you know, so again, um, you know, build it, they will come, and, and, and exactly what we did. You know, I thought some of the hardest parts was, you know, getting sponsors. That, that seemed to be the easiest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they you all want to be a part of it. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, they said, make sure you, uh, you know, we had to do the e-commerce with the website so people could sign up ahead of time. And then we found out that a lot of people don't want to sign up ahead of time. <laughs> yep. You know, they're like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm doing this day to day. I'm coming, yeah. you know, and, and, uh. I'm coming, but I don't want to pay ahead of time and that all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, we we and thanks to you and and uh, Jeff Riggles and Dale Hackbart and all those guys, you know, and my daughter, you know, posting and saying, yeah. "Hey, we're hearing things," and 
you know, we want to let you guys all know that uh, some of the things that you're saying out there isn't really reality. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, mm -hmm. it was it was great collaboration between a whole bunch of people and and, uh, and to get people to understand that, uh, um, you know, what we were trying to pull off was something that was really unique. Well, I am extremely proud to be a part of it, Dale. I'm really glad that we got this thing to, to go off with, uh, if I would say, without a hitch. I know that's a big thing to say. <laughs> well, it, it is, but, you know, and, I, and, I, and I'd like to credit my team here. I mean, my, my people here at Weston are... They're amazing. And, and, and you said that, you know, you said that in your, one of your casts and said, you know, if anybody can do it, Weston can do it. And I, and I can tell you what, it's got... It, the ideas might come from me, but I, I got to tell you the uh, the Sarah, Sarah Elliotts of the world and the yes. Luke Elliotts and Josh Elliotts and uh, uh, you know our whole entire family, um, Jason Rush, I, I, you know my mechanics and my, yeah, my I was, lane yeah we, guys. we were talking about that how it's just there like no we had one lane breakdown for maybe ten minutes right and think about how many lines that we have filled this weekend and to right. have that only happen for that little bit is something that's really hard to pull off. And, you know, even the pros notice it when they walked in the door, you know, mm -hmm. and they and they bowled here on Friday night and and then turn around and, uh, uh, you know, we went to dinner and they all sat around and said, hey, you know, you got a great facility and one of the things we notice is, A, it's clean and, B, it's runs and, mm -hmm. and uh there's no broken pins and there's no machines that are busted down and yep. and you got new equipment and all that kind of stuff. So you know when when your peers notice what you're yeah. doing, yeah, and it means a lot. It is, and uh, when the pros are telling us that, it's it's really cool. And obviously the people in District Nine and mm -hmm. and all the people in Northern Wisconsin here, you know, 100 percent behind us. And and again, that's mm -hmm. what keeps us really, really going. What are you most excited about for next year? Doing it all over again, you know, um, <laughs> having a little bit more time to. <laughs> the hardest part about the whole thing was the ske the skeleton, you know, trying to put the yeah. skeleton together. Yeah. Now that we got the skeleton built, you know, it's just like things that happen like at high school bowling. It takes you a year or two to get it under your belt, mm -hmm. and then those things are out of your out of the realm. You don't have to worry about it anymore, mm -hmm. and uh, then you just go on to make sure that you you doing other things better and and. Uh, I've been saying all probably for three weeks now. We got all these ideas. People are coming up with ideas, and we're just putting them in a little box and moving it over to the mm -hmm. to the side. And we're not going to open it for for sure. We're not going to talk about Bowl Fest for a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna um, go have a have a rest. <laughs> there's a lot of mopping up to do, and there's a lot of financial stuff to do. But we're you know we're going to give the staff a little bit of time to um, you know. Reflect re, on re, things. Yeah, reflect and, then, and refresh. You know, and then yeah. open the box up and say, okay, you know, let's start working on it for next year. Mm -hmm. And uh, what what worked and what didn't work and what, what do we like to see different and awesome. what, do the, what do the people say? So I love it. Well, thank you very much again. You're and and on behalf of all of these bowlers and everybody that got to be a part of this, um, I'm extremely grateful and I think everybody else is and I, I couldn't be more excited to see what happens in the, the coming years as this is, I've been saying it a lot, this is the inaugural event. Right. Right? right. And, and it only gets better from here. So well, I'm really excited you about know, that. Gosh, we had some great bowling too. And yeah, you, we did. you can't ever forget about that either. I mean, and the, the patience that these parents and <laughs> kids put in, you know, yes. for sitting here you know all day today all day mm -hmm. saturday and grinding too yeah. oh like it's there's no score fest going on no. right now and they're, no, no. they're all keeping oh, it no. together and, and again you know not having you know not having that issue to t take care of you know the the, the elite bowlers absolutely mm -hmm. just love the fact that it's tough it's not a carry contest it's not a score fest yep um and you know we had Great different shot shots there. out there yeah absolutely no i i, I honestly like up on the bowling side, it sounds weird, but I don't know if I do a whole heck of a lot different next year. Yeah, and that's nope. a to to hit that in year one, and not have to make like significant change. Right. That's that's I'm 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 really happy about that, and I think that it, yeah, it absolutely did reflect in the the reaction from the bowlers. So. Well, like I said, you know, thank thank goodness for all of our community, yeah. you know, rallying, and the bowling community, the, yes. you know, the storms and the storm bowling and. Um, you know, Cubica AMF and those big companies that when you can put their name on a, on a product, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. you know, it uh, it that lends a lot, a lot of credibility to the product. And then there are also people that are ready to see what your inaugural event looks like and then say, hey, we, you know, Cubicus Storm, uh, they, they said, hey, we're going to step up to the plate. We just need a little bit more time yeah. to put it in our budgets and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, again, a lot of great collaboration between a lot of great companies um, makes it makes it a lot easier it's awesome it's really awesome yeah. well i'm gonna start uh you better start I'm gonna, talking yeah, i'm gonna start kids. calling this game yeah yeah, yeah we got uh, aiden scott and ethan kraus or krause i'm not 100 sure how to say that uh, olivia baskin and daniel tank uh coming in for our three and four seats uh for our u18 finals here at the midwest bowl fest Big Brooklyn hit there for Aiden. He's got a spare and a three-bagger. Ethan kind of had a rough start with a couple splits, but he was able to put 10 down on his last shot. So let's see if he can keep that momentum rolling as Olivia here on lane 56, throwing in a 900 global eternity pie, which that's a lot of ball. And uh, looks like, uh, I don't know if it's, it's the right answer for her yet, but I guess we're about to find out. I'm freaking out here. There we go. And as much as Ethan had momentum with that flash strike, well, sometimes you miss the head pin too. And it, it, as these, uh, as this pattern has developed, it's been interesting. Great cover there by Ethan, covering his washout. Awesome effort. Olivia going for the four pin or six pin. Uh, other thing too to kind of give lend some credit to is uh, lefties weren't shut out and they didn't dominate. No. Um, no. And for anybody that bowls anything, um, that's that's a hard balance to find. Very very difficult balance to find. Yeah, we tried to you know we tried to build the pattern so that they're you know are equal on both sides mm -hmm. and. Uh, Josh Elliott, mm -hmm. you know, has helped us with the patterns, and he does that whether it's state tournament or junior tournament or whatever. Don Hildebrand always wants us to, you know, make sure that we have good patterns. And uh, I can even go back to, um, you know, before we had the, the men's state tournament mm -hmm. last time, or I should, should say the Open, yep. when we had Voodoo come up and, you know, level the lanes off. And that's mm -hmm. really changed the playing field. It has. Um, for sure, a lot, and obviously we have, we have that, you know, we have that coming up again in uh, 25. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna probably do another take a look at it again, mm -hmm. and see how it all goes. But uh, yeah, and I know a lot of people throughout the state really excited to have it back here because it just it just flat works. Aiden Scott here is on a three bagger, looking for four in a row. Is it gonna get there? Not quite enough. That. The extra traffic with not having the re-oil is going to make... It'll make these matches a little bit interesting. It's going to be more grinding. Um, scores probably aren't going to be quite as high. I think the fronts on uh, 56, at least on the right, are, are pretty hot. So if whoever can get around it um, or get through it, it's going to have a big advantage because uh, Addison, her, she wasn't really missing left in the last match, but... Um, it kept hooking a little bit early, as you know, bowling balls do, and it really amplified her misses. Um, so I think whoever can figure out lane 56 here between Danielle and Olivia, and whoever follows behind them, that'll be that'll be kind of a kind of a make or break for for the girls on this pair. So. The other thing that was a little bit scary for us is you know to have the the elite on the 20 side, yeah, for and sure, the gal, gals in the middle. And then the kids over here, and then we popped over the kids over to the 20 side for the storm doubles. Mm -hmm. And to be able to try to put the same pattern out all weekend. Yep. And then, you yep. know, it was a little bit scary when we came over here with the guys because I thought, oh, my goodness, what's going to happen with moving that pattern? Mm -hmm. I thought it actually played pretty much the I same. I think it looked really similar. I think it looked really similar. I think um, the bowlers struggled a little bit. But um, but they struggled over there, too. They, yeah, they did. Yeah. Um, but that, that's another thing that was a little bit spooky to be able to, you know, take that track and put it out over here mm -hmm. and, uh, and make sure that it wasn't playing way, way different. Yeah. 
then uh, oh, Danielle just on the other gets side. It, catches a terrible break, almost leaving the Greek church there. Yeah. Ethan Kraus uh, tries to run the two pin. Not quite enough heat on that one. He's struggling. Doesn't really have a have much of a look here. It's gonna he's gonna have to figure something out to dig himself out of the hole. You know the other thing Ben I thought over the over the weekend is we didn't see a tremendous a lot of two handers. That was it? surprising. Yeah, yeah. In in even right now, right? So there's right. there's some, uh, but it, it didn't overwhelm the field. You know we have Mike Shady up doing his USA mm -hmm. coaching. And he said uh, they have 18 kids on Team USA this year, 18 boys yeah. and 18 girls. Yeah. And they have 15 two-handers <laughs> on the boys and yeah. two on the girls. Yeah, it's coming around. I mean, Holly Orgman just won throwing right. it, right. it two-handed. Right. And, and on the on the girls' side, that is – it's it's going to get there. It's going to take a while, but it'll get there. Let's well, see. you know, in, in our area um, – Ball change for Olivia. Gets it a little further to the right, and that's a good nine. Not a stuff eight pin, but that was a good nine. I mean, our area lost a couple of our, not, I shouldn't say lost. They went to college. Braden Malich was here yesterday mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, struggled a little bit. He did. And, he definitely uh, did. Uh, so we lost a couple of the D9, really good D9 uh, two-handers. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Uh, and yet you're starting to see a couple more come along. I know at high school practice or high school, the look at before practice. Yeah. Looks like we've got a lot of them. There's a lot and of them coming. Junior league here at Weston. Mm -hmm. It seemed like there's a, quite a few of them. So. Um. Olivia shooting at her eight pin straight at it. No doubt about it. Let's see if Ethan can get his four pin out of there too. Hooking at it. Just barely gets over there. Definitely caught some shim from the urethane traffic on that lane. You'll have that, but now you listen to Mike Shady talk about two handers and, and he'll tell you it's the first paradigm shift of bowling in in a long in a time. long, long time, you know, yeah. hundreds of years and mm -hmm. and uh you know, a lot of these kids are learning from T V. Mm-hmm. And they're, you know, watching. Yeah, they're all learning on Jason YouTube. Del Monte yeah. and mm -hmm. YouTube and whatever. And uh, and they're all kids Great that, shot there for Aiden. He's got a good look on a tough pair, and it's really showing because he's, he's got about a 40-pin lead on Ethan here. Looking to really shut him out. Olivia on the left lane. That was almost a really, really good shot. I think she ball, she ball changed, and it looks really close. So now she's just got to lock it in. Danielle's kind of giving her a little bit of an opening to, to find something. Uh, so even though she splits, it's, it's patience. That's been the – that's honestly, that's been the name of the game this whole weekend for all these kids, for all the adults. Patience. Those that were the most patient um, yielded the best results. And, well, and these kids have been waiting a little while. They have been waiting a little while. You know, they started early this morning mm -hmm. and then went to storm doubles and mm – -hmm. You know, came back and we made them sit for an hour or two. Mm -hmm. Can't be an easy transition. Either. No, it's not. Definitely is not. Ethan Kraus on the right lane, looking for some sort of hope. And there it is. Gets all ten to go. Great shot out of Ethan. Love to see him get another one here. As Danielle steps up on lane 56. Danielle is from New London. She's going to graduate high school in 2026. Mom and dad are Alan Penny. She bowls at Kegler's Bowling Center, the uh, home of Carlene Beyer, who bowled earlier today. Uh, she, is, she did make her varsity team as a freshman in high school and does intend to bowl in, intend to bowl in college, too. So, coaches, if you're out there and you like what you see, Danielle Tank is uh, looking to advance her career beyond high school bowling as Ethan runs the 2-8 out. Great shot out of him. Finally catching some momentum. Ethan's going to graduate in 2024. He does have a 300 game under his belt as well as an 814 series. Three-time Batter State champion. Uh, he took a second at the most recent JBST over at Wagner's. And he did want to throw uh, Trey Henriksmeyer a big shout-out because Ethan was actually the alternate uh, that got into the number 
because Trey went and bowled on the adult hey, side. Yeah. So he, he went all the way from the bottom to the four seed to make the show. Uh, that's a big run for a, for a Sunday morning, which is awesome for him. Yeah, there, I mean, we put up a lot of things this weekend that are, you know, God just meant it to be or whatever. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Him, him, get, him getting the chance to get in and mm -hmm. our other guy just running the rack. That's crazy. <laughs> and uh, it was a, it was a d difficult situation for both his mom and himself to try to figure out, should I stay in the junior? Yeah. You know, high qualifier, the juniors. Yep. And then, and then do I like want to go 14 to, seed in the yeah, in the I open. Want to go over yeah. and bowl with the guys. Mm -hmm. and, and, it's not uh, an easy decision. Oh my goodness, it wasn't. And we talked about money, and it was kind of funny how it went back and forth. Yep. Like, I don't yep. care about the money. I don't care about the money. Great spare there out of Danielle. Well, he did win the LBC, so that does help. Yes. That was a that was right. a that was a big payday he, for he, him. Well, of course. Yeah. He's got a lot of money in his smart account, mm -hmm. which is great. And. Uh, and here he we just, are. We got a new champ yeah, because wanted, of it. He wanted to compete with with the big boys. Mm -hmm. And I think having a couple of the pros in the field or some regional pros mm -hmm. in the field, I mean, he got an opportunity to possibly bowl, you know, one of the senior pros the yeah. first game yep. if it would have just lined up correctly. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that was one of his decisions is like, I'm going to do yep. I'm gonna I just want to see what I got. Yeah. We got Olivia here on the right lane. She's been looking for uh, for a good look. On both of these lanes. Hasn't quite gotten there yet, but hopefully she can here. Just runs it, Brooklyn. It's tough. Tough condition out there as Aiden looks to finish up his 254 game. So that's huge. Uh, definitely one of the bigger games that we've seen on our. TV pair here thus far 240 game excuse me I, I my bowling math has been terrible today Ethan's gonna wrap up his game wants to finish strong here three good shots in a row flush is 10 it's it's you know those hits are those they're nice because you're like I can do it but then it's like why didn't I do it yeah <laughs> and it's just part of the game and, and 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 honestly, it's one of my one of my favorite parts about these youth events now is these kids are getting so much experience in on hard settings, under the lights today, and and just really having to put their best foot forward and learn the hard way a little bit too. Like you know, that's that's one thing about tournament bowling that they all say is the only way to learn how to bowl in a tournament is bowl in tournaments. Well, the ball that I used, you know, the ball that I used in qualifying might not be the ball that I need to be using right now. Yeah, either, you know. <laughs> That, just throw, yeah, just throw it on 58, bud. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> Had a little, little wrong lane situation there as Olivia is. Need another practice ball in between. Olivia was our uh, junior gold qualifier for the U18 girls out of this event, so congratulations to her. Going to be headed to Detroit here in the summer. And, and again, you know, great shout out, shout out. I mean, I think we we pushed seven kids to junior gold. Mm -hmm. Had twelve kids sign up um, for their first time to yeah. bowl in, in junior gold. So uh, another another great asset to the sh you know yeah. to the whole weekend. Whenever Absolutely. you can get that many people, you know, going on to the junior gold, and and these kids. They're all aspiring to go there. They are. They are. That's that's the show for them. It is. And and it's a great show. As much as much as people will sometimes criticize Junior Gold and how big it is and some of the idiosyncrasies and difficulties right. that that entails, it's also a phenomenal tournament and it's one of the biggest things to happen in the world on youth in youth sports. Right. So Ethan Krause finishes with a 190 game to Aiden Scott's 240. So Aiden's going to be moving on. I believe he is bowling against Levi Gabrielsa, who is warming up on a few pairs down here as Daniel Tank, Danielle Tank leaves a soft seven pin. Corner pins have not been gimmies today on this pattern specifically, just with 
how much friction there's been. But still got to have them. Let's see. Get it over there and stay there. Beautiful. Great spare. Danielle is not done. Uh, she, if she can strike here, she sets herself up for a chance. Um, Olivia does have a pretty sizable lead of about 23 pins. But it is she, she can't. Yeah, Olivia can't shut her out. But all 10 got to go over a few times. So let's see if Danielle can give herself a chance. That's a really good shot. Just get there. Oh, man. That was one of those misses that she didn't quite miss enough and pays the price. You know, Ben, we were talking earlier, too, um, in mm -hmm. the crowd back here about the two-game versus one-game mm -hmm. match, you know, mm -hmm. how the two-game match can just go, you know, back and forth yeah. and back and forth. There's a lot more ebb and flow. And, and yeah. how all of a sudden that, that spare or that split in the wrong spot just throws it back into the other person's um, opportunity. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of fun. So it was, it was like fun. we saw, you got, I guess, the crowd mm -hmm. out here got to see both gamuts of, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah. two game matches yeah. for finals and one game matches yep. for yep. finals. And, and, and the, I, th I, I like that variety because on, the, uh, on the, the adult side, um, we don't really get to bowl at that often, two Correct. game matches. Absolutely. And, and, and for these kids, I, I actually really like the one games because. The, the pressure's on. It's on immediately. And, and, and you got to show up. You got to step up. And, and if you can, you're going to be in a great spot. Like Aiden Scott, you know, he went spare, three bagger, split, five bagger. Like that's, that was a great shot by Olivia, just barely leaving the four pin. And, and, and again, back in the times when we started figuring out what we were going to do, and you were obviously in all the planning mm -hmm. sessions, but, mm -hmm. you know, do you do match play? Right. You know, and mm -hmm. to be quite honest with you, I'm, after, after this weekend, I'm just tickled pink about the fact that you could do match play and not have anybody um, in that field of 30 in mm -hmm. the Badger Elite or mm -hmm. the field of 20-some in the girls mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not have anybody say, well, that's baloney, yeah. two games and I'm out. Yeah, no, no, it was, I think everybody knew that they had a chance if they would, if they bowled well, and that was what that was, and... I guess my only, my only thing, and then you don't have the the thirty having the the guys the the top two guys be able to have a sit out. I think that makes it really exciting because mm -hmm. you know you hate to see them lose their first their yeah. first two games yep. to somebody that was in thirtieth place. But uh, yeah. um, other than that, and again, uh, you, you know the we talked about the lane, you know the difficult lane, and not one person you know comes up and says. Um, this is it's too hard. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, some people did, but they did. They well, they decided to say it. To us, they so. decided to tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, you can course. go run your own tournament. Of course. Then. <laughs> well, Olivia is at the point of trying to tune in. She has won the match over Danielle Tank. Great bowling by Danielle this week, just to even make it here. As much as I know that she wishes she could have bowled better this game, be proud of the fact that you're here. You all bowled a lot of kids to get here. And it's nothing to hang your head about. Sometimes the pins just don't fall your way. And that, this was just kind of one of those games. And Just give credit to Olivia for grinding it out. You know, she only had a, a couple opens here, all splits that were her opens. And just kind of the, kind of the way she goes. But Olivia's going to be moving on. Uh, she will be bowling Mackenzie Krause, which I believe if my interviews serve me correctly, is Ethan, who just bowled sister. So we went from one sibling pairing in our U15 finals between Dawson and Addison, and we go right to another one, keeping it in the family. Kind of like it. Yeah, and again, when you say family, Ben, that was one of our big, our yes. big deals when we sat down and talked about doing a bowl fest was, you know, the idea of having mom dad and the kids come up yep and spend the whole weekend and that's why we did that you know that friday baker with the pros uh which by the way turned out 
phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> it was, yeah. Um, yes. But, you know, to be able to have mom and dad, and I know it can get expensive and whatnot, and that's, again, one of, one of the reasons why we wanted to put some teeth into the prize fund so that when they go home, they, yep. they can say, well, we had a great time, and we also didn't spend, you know, everything that yes. we make during yep. the week. So, yep, yep. Um, again, made it, made it worth the trip. The whole idea was to do ha- do family and. Um, hey, there we go. Good finish, Danielle. That's gonna wrap that match up. But yeah, yes, absolutely. Um, there was, and I think that there was a decent amount of that uh, in terms of multiple people in the family across different events bowling together or bowling. Yeah, um, I, I, you know, I think one of those things that was in the box. I don't even want to talk about. You know the box yet, as I said before. But one of the things in the box was, hey, you know, what about some handicap things? So that yeah. maybe something that we could, you know, we can throw out there too. Um, mm-hmm. Again, we it, it just seemed like there wasn't any time to do anything this year, but there is a lot of open space and a lot of time, and you know, to do something where people are going to come and have fun, and uh, you, you know, it uh, it would be kind of cool to. To be able to have some handicapped yeah. people come on in and do something, and yeah. and and maybe even experience the fact that um, I'm I'm Badger Elite. I'm not good enough to be in Badger Elite. I'm not good enough to be in the Lady Scratch, but I could compete if I had some handicaps. So. Yeah. Well, well, one thing that I'll I'll say then is, well, if you're listening and you're watching. And you have an idea that you want to throw in the box? Oh, absolutely. Drop we, it in the comments. We're always, the, the ears are open. sitting way off to the other yeah. side of the table. Yeah, yeah. Right now, but. Uh, it's, it's, uh, we're, it, it's one of those things that we're not naive enough to believe that we have all the answers. And uh, just absolutely want to have the best event that we can. And if you got an idea on how we can maybe make it a little bit more accessible to more people or something like that, let us know. So, all right, I'm going to go. Take a quick break as we get tuned in for our semifinal Let's match. Color here. man, come back up. Yeah, I pr- again, Dale. I really appreciate it. Thank appreciate you very you much. Too. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back, folks. Awesome. Thank you.
folks. Tuning back in. Semi-final matches of our U18 finals here at the 2023 inaugural Midwest Bowl Fest. Our newest competitors on the girls' side. It's going to be Mackenzie Krause. She is from Chippewa Falls High School. She's going to graduate in 2026. She calls Falls Bowl home. Ryan and Janelle are mom and dad. Mom, if you're watching, she wanted me to throw you a big shout-out, say... Thanks for hanging out and all the support. Mackenzie does have a 279 to her name, as well as a uh, 710 series is her high set so far. She is a doubles champion and a two-time JBST champ. She also wanted to throw Grandpa Jerry a shout out as well. Hope you're watching there, Grandpa. Mackenzie's thinking of you, and let's hopefully you can shine a bit, a little, little bit of luck on her day here. Uh, also, just like Danielle, uh, Mackenzie does have the intention to bowl in college. So, if you like what you see, here it is. On the boys' side of things, our newcomer, our two seed is Levi Gabrielsa. Levi goes to Green Bay High School. He's going to graduate in 2026. He calls Village Lanes home in Green Bay. Tammy and Matt are his mom and dad. He's got a 290 and a 792 for his high game and his high series. And he has made the advancers around at Junior Gold. And for anybody that's ever bowled Junior Gold, you know that that is an achievement. It's not easy to get there. He won the handicap division of the JBST that we streamed in yeah. Ashwaubenon. He didn't even remember that. Really? <laughs> yeah. How do you not remember? Well, he's grown a okay. foot since I saw him okay. last. That's so true. <laughs> there is this that. Is and, uh, yeah, two-handed kid. He's got a great game. Uh, had a great uh, high school state this year. He made fifth uh, for high school state as a freshman, which is impressive to make to make the show um, at – 14, 15 years old is really something to be said. So he's got some experience under the lights, and I'm excited to see what he can do. But Olivia's going to leave us off here. Phase two, I believe. Looks like a phase two. Or it's a D or a DNA. Well, nine for Olivia there. Good nine. They've been pretty toasty for the girls on that pair. Yeah. It's been hard to get it to the right. They burned up the fronts pretty good in the U15 show. And mm -hmm. No re-oil due to time, we believe. Levi, heavy rolling it. Roto grip gem. Wow. That was good. Wow. That was a that, that was kind of a little tricky little roll he put on that thing. That was kind of cool. Oh, I can't do that, but I can't do much. So hook, hook a little bit. Not quite enough. As soon as you think you gotta get it a little extra to the right, it hangs. Aiden shot 240 last game, Aiden right? shot 240, one by 50 pins. Uh, like he did get a couple good breaks. Okay. Uh, for sure, but... I like the urethane. Uh, he also likes the urethane. Uh, Aiden is from Portage. He goes to Portage High School. He's going to graduate in 2025. Primarily does his bowling at Fireball Lanes. Mom and Dad... Richard and Nicole weren't able to make it up, so he wants to say hi. Hope you guys are cheering him mom nice and loud at home as he covers the baby Good split spin. wonderfully there. Great cover. He did make a state with both singles and with his team this last year through high school bowling, so... Got a little bit of experience on a bigger stage. But he's also still young. He's got a few years left, to, even in just in high school, and here he is competing for the big stuff. Just About the missed, same miss time. Yeah, missed her a little bit left. 
the 10 pin this time, but pretty similar. Nice right. left. Mackenzie throwing an eternity. She likes that ball. Yeah? Do you know Mackenzie? Yeah, I will league with her and her brother. So oh, nice. Her brother was on the... I mean, is it Kraus or Krause? Kraus. Okay. Thank you. I will league with them, so... We have good times. Ooh. Ooh, Aiden just barely. But hey, that's a that's a spare in the line score. Looks the same up there. Wow, Olivia is really far to the right shooting at the uh, six nine ten here and just aces it. Wow. That's not how I would go with that, but I, I said the wrong name. Her yeah. name's McKenzie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just say it. You right. just call me an idiot. It's fine. Right. It's my channel. Trying yeah. to be nice. Yeah. No, no, it's fine. All right, Levi stepping up after a great opening shot on the left lane. Roll. Yeah. Oh, boy. It's a little bit of shim there. Yeah, he's, well, he's making it with that heavy roll. Right, and he's pretty far up the back of it. Mm -hmm. Not making it do too much down lane. So. Interesting to see how that develops. Here's McKenzie, or uh, see, no, I'm Olivia. all mixed up. I'm, yeah, Olivia on the left lane. Just can't quite get that phase two to get through it. It's really close. I was kind of surprised that she didn't stick with the Widow because it was trying to clear the front. But. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> that was really helpful. Yeah. Anytime, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Levi Gabriel's. Uh, I think this is a big shot right here. This is a big shot. You go up 23 or 21 in the first three frames. That's it's a good spot to be. That's better than down 21. Absolutely. There he is. It's oh, it's left. And around him. Oh, and he still only just plaques a 10 pin. That's a big break. And to have that kind of a miss. It's Olivia, unfortunately. Flags the 4 7. She needs a reset here. Be a good time if we were playing re racks to take one of those. Oh, yeah. I love re racks. You didn't take one today. I did not. Nobody did. I didn't. I wasn't really in the spot, too, I didn't feel. Yeah. If I'm trailing by a bunch and I need one, I'll take one. But if I'm in position, I like to just go. Mm -hmm. So I don't like to take a break whenever I'm in position. So that's Deep. why I didn't. Okay, Levi, in that heavy roll, because now I know you can he can just dead up the back. Up yeah. the back. That's gonna be something that's gonna serve him very well in his bowling career. Oh yeah. There's Great shot. shot by Olivia. Slaps the ten out. Went through the pin pretty nice. Yeah, it deflected a little, but um, up the 10, though. it did. And that's all that matters. Exactly. It's okay if it deflects as long as they all fall over. Aiden's got a couple he spares. Got right. Looks good. He's, he's got to he, do what Rush did. He's just yep. got to chase it left yep. and throw it the same way. Yep. There's Mackenzie on the left lane. Just this snow plows them all down. 10 is 10. That's not how it's so many. We still have another match after this, right? We do. Yes, our uh, so we have Marley Krieger on the girls' side and Brady Rickert on the boys' side as our top qualifiers in the U18 boys and girls divisions here at Midwest Bowl Fest. Weston Lanes, we're live. We've been live for almost six hours, over six hours. Yeah. Burning the afternoon oil. I don't know if that's a phrase, but it is now. Can we make, make it a shirt. Apparently, <laughs> make it a shirt, he says. <laughs> Mackenzie, big double. Big double. Off of a couple spares, keeping it clean. Aiden made his 3-6-10. He's, he's trying to find something here. He had a pretty good look last game, but a little extra traffic, a little extra time. Gets behind the head pin and slaps them all down. That is the spot to be in this building. Especially with a purple ball in your hands. Oh, yeah. Straighter angles, you want to go mixer all day long. Well, Olivia struck with a great shot on 56 last time up. 
This left lane's been a struggle. She's ball changing back to, uh, it's a Widow 2.0 hybrid. Get a little cleaner through the front. Now it's just got to come off the spot. Shake him out. Oh, roll Closer. it. Roll it. No, that's just going to helicopter spin there. That's a good nine. That, uh, a good I, that was a way better shape than the last one. Uh, so I, th I think that that's a good ball change. Here's Levi. He got around that one a little bit more. I keep saying I, it's left and it's just 10, so. Well, he did it on purpose, I think. I would agree. I, I think he's found that little bit of, like, those, push. that little yeah. push from the urethane misses left. Mm -hmm. And he's using it to his advantage, and he's able to just get that gem to just tumble. He's using the urethane as he should. Mm -hmm. Urethane can be a good thing. Olivia's struggling with the spares right now, so she's, take a breath. You're a good bowler. You don't get here without being a good bowler. There you go. Take your time. Ball change on both lanes. Did she strike with the phase two or the? She struck with the phase two. But I think she might have seen it go through the pins and didn't really like it. So, we'll see if she's on the right wavelength here. She's got a push. Oh, that found the. Oh, it found the push, and it just got there too much. Yeah, they're pretty touchy right now. They so. are. I can't really be too mad about that. Just Levi, double spare, one bagger, in the fifth frame, just tumbling it. Right behind the head pin and just runs that seven right on over. He's got the right idea. That's the trick, man. He's he, I, I I hate to say the kid's got it figured out, but he's kind of got it figured out. If you're not gonna play the dead hook off this eye, and that's the spot to be. And, and uh, it's just speaking to how difficult that is to do to put that type of a roll on a bowling ball. Oh yeah. And and still get it to strike. You know, we were talking about doing the kind of that top spin trick. That knuckleball thing. The knuckleball thing. Yeah. He's doing almost the exact opposite. Yeah. And and it's working because it's just reading at 20 feet and going forward. Yeah. As Aiden throws a rare – he made the move. He didn't – I just didn't make quite enough of a move, it looks like. I feel it might be getting to the point where they are a little clipped. Um, I think if – Now, when you say clipped, for yeah. those that don't know what that means, so what do you mean? It's also referred to as, like, wet-dry, whereas the outsides get super dry and the insides are still super slick. If you miss left, it might skid longer than you want it to, and you might almost miss the head pin sometimes. Great shot. And if you get it to the right, it's going to go high on the head pin. So mm -hmm. it's almost like there's too much of a – I keep trying to say cliff, but it's basically like too high of a ratio. Mm -hmm. If you give too high of a ratio on a pattern, it's going to be harder than easy. And but that ratio wore in over traffic because right. it started so pretty flat. The pattern's not – too high of a ratio, they broke down into something where there's a ton of hook right and not very much in the middle in terms of whenever you move left and still trying to play that hook to the right. So if you're throwing a, as we watch McKenzie from our low angle here, just, oh, oh. cracks the 10 out. That is a four bagger for McKenzie. As Aiden is up with his, still throwing purple. He moved left again. He moved left, but I think... Oh, oh, sacks the four pin forward. I love that hit. That's the hit of hits right there for me. I haven't seen too many of those this week. Not really at all. You don't really see too many anymore because typically that's like a straighter entry angle hit. Yep. You know, that used to be the hit that everyone loved because everyone threw urethane balls up 10 Boring. back in, you know, 50 years ago now. 50 years ago. Um, back when you were still youth. I'm not that old. My gosh. Anyway, back what, to Levi here. When, yeah, let's let's see <laughs> him do this crazy trick with this heavy roll. He did it again. There's no axis Look. rotation on that at all, and that's yeah. the that's the that's, that's the, the, the miss, there's right? No, there's no miss, right? He, I think he might have got a little swift with it, or maybe just didn't slow down. That's a possibility there too. Olivia leaving the three six here. Uh, when you're throwing urethane and they're clipped, 
What's your what's your solution? What should what should Aiden be thinking right now to My get back into this match? My trick is to always loft it and spin it. Like more axis rotation. Yes. Okay. Not more tilt. No. More rotation. Okay. And I try to come over like my follow through goes to my left shoulder mm -hmm. like hard and if you get it over the front it's going to come off the back but um, that little bit of spin and rotation will get it down the lane a little bit mm -hmm. and then it'll blend it like it's fresh again as close as you can without it being fresh mm -hmm. just get it to read a little bit later and get out that early hook spot that might overhook It's just we use some of these languages that make a lot of sense to me and you. Right. Uh, but to mom and dad and grandma and grandpa and all the friends that are watching back home and just hoping that Olivia oh. can carry that seven pin, come on. Um, it doesn't always make sense to, uh, to the layman. And uh, I think it's important to know how difficult it can be and how many things you have to think about when... You know, it's not like Aiden's throwing it bad. He's clean through six. He's just only got two strikes, and Levi's right. got two doubles, and that's the difference right now. It's lane play. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean if Aiden can find a double here, he takes a lead. I believe. No, sorry. It'd be real close. It'd be just about no, even if he yeah, if he. Take he a lead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, by, by three. three. I mean, and it's just like that. I mean, it's leave. Make a quick move, and you're there. Let's see what he can do here. That was a Got much a better shot. It. Oh, run the bucket. Run the bucket. Get out of there. Hook a little bit. Did get over there? So, like you said, Aiden Scott. That's a couple big shots right here. The Portage kid. Fireball himself. Tried to make a move. Uh, four pin tripped four. So we'll see if he makes another move and see how much clip there actually is. They got that faster too. Whoa, oh, phenomenal yeah, effort out of Aiden Scott good. there. He refound that look. Oh. Now he's just got to lock in and get one more here. If he gets this one, then he's in a great spot. Yeah, then he knows he can trust it too. Levi, Levi's kind of command or dem commanded this whole match so far, but this is the one that's going to be that momentum swing. And when you only got ten frames, that's huge. Oh yeah, huge. Hundred percent. Catching three bags, of three baggers, and one game matches is massive. So let's see what he's got here. Get there. Oh, gets them all to hit each other. Gets a little bit of that cliff. Getting in there. It's Mackenzie going for her four pin. Squares up two round objects. Knocks it over with authority. Do we really call pins round? Uh, it's a that's a baseball phrase. Um, well, so hitting a baseball with a bat is round. Uh, squaring up two round objects. I have heard that. Yeah. I did play baseball. But uh. Is a pin really I'm pretty sure I've watched more hours of baseball than you've been alive, so. <laughs> it's not hard to do. <laughs> it's because I'm old. Yep. Here's Levi, Let's off, see what off a here. one bagger. It's now it's the momentum, right? Aiden's got a little bit of it. He's got yeah. the three bagger up. Levi missed on this lane last time. He got around that one, but he got it for the rights. It stayed right. And, he, and, and that that thing that he's been trying to do. I think he actually just labeled that many shots to start. That's my thought. Yeah, that's possible. I think he just actually threw him that good. Or now it's now, now he just doesn't have a whole lot of miss. I think he's tried trusting it a little more, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just not there. And then maybe a little trust issues there yeah. with getting it left if he saw one hook in the spot where he didn't want to see it. At least leaves himself a makeable. Yep. Uh, missed by enough. He's still, he's not up anymore. He's down. No, he, he was down after the uh, triple by eight. Oh, he's still by nine. Got to have it. And he gets it. Here's Olivia on uh, 56. Oh, oh, count it. Sometimes those hits are like, oh, no, she's
she bowled on the wrong lane. No, she's got to re-bowl it. Oh, man. That stinks. That's unfortunate. Second time this happened. Yeah. Well, here's Levi. Off of the 1-2-4, uh, but he did strike on this lane last time and has not missed here. Oh, they did hit the 9 count. Never mind. Happy roll. Got it further right. Yep, you were. I think you're right. I think he's too far left in the flat. And I think he just hit that good to start, which might have actually been unfortunate. I mean, right. You throw it so you, good, you trap yourself. Right. I mean, you throw it bad on the bad ish. I didn't even want to say bad. You miss by a little bit, and it does something you don't want to see. You might make that move right in the second frame and mm -hmm. be in the right spot, but you must yeah. trap and you're kind of stuck there, I guess. After throwing a two doubles and a nine count. I mean, it's kind of tough to make that move sometimes. So this is not a gimme. No. Definitely. One, two, four, eight. Got around it. Chops it. Yeah, that's a tough one on this. Especially when that flat in the middle. Mm -hmm. And when he's not playing so close to the hook, too, you don't really have Olivia. Trust that it's going to come back. Olivia just threw at that six, seven, ten so well that had that six knot offset a little bit, she would have guaranteed made it. I know. I was thinking the same thing. It was like so far apart. That was it was too good. Uh, as you say, bad rack. That was a very bad rack. Yeah. It, well, it's got it offset. Was a bad re -rack. Yeah. Pin hit it. That was not a that was not a machine awesome. thing. That was a pin thing. You'll have that. Pins do weird things. Pins. They, they certainly don't like to fall over. No. Aiden Scott, three bagger. Wow. Right it looks like he's he he's, once he got that first hit and now he's being more assertive with it. The he's look just keeps it. keeps getting better and better and better. Moved in, started trusting it. That's pretty much all she wrote there too, because yeah. Levi can only tap out at 198, and Aiden's already at 196. So. Four pins. This is our first, um, I, I think that's a, this is our first ladder run for Aiden Scott. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't seen a ladder run yet. It's been a lot of two and two seeds making. Yep. Aiden was the three seed, right? I don't remember. I think, oh, yeah. Yeah, Ethan was four. Yeah, because uh, Ethan threw a shout out to you specifically for bowling the men's event or the open event because um, he was the alternate. Oh, yeah. I led, too, so that let him in there, I guess. You're welcome, Ethan. <laughs> that's all. I think that's all he's asking for. Anytime, so Just buddy. a little you're welcome there. Anytime. So Aiden Scott's going to – he's looking in the 220s here if he makes a spare, which he does splendidly. Mackenzie Kraus has wrapped this one up as well for the ladies – she didn't catch that one at all. Uh, so is it is it the long day itis a little bit? You think? I mean, they started bowling at nine a.m. They had the double stuff. It's seven thirty at night. She can still shoot uh, two thirty. I don't think that's much of a problem. It's just that's the first time <laughs> that she's missed one, and I just yeah. I don't know. It could be a little bit of that, or occasionally we all throw bad shots here. That's true. Great bowling by Aiden Scott. Two thirty four. Two forty twenty. 224, excuse me. That's good two games on the pair. Spare. Just knocks it right along. Mackenzie Krause is moving on to the final to ball against Marley Krieger, who I believe I a right she's there. a Merrill kid. So we go. We started our U15 ladies with a Merrill kid and Peyton Smith, and we're gonna finish our U18 with another Merrill kid from Lesson Jim's Lincoln Lanes. How about that? Levi, 
unfortunately goes open open there to finish his day. Shoots a 177 to finish third place in our U18 division here at Midwest Bull Fest, the youth event. One more match. And One more match, and then this weekend will come to a close. This is a great time to throw another huge thank you to our sponsors, Storm Products, the Village of Weston, Bob's Business, and the Wausau Area USBC, and all of the other sponsors, which you can find at MidwestBullFest.com. Be sure to go check that out and uh, say thank you, uh, both with your words and with your dollars, because they were, they were one of the primary reasons why we were able to do this, to give out some big checks in year one, to have some faith uh, and trust in our team here at Weston Lanes, and, and just, yeah, go sh give them some love. Nothing nothing uh, says thank you better than a $100 bill. This is true. Great spare there for Olivia, bouncing back off of a rough shot and to lead off the 10th. Time to finish strong here, Olivia. I want to see someone uh, pick up the DNA or the IQ Ruby on the tables and throw it. I'm pretty sure if somebody tried to throw that fresh DNA on 55 <laughs> that they would clip the 7 off. They'd be lucky to keep it on. <laughs> That's a good shot. So. Again, the crowd wins her match 213 and advances to the finals. Great finish for Olivia there, finishing strong with a big X. For third place, 750 is pretty darn good. Normally, that's a dub. Yeah, at a youth event, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. 100%. That's a good youth event. I haven't seen uh, Brady Bowl, so I'm interested to see where I he feel plays. Like I have. So Brady. Oh yeah, I have. He's from Anago, so we can go over some of that about Brady. Um, he is on my list here somewhere. Brady does go to uh, Antigo High School, which is about 45 minutes northeast of our location here at Weston Lanes. Um, may calls North Star Lanes as home. So he wanted to throw a shout out to Brian Matt Miller, the proprietor up there, Davy Steger for helping him out, and Tom Kubany as well. Uh, made recommended some big ball changes for him that really propelled him to this point. He, as a on, a, on his team uh, with the Anigal Red Robins, last three years. You want to know what the last three years at state have been? For Anigo, I would love to hear. It. Uh, fifth place was three years ago. It's not bad. Third place was two years ago. Last year was second place. Oh, I feel a first place coming this year. That's what they're all saying. Um, and that's a team that's one state in the past, too. So yeah, they're good every year. They are very good. They They've practice good a lot. Chain. They put the work in, and Brady's a big part of that. Yep. Uh, Kristen and Jeremy are mom and dad. I believe that they are here rooting them on, uh, wearing some, some Red Robin gear over there. Brady does have a 299 as his high game and also has an 845 for his high set. Oh, that's a big number. Yeah. That's uh, another, another two-handed specialist. I don't know what he's throwing. It was a black bowling ball. In case you were wondering. We got Marley Krieger over here on uh, 55. Like I said uh, earlier, Marley is from Merrill, Wisconsin. Calls Lesson Jim's Lincoln Lane's home. She's a 2025 graduate. Took second place in the uh, Wisconsin Pepsi tournament back in 2021. 
Uh, Ma Mickey is here. Sounds like Brad, uh, her dad, had to stay home. So shout out to you, Dad. I hope you're cheering loud at home, giving Marley some good juju going into the final here. She's been bowling her butt off all day and got one more game, ten more frames for her. Uh, Marley's high game ever is 279 and high set of 745. That's pretty good for a high game of 270. Yes. 745? 745, yep. That's, That's really, a big number. Yeah, for without a above 270, yeah. The other thing, too, uh, about about Marley that I think is notable because it, it's a it's a testament to how she practices most likely um, is I don't I don't know how much in the way of events that she bolts I, I, she's not a I don't know if she's an often bowler um, it's not a name that I see at on every roster um, but she's still out here yeah. and, and one seed in it uh, by well let's take a peek. Molly was one seed on the last on the page I don't grab. Uh, she shot 17, 19, four, however many game that's, uh, games that nine. is. For nine? Because so, five yesterday, four today. So she, was only, she only beat McKenzie by uh, 11 pins. But they, and then McKenzie beat, uh, she was two 20 by 20. They made so. the number by a lot. Mm -hmm. Over almost 200. Mm -hmm. So they're well within the number for sure. Oh, yeah. Here it is, folks. Last match of the inaugural Midwest Bowl Fest. Let's do it. I'm going to try to not be too loud to cut these kids off. <laughs> <laughs> Makes one of them balk. Oh. Well, Sean Rash isn't here, so. Just Sean, if you're watching, I'm sorry. I don't. I didn't mean that personally. Looks like we got Aiden's gonna lead us off. It's close. Great shot to lead off the match for Aiden Scott. Picking up right where he left off. Pick, yeah. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's just it. There's McKenzie. That's going to go Brooklyn. And just leave a nice, easy five pin. That was left off the hand and had no intentions of holding. Oof. Oh, great shot to, for Brady to lead off as well. I know that Pax Mango 10. guys throw a lot of Brunswick. Yeah, yeah. Brian's been on shirts, Brian so Matt Miller, who owns the center up there, has been on Brunswick staff for a few years. That is a radical something. As Mackenzie makes her spare here. He's going to line up on lane 58 to try to double it up. I was told it's a sneak attack. Hmm. I've never heard of it. <laughs> Left. It's a good nine. That is a great nine. There's Marley with her. Shot. I believe she is throwing an altered reality. I'm a fan of that ball. You like all the softballs. I do. <laughs> I I do. It's kind of sad, but kind of cool. But kind of sad. Not a gimme with the uh, ten pin here. Not on short. Spare. Great spare. Post is post the heck out of it here. Smarley's. Oh yeah. Good spare. Good spares all around. <clears throat> Aiden is gonna finish this match on the right lane. He finished the last match on the left lane. I think the left lane was his better lane last time around. Um, and I think that the the left lane's been the better lane for 57 and 58 the entire day. 
So that, that could have a factor here as well. He's in. Yes. Sometimes you miss. I do think 57 is about a border too tighter, just down lane mm -hmm. for that purpose, but they're pretty close, so that's good. That was such a good shot. Because she's in a part of the lane that most of these girls have not been in. She's a little further left. She's a little, yeah. She's but she's but she's pushing it. Right, exactly. It's, just, it's straight up, it, rather than trying to shape around it. It's one of the ways to fight the cliff. You just, just run the shim. Yep. And if you get it right, you just hope there's hook. <laughs> Instead of, uh, like, you can either play against the hook and shim it like that, or you can play in and use it as help instead of trying to use it on its own. Great spare there for Great Marley spare. Krieger. That purple hammer is very shiny. You know, that's a... I wouldn't say that that's a hotly contested item uh, amongst the weird bowlers that I know, but whether or not you sand a purple hammer is something that does actually get discussed more often than I ever thought would be a thing because I know a lot of people that refuse to. Yeah, that's weird to me. <laughs> I know it's weird to you. That's why I brought it up. To be fair, I'm also blowing on sport all the time. Ooh, the shin. Yeah, here it is. My purple never has less than a thousand on it, so it's always 360, 500, thousand. Here's Brady trying to get back on the strike train. Went to uh, strike spare to begin his Finals match here after leading the field. He threw the left in everyone we've seen too. Brady was guess how many pins Brady was the one seed by over Levi? Probably like seventy-five. Four. Four? Four pins guaranteed him a place in the finals as Mackenzie Kraus uh, pushes oh. ten all over. The way you said that made me think it was like a big number. Four pins. Uh so 1842. Then Levi had 1838, Aiden Scott had 1826, and Ethan Cross had 1809. That's tight. What That's was the first one out? Uh, 1734. So that was a big jump. But, yeah. but when you're well, fighting for position, when, right? You're fighting for right. position, and, and, and you That's know, guaranteed money. It is, and and it you only got to win one match on a, on conditions that are not conducive to high scoring. Nobody's coming out here shooting 270 every game. It is not a carry contest, which is good. That's left. Is she going to get one? Mm -hmm. Easy four pin. Good nine. She's keeping it. Keeping it in play. Not giving away nine is good right now. Yeah. Not giving away the edge pin. Brady going for his two pin. Oh, Never a doubt. That is one thing too about the uh, the, the folks from Anago, massive supporters of their high school bowlers. They travel well and they are loud. Oh yeah, and I love you just candy. I love it. I just That's have really so cool. much respect for all the people that just care so much about the kids and the sport. And Brian's Brian Matt Miller bought the center up there a couple of years ago now, maybe maybe a little less than two years ago. I don't remember exactly and. You know, he's been dealing with some stuff, and he's still powering through, doing a great job for the sport and for all those left. kids. And that hooked early. Yeah, well, I think he missed it left. And then it just it caught checked whatever. It, it missed all of that push. And I think it was in the flat and just checked up. Yeah. You know. It's possible. Makes a spare work even through four. It's identical games. Just can't be... Uh, can't overstate how awesome it is when proprietors like Dale Elliott and Brian Matt Miller and I, I, a lot of the pri proprietors for all these kids. You know, I, I don't know all the centers that all these kids are bowling at, but I know that they're coming from places that people care um, and and are allowing them to to advance their craft at a young age. It's great. Bowling it has gotten not cheap, so you need people behind you to help you. Out, so. Exactly. And it's, it's nice to see when people are helping out the youth and being able to get them to practice for not that much and just supporting them any way they can. It's nice All to three. See. What yeah. a spare by Marley Krieger. Stays clean. 
Covers the washout. Phenomenal effort out of her. Keeps her right in this match. Mackenzie does have a double, so she's got the leg up, but Marley ain't going away fast. As Aiden Better shot. gets it further to the right, just plaque 10. That's part of the game right there, folks. Ball, does he? Does he not? No, he well, uses purple at a I mean, it, we've seen a few purple hammers be used as spare balls today. Well, he's two-handed, though. That's impressive to me. I would agree with that. Kenzie going for her. Four pin. Bear. Nails it. Let's see if Brady can uh, take a pretty nice lead here. Gets the hold. The Gets the reaction. hold. I think uh, if we were playing the game that's on the TV, that'd be a 10-yard penalty. I would agree. <laughs> seven pin there. Splashes a seven pin over there. Everybody controlling the head pin pretty well so far. They are. I like that. Yeah, a lot of nines up there. Let's see if you can catch the double here. Rolled that one. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. He got around that one a little bit early and it rolled up on him and Seven pinned down. It's got to hook a little bit. Good Absolutely. <laughs> Putting on a clinic over there. Space. I was going to say, the, the, it, for as tough as it's been, some phenomenal spare shooting today. Oh, yeah. Especially when they're that flat. Sometimes they hook a little bit. Uh huh. Hook a little bit. Oh, I thought, oh, I thought that was going to grab on just a little bit. He's still in a good spot. It's one bad frame. One, one opening gonna and kill you. Yeah. As long as he trusts himself, still we're good. Let's see if we get him a shim a little bit. It'd make one. That's a tricky spare. That is a tricky spare. I really don't like it when the one and the eight are still standing. Yeah. Even if there's a two pin in there, I don't like it. Yeah. Like one two eight, I'll chop that more times than I care to count. Aiden really was convincing with that shot. Gets the wood to come across the deck. Way to go. That's a big shot for momentum purposes. Yeah, for sure. Coming off the open from Brady. She might. Not quite enough. Just catches the eight off of it. So Marley needs uh, See if she, she needs an X here. Pain. She's She's got to find something. She needs to find some momentum. She's got to get the uh, get the strikes on her side a little bit. She's so close with it, too. I That's know. the tricky part. She's hitting the pocket. There's Aiden. See, he came up on that one. Ooh, Black 10 again. Mm-hmm. Good left. <laughs> it looks so early. <laughs> it is wild. It's that it, it, it's that uh, you sort of miss left and then you really miss left type yeah. thing. I know. Like you put it down in the front, just a board or two left with a little bit of less launch angle, and it just takes off. There's Aiden Scott going for his ten pin. That is impressive. Yeah, he's I, very good at that. that There's a lot of practice hours put into shooting those pins like that, and he should be commended yeah. for his effort on knowing how to shoot the corners. Good for him. No matter what happens, I'm going to go congratulate him on figuring that out. <laughs> that's, 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 a, that's a good call. That is impressive. 
All right, Brady Rickard coming off the open. Strike here, gets the momentum right back in his court. Close, got a hook. Mm. I think I think he's uh, I think he's got a little flying elbow going on, just a touch, and it's just enough. Just enough to not get it back. Yep. Here's McKenzie. She's clean so far. It's right. a huge nine. Huge nine. A lot of good nines so far. Yeah. I think that's the angles they're playing? or I think that there's a lot of hand tension for the moment. And those little squeezes with yeah. that much hook up front turn into big misses. Yeah. Two. Great right. cover by Brady. Gets the 2-7 out. Keeps himself right in it. He's got. He's a. He's only down six. Three frames left. That's a lot of time. It's a lot of time to cover six pins. It's McKenzie going for the spare. Spare, spare shooter clean. McKenzie right there. Do you think fifty-five and six is tighter because they hook sooner? So, sort of. Um, typically. 55 through 58 play just about the same. Fifth, there's a there's there is more free hook um, in league settings on 57 and 58. Oh yeah, but not a ton. Just it's not too noticeable. No, yeah. but there's a broken. there was a lot of surface used, uh, you know, early on. Correct. Let's bring that nine. Um, so they, when the fronts blow up, it, 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 for me, like like you kind of said earlier, my, my go-to is throw it in the air Yeah. because of that fact. Right. And so then it brings them closer together and yep. you won't notice it too much, especially yep. on a house shower that's so great. So. I, uh, 59 is a whole other ballgame. I don't even want a bowl in there. We're not even over there, so we're not going to talk about it. Let's see if she can get on the strike train here. Come on, let's go. Get one. I think she just right. needs to move. I think yeah, it's just trust, a mo it's move. Move in and trust it over there. Well, the thing is, it's either, like, why not? You got 9997. Nine, nine, right. I mean, you got six, nine, nine. at this point. Might as well uh, try to make a move and take advantage of it. Aiden trying to capitalize on the uh, couple of red dots that Brady's got up on the board there. He threw that so good. Oh, oh man. Catches the break. What a messenger. Needed a little bit of help. It's a great cover by Marley. Great cover. Strike here, put some in position. <coughs> yeah, if, yeah, Aiden needs this one. Really he needs this one to control his own destiny. Yeah, exactly. I want if he wants to have the ball in his hands and have a chance to win, he needs this one. He got around it. Oh, smashes it. There was no doubt he wasn't going to 10-pin on that one. Looks a good nervous. work, Aiden Scott. Hmm? Looks a little nervous, too, so that's good that he got that one. Mm -hmm. He's Even though, yeah, and, and nerves should be expected. Well, yeah, 100%. He's still throwing it as cerebrally. He's, still, oh, he's yeah. not being fancy with it. He's not trying to shape the lane. And There it shot. is. Marley Krieger packs 10. Now she knows. Nerves are a good thing, though. So it's not out of the question yet. Here. A lot. Oh, oh that's, a big shot. that's a big shot for Brady Rickert. Sets himself up for a big tenth frame here. We're gonna have Mackenzie Kraus throw her eighth frame here first. We are just a few frames away from the conclusion of the 2023 Midwest Bowl Fest. If you are tuned in right now, thank you very, very much. Shot. Phenomenal. Oh. oh, she almost. Oh, is that an eight pin? Struck. Is that an eight pin? Yeah. She was eight ten and then almost struck. Right, here we go. Brady, Brady really needs this one. Oh, it's got to roll Sets a lot. Oh, oh, he caught the hit. He catches the hit. Speaking That's of a Vanagos, huge God, double. Oh they yeah, I here. wasn't kidding, man. They know how to travel. They are here. Red Robins represent, man. This is a spot where you take a re -rack? I do. I would, too. At least take more time, for sure. Mm -hmm. But, hey. And we were proved wrong earlier, so. We were. Great spare by McKenzie. All right. It's a big shot right here. Close. 
close. Oh. He's still right at he's close. still at one ninety. So this it's not sp over. spare here is one ninety. Got two eighteen off. I think he just needs good count mark. I believe. Oh man, that, that was, was just a rap ten. It's fair. It's fair. Big one ninety game for Brady Rickert and a go Red Robin. What a showing. Right. Led the squad, led the whole field at the U18 division here for the boys. Comes down to this. Aiden Scott. Well, Mackenzie's going to fill her 10th frame, or ninth frame here first. Aiden's going to have to take his time, and that might play to his favor. I would agree. Uh, oh, wow. That's that short oil right there, folks. I bet off the hand she thought she made it. Marley can try gonna win now. And she just moved and struck too. So that's gonna be a close match as well. Big shot. It's good. Oh no. Lucky to get 10 out there. Needs the spare hand. What? Four? Something like that. Spare yeah. four. He needs to make the spare. Yep. That's, it's really uh, just comes down to that. Did he miss a four pin or a two pin? I believe it's a four pin. Four pin. That's good. Oh, my goodness gracious. The carry. She made the move what too, a so. great shot to get it in the hole. Man. Again, the word of the week trust. Yeah. Trusted that one. That was a good shot. Eden Scott, spare for the win. Got a shim. Just. Gets it. Stay behind the foul line. Mom and Dad, if you're watching back home, your boy did it. Richard and Nicole. Aiden Scott's going to win this if he stays behind the line here. This is where I take the square ball and throw it down the middle. Yes. There's a 0% chance I'm throwing this ball in the gutter. 100%. He hasn't got less than nine yet, though, so he's got confidence. But mm -hmm. Either way, I don't trust myself enough. Wonderful. Nice behind. Perfect spot. Perfect. Just flushes it, too. What a showing by Aiden Scott. Runs the ladder. Amazing bowling out of the kid from Portage. Amazing. Pretty good. Did exactly what he had to do, and now he's got the results to show. Phenomenal bowling for Aiden Taking Scott. Fifteen hundred, that's good. Fifteen hundred bucks is a hell of a day. That's a good scholarship right there. Here's Marley Krieger. She force a mark. She Great out. shot. Great shot. Marks aren't guaranteed. Marks are not guaranteed. No, they're not. The amount of times that matches are uh, coming down to a mark and you'd think it's over. It's never over. So a uh, couple of big shots here. For you at home, if you're ever able to force your opponent to do anything in the tent, do it. Yes. Do don't, not don't rush your shots. Don't ever give it up. Yep. Do not rush your shots. Finally looking for her first double of the game. From the one seed position. Close. Great shot. Just got to get there. Oh. Gets the four to go. There it is. Ain't it's over nine yet. Or better. Nine or better to force a mark. I got 10 right here. Marley Krieger That's from Merrill, good. Wisconsin finishes her day. Getting Ooh. eight. So that still forced a mark. That's still good. forces a mark. Yep, she finishes with a 185. So McKenzie has 175 on an open in the ninth. So she needs at least a spare. Yes. And they have, I mean, she almost 810 on this lane last frame. Yeah. It's not guaranteed. So That's why you never 
give up the match. Straight ball by Marley. Way to grind that one out. Just had the one open. Mackenzie Kraus. Close. Right wow. in there. Oh, Humongous nine. nine. But again, nine. this is not, not guaranteed. It's not a guarantee. It's short. How many spares have we seen? They're flat in the middle, they hook. Kenzie Krause needs a spare for the win. So many matches today have come to the 10th frame. Can't really ask for much better than that. That's funny. And you know what? Sometimes spares do win shit. Okay, and today is one of those days. I guess. All she's got to do is stay behind the line. I mean, she only what? She only struck three times. Low count of mm -hmm. nine, though, so. Yeah, low, yeah. Yeah, nine pin perfect. You cannot complain about that. Not at all. Especially when it is hard. Fill it up. That's amazing right there, folks. Congratulations to Mackenzie Kraus, our inaugural U18 Ladies Champion here at the 2023 Midwest Bowl Fest. What a day. What a weekend. If you were able to tune in, thank you very much. And if you're able to get in here next year, you're not going to want to miss it. For everybody that's uh, helped out, Storm Products, Village of Weston, Bob's Business, and Wassa Area USBC, thank you very much. To all of the people here at Weston Lanes, you're all the best. I love you guys. And honestly, folks, I'm ready to take a break and not think about this for a little while because this was a really long three days. But, boy, you give me a year between now and uh, now and then. You're going to want to be back. You're going to want to be back, and you all are going to want to be here. So oh, yeah. if, uh, if I may. I'm coming back. It's going to be amazing. I mean, back. you got to come back. I you're reigning champ. So. Yeah. Uh, again, thank you guys all so much for tuning in. Uh, if, if you haven't yet and you want to, hit that subscribe button. Uh, but honestly, until the next time, don't forget, your best life is a 10-pin life.